in Matthew uh, 5, 31 and 32. And also Matthew 19, verse 8 and 9. A lot of people are living today with women who are not their wives. A lot of women are living with men who are not their wives. This is a problem across the board. What we call marriage today is not really marriage. It's not marriage in the sight of the Most High. Because if, if, if the woman you marry was supposed to be a virgin, and when you marry her, that blood that comes out of her vagina, that blood is the blood of the covenant. And her, you, her father was supposed to give you a white piece of cloth that you would take with you with her inside the room. When that blood comes out of her, you touch that blood on the white piece of cloth and then give it back to her. She will give it to her parents just in case, as you can see in Deuteronomy. Everything I just said right now is in Deuteronomy chapter 22 from verse 13 to 21. So women were supposed to keep their virginity until their wedding night. Supposed to keep their virginity. Uh, but today, what we have today is nothing but a whole house. Whole house. This thing that we're doing today of having boyfriend and girlfriend, and then afterward, you marry her. No, that's not biblical. Whoever took her virginity became her husband. It's very difficult for, to, to, to really swallow this. Very difficult to swallow it. Um, but it's true. Whoever takes a woman's virginity becomes her husband. That's the reason why Christ said that if you marry a woman that is put away, you're committing adultery. That's uh, the, uh, Matthew 5, 31 and 32. We have to face this issue. We have to address this issue. We have to repent from this issue. Or else we will find ourselves of, that we've kept all the laws. We keep the Sabbath. We keep the feast days. We grow our beard. We wear our fringes. But at the end of the day, we will be torn away because we committed adultery. If I am living with a woman that had had sex with multiple men and she lost her virginity to a man and then go on to have sex with other men, I cannot marry her. You cannot marry her. Biblically, we're not supposed to do that because there's a reason why the Most High made women to become virgins. There's a reason why he gave them, you know, that hymen. He gave them, you know, he put that, that thing there to break when she lose her virginity and that blood that comes is the blood of the covenant between her and her husband as you can see in malachi chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 malachi 2 14 2 13 and 14 the most high talked about the covenant between the man and the woman that blood that comes out of her is the blood of the covenant this is the reason why uh when our ancestor goes to war notice that they only take women who have not known a man they were told to kill the women that have known men Take only the ones that have not known men. Mm, it's right there in Numbers 31. So, it's an issue that is a problem in Christianity and also a problem among Hebrew Israelites. We just look at this issue, we turn away. We don't want to deal with this issue. It's just too much for us to handle. The idea that the women we've been living with or the man we've been living with is not our husband or wife. That is too much to swallow. But we have to repent. We have to repent from this sin. Nobody wants to hear it. This is kind of like why John the Baptist was beheaded. Matthew, Matthew 14. Matthew 14. You can, you, this is pretty, pretty much... He was beheaded for preaching stuff like this. So I do get scared. I am worried. I do get scared and I try to uh, be careful with my location, in making my location known, you know, because people are crazy. You know, people are crazy. I have found myself... I found myself telling people to leave their home, to leave the people that... They are living with. I found myself doing that. So, and I know that the other partner is not going to be happy about that. You know, so it's a very dangerous thing to preach. M most people don't want to hear it, but it's true. We have to repent and we have to find a way to move forward on this thing. We can't just swipe this one under the floor and be singing hallelujah. The Lord is good. Yah is great. Hallelujah. Uh, shalom. While we are living in adultery. When our ancestor found out that they had a similar situation in the book of Ezra chapter 10. Ezra chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. You saw that our ancestors, they repented of this sin. They repented from this sin. And they basically uh, asked, um, they, they, they had to put away those women, according to Ezra chapter 10. You can look at Ezra chapter 10 and it's clearly there. But their situation is a little bit different because they married foreign women. Israelites are not supposed to marry foreign women. We're not supposed to be marrying these Chinese, Europeans, 
Mexicans. We're not supposed to do that. You know, we are supposed to marry from our own people. So, uh, if anybody would like to speak on this issue, you are more than welcome to come up stage. Anybody can speak on this issue. The thing is that if you're living with a woman or you're living with a... Let me start with the men first. If you're living with a woman, but she lost her virginity to another man and she's been with multiple men, you cannot marry her. She's not your wife. You've been living in sin and you've been committing adultery. Same thing with, it, with sisters. Hey, hey, but look, hold on. Let me respond right quick to that because you just, you just said that. So look. If you, um, that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Because if you wasn't in the truth, I mean, obviously if you was in the truth, then that's right. But I'm saying like, if you coming into the truth, bro, then that's when it starts. That's when it all go back to the circumcising of the heart. And, and you know what I'm saying? Coming into this word. Now you're not supposed to sleep with multiple men. You see what I mean? Okay. But yeah, if she, if you guys are not in the truth, um, how would you? How would you? Yeah, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to clarify for you. I'm saying like you can't say like according to the title, right? Sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first, right? Yeah. So me and my wife came into the truth together. Obviously, she didn't lose her virginity to me, but that don't mean that she wicked or I'm wicked or committing adultery. We didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So once you come into this truth, now we know we ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Now I know that I can't cheat on her. I can only take another wife. You see what I'm saying? Now I know that if she uh, commit adultery, I can't just take her back. Like, oh, we're going to work through it. No, that's wicked. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but the that's thing what, the, the, the thing is that she was never your wife in the first place. But listen, nobody knew that, Tobiah. My wife used to be a Muslim. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so I understand, but she, in the sight of, yeah, she was never your wife. So she can't just all of a sudden become your wife because because when you met her, you were not in the truth. Like, she was never your wife in the sight of, yeah. Because there's a, hey, proce there's a procedure. Yes, there, there's, listen, oh, listen, go ahead, go ahead. Show, sorry. Let me, show you let me show you scripture. How? Let me show you some scripture. I'm a new creature. You want to get that for me, bro? I just knew that where you was going to. Yep, I can't remember this, which one that's in, though. I can't remember where it's at. It's in, it's in first, it's in Corinthians, ain't it? Carl, I'm pulling it right now. It's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are, all things are become new. Okay, can I respond? Okay, I agree that all things becomes new, but I don't think that her vagina becomes new. <laughs> That's so carnal, brother. Of course, her vagina didn't become new, but we new creatures. You understand? Yeah, but I mean, but the thing is that we the, understand that that's. We know the difference between wickedness. You see what I'm saying? It's women who out here who 30 with five kids and single. You see what I'm saying? These sisters not wicked because they came back to understanding that they was living a wicked ass life. I never now they a new creature. Now, I you, hold on. Now I bet you they're not going to go have five more new baby daddies. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I never said that they are wicked. Um, what I'm saying is that they were never your wife in the first place. So that's the thing. They were never your wife in the first place so that's the thing um you know what i mean like they never they, she's never your she was never your wife in the first place so she cannot be your wife just because i mean do you do you even understand that yah says that the woman you marry have to be like you have to marry a woman do you know what we did to women that lose their virginity they get killed like if they lose their virginity exactly. before their wedding night yeah, we, we know that. And there was no wedding night. This is, see, listen, that's what you're doing right there. That's, it's no, we had celebrations. You see what I'm saying? No, no come on. When I, when I say wedding night, when I say wedding, when I say wedding night, you know what I mean by wedding night. Of course, we don't have wedding night. But for example, um, what's her name? Rebecca and Isaac. Rebecca was brought to Isaac. He took her into her mother's tent. She was a virgin. He took her into her mother's tent and they had sex. And that was it. So there was nothing like wedding night. I agree with you. So uh, as people will say that sex is marriage, it's true. People will say that sex is marriage. But the thing is that a woman supposed to be a virgin when you marry her. And according to Yah, 
If a woman lose her virginity, uh, I, 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 I want you to know right now. I understand your position. I would agree with it, but that don't negate the fact that when you become a, a new creature, because we were scattered and we didn't know who we was, now we coming back to the flock. You see what I'm saying? Now we learning these things. So my daughter that we have together don't grow up and give her virginity away for free. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. But okay. Why don't okay, first of all before we continue, I want to give other people opportunity. If, if you are uh, see Katrine, uh, brother Steve, brother Heaven, uh, if you guys would like to, because I have something to say, but I don't want to just keep talking without letting other people speak. So. Well, I would say that I believe I serve a merciful God and a lot of things he did that he we did in ignorance, he winked at it, you know what I'm saying? And like even even intentional even when we even first of all, people don't understand that when we when our Israelites weak sin, we only he the sacrifice was only given for when you sin ignorantly. Never preached subsidy was any was any of the animal sacrifices offered it's only when you was it was brought to you understand you knew realized what you was doing was a sin against the most high then that sin offering was uh presented but never presumptual sins was ever for, forgiven he only forgave sin and ignorance so i can understand we didn't know who we was we was living a adulterous you know lifestyle Whoremongers as men and whore and and prostitutes as women, and then we come to knowledge of who we are. We repent, and from that that time forward, we become new creatures. Now, as far as the hymens, a lot of all women don't bleed when they lose their virginity, so that's not every woman bleeds when they have a virginity. So you can't say that's a covenant because what if a woman can't bleed? What if a woman loses virginity, she doesn't bleed? Is that is that a uh, marriage void because she didn't bleed? Because mm. it's it's proof that all women don't believe in the of virginity. So, you know, did the Most High do that? On, well, that woman can never be married because she can't have a blood covenant. So, what I'm saying, I believe the Most High is is a merciful God. Most for God is like Christ when the woman committed adultery, he told her to sin no more. You know, he gave her he sin no more. Even a man who was limp, he told he he followed that man and told him sin no more or you'd be worse. Okay. So he was merciful, and I believe the Most High is merciful. So. I believe I I believe like if you come to truth you be get, you get a, a clean slate. All right, okay. I just want to respond, you guys, please, if you don't mind. I just, so I, I like I, I know if you say something right now we, we might go into a different. I just want to respond to what he said. Okay, if you guys don't mind, I want to respond to this. Um, so now, do you have uh, your Bible open there, Heaven? She, I want to show you something, my brother. Go ahead to uh, the book of Ezra, chapter ten. Yeah, hold up. You know, I could just tell you what it says. You can read it at your own time, just for the sake of time, so we can keep moving forward. So in he in Ezra, hold on, hold on. I'm about to get Acts seventeen and thirty right quick. And you said Acts chapter. Oh, go ahead. I said Acts seventeen and thirty. Yeah, but, but hold on, because because that 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 might, you might you you might want to bring that scripture when I'm done, because that that might change. I want to respond to what he said. He said some things. I want to respond to that. You know, so he he. I'm sorry, because I just came back in. I missed I missed some. I thought have a second. Oh no no, he said something, and I I asked you guys for permission if it's okay to respond to what he says before. You know, I just don't want to like forget. I really want to respond to this, and the more I I, I wait, the more I I will forget. So brother, you said that. Uh, I was just going to tell you, you're talking about that Yah is merciful. That, you know, we did things out of ignorance. Now we are in the truth. God is merciful. I understand that. I'm never arguing that he's not merciful. But the thing is that if you look at Ezra chapter 10, and you could pull that up and read it. Ezra chapter 10, you saw our ancestors. When they were in the land of Babylon, they married women that they were not supposed to marry. They married women that they were not supposed to marry. When they came back to the land and began to go back to the law, they, they themselves, our ancestors by themselves, came to the priest and asked to hear the law. When the law was read to them, they realized what the law says about, biblical, about marriage. They realized that the women that they married was, not, was never their wife in the first place. 
They had to get rid of these women and their children. I'm talking about the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. They deliberately by themselves decided to put those women away because they realized that these women was never their wife in the first place. Just because I, and I don't really want to use this example right now, but I will. If I'm living with a man, I am a man. And I like women. I love women. So, but let's assume that I am a man that is into other men. And I've been living with a man for 20 years. Right. Now, now, if, I, if that's the case, I'm living with her. And then now I realize that I'm an Israelite. And then I come into the truth. Am I going to keep living with this man and say that, by the way, we got into this thing when we were, when we were not in the truth? No. That will not work because he was never. We're not supposed to even be together in the first place. He is a man. I am a man. So you 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 have to understand. You have to understand what is biblical marriage in the first place. And you guys, brother, hold on, brother. Let me finish this thought, brother. You 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 already told me that you agree with me that biblically your wife is supposed to be a virgin. And then now you're telling me, well, we you married her. When you were not in the truth, now you are in the truth. And then I asked you, does that mean that now that you are a new creation, that new creation thing, does that include her vagina? And I don't mean to be vulgar or whatever, but, you know, if, if you're going to be new creation, you have to be new creation, both in spirit and in flesh. The thing is that biblically, your wife supposed to uh, be a virgin. Now, the, I'm going to say this and I'll stop. Hey, so hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. Okay. So listen, you compared it to homosexuality. If you was a homosexual, like you just said, you became a new creature. First of all, that's a different animal. But if you, like you said, if you did, is his asshole going to be new? No. So that don't even make sense what you said. Let me get the point that the brother was making in Acts 17 and 30. And, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Do you understand? Hey, I want to see us. Wait, 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 wait. Ho hold on, Fabian. Brother Malik, your mic got muted. I don't think you are done. Like, can you finish what you were saying? I'm about to read. This is the book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Do you understand what this means? I absolutely understand what it means. It's like when I'm break eating... It down for, I'm asking you for to break it down. I'm asking for you to break it down for me, please. Okay. If I'm eating pork and I've been shaving my beard, I've been going to work on the Sabbath day. I didn't know that I'm not supposed to I'm do these things. What about if you've been whoremongering and been, uh, you know, uh, a wicked woman? Wait, wait, actually, I was whoremongering. Sometimes I sleep with like two women in a night. I used to whoremonger and yeah, so, but I had to stop. So now, guess what, my brother? But get, I'm get, saying, I'm talking about women. We're dealing with women coming. Yeah, that's what I'm too. saying. I, what I, saying? I, 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 You're I, making it about you. No, you, 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 you're asking me about me, right? I'm breaking the scripture down. You asked me to break it down. So, and then you ask right, me. I asked you to break it down, you, you but say, I didn't actually include yourself for an example. But, well, you say, what if I'm whoremongering? I say, yes, of course I was whoremongering. But I have repented. That's my point. My point is that I no longer whoremonger. So now, even when a woman gives me a green light, to be honest with you, I wish I could take it, but I can't because now I don't want to be a homemonger anymore. So I have repented. So I can't, that's what that scripture, that's, that's what that place is talking about right, in the book of right, Acts. Right, 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 right. So what about if you was a homosexual though? I have to stop practicing homosexuality. I have to stop having okay. sex with okay. men. So, so listen, so listen. Now your point was, is her vagina new? Is your fucking uh, anal, anal uh, rectum new? Ah, okay. Well, no, 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 because that doesn't that you are the one that brought up the issue of new creation. So I will be you. I should be asking it's you this. Issue, no, you can't talk. You can't turn that around to me. The thing is that because this was a spiritual thing, you feel me? You no, it's not. You no, know, it's not spiritual. It is not just spiritual. The thing is that the Most High said okay, that when you spiritual. the most the Most High said that when you marry a woman, when you marry a woman, and that will bring me back to what. Brother Heaven Shia said that I wanted to respond to. Brother Seven, Heaven Shia said that not every woman bleeds when she loses her virginity. Well, go tell that to the Most High because the Most High is telling you in Deuteronomy chapter 22. He said that when you marry a girl, you're supposed to take that white piece of cloth and go inside the room with her. 
When you put yourself inside of her and she bleeds, the blood of, that came out of her should be touched on that paper. Are you telling me that the Most High did not know that some women don't bleed? So that argument doesn't count because the Most High is the one that said it, not me. The idea of a woman putting her blood that come out of her body in a piece of cloth and giving that cloth to her father, that's in Deuteronomy chapter 22, from verse 13 to 21. So we have to, first of all, understand what biblical marriage is. So you guys are kind of sounding like Christians by talking about new creation. Yeah, we are new creation, but that doesn't mean that a woman... I'm not a Christian. A, 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 a woman, a woman that... What the brother said. Hold on, brother, hold on, because look, he just told you plain. At the times of ignorance, what did God do? Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna okay. You know what? Let's go to Brother Fabian because I have something to say. But let me let me just hold myself, uh, Brother Fabian. I don't, I don't want to be the only one talking, Brother, Brother Fabian. Actually, wait, wait, Sister Sister Catherine came over here before you. I'm sorry. Uh, unless if she, I just want to be in order, but uh, if you don't have anything to say, then we'll go to Brother Fabian. I don't want to be unfair. All right, uh, Brother Fabian, go ahead. It doesn't seem like uh, that she's uh, uh, close by. Okay, good night to everybody, first of all. And I would say, in terms of biblical marriage, I believe what Tobaya is saying. And let me explain. Now, we had a wife before we came into the truth, as the brother here says. Now we both come to the truth. It doesn't change the fact that we were living in sin. We are to repent from our sins. Repent means to turn away from our sins. There is no other way. Because we were aware of the truth. Just as but when the sacrifice was made, it was made for when you sin in ignorance. When you took a wife not knowing the truth, you sin in ignorance. Now the truth is made known, it is still sin. You are not new because you just realized the truth. The truth has never changed. You just realized it. So at the end of the day, it is still sin. She does not become a virgin because you just got the truth or you just realized the truth. So it doesn't change the fact that it is still a sin. So now coming to the truth, we are to repent, turn away from our sin. So... I don't think you have a case where you can say, well, we both come to the truth together and it was too late. No, we have to repent. we got to turn away from our sin. Uh, of so, course we know that, but I'm saying, saying hey, this is told by our whole point. He's saying that you, was, that you and the wife would have never been married. So you're supposed to just leave her alone and just walk away. Now you were saying that, if you do that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I am saying. Okay, so, right. so which, hold on, hold on, because what y'all hold on, no, hold on, because I understand you just confirmed, you just confirmed your position. You just said yes, that's what you said. So let me respond. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying to me is that, so for me, for example, me and my wife came into the truth together, right? So I'm supposed to just turn and walk away from my family. That would be folly. Most I would be most displeased with that action. Do you understand that? No, he wouldn't, because he never saw her as your. Show me that. Again. Okay, show me that. I'm I'm about to show you in the scriptures why he would not be why he would be displeased. Hold on. Uh, I would like to respond to that. If, if the question that you asked, should you walk away from your wife? I don't know if you uh, would like me to. I would love to respond to that if you guys don't mind. But you know, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, brother Tobia. Go ahead. Yeah, I I don't know. It looks like he's looking for a scripture or something, but. Brother Malik, uh, do you, I would love to respond to that because you're saying that are you going to like leave your wife? Go ahead, bro. I just, I just gave it up to y'all. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So actually I have been, it's, I've been, I've been preaching this for years now. I've been, I've been talking about this for years. I never ever advise any man to leave his wife. Or, I'm sorry, to leave his children. Okay. Because we are already... In a very messed up situation right now with lots and lots of home that has no father lots and lots of home i have to start a school i have an online hebrew school where i teach young men and women mostly young men that that don't have some of them are living with their grandma some of them with their mom you know some of them they don't have a dad in their life so I had to jump in and start an online, free online school. Uh, my goal is to, to have a physical school, to build a, an academy, Hebrew academy, 
where these kids can uh. come. So we are already in a messed up situation. And the last thing I would do is to tell men to leave your wife and your children. Uh, that, uh, that I will not do. So we have That's to what do. You literally just told me to do. Well, hold <laughs> on. I never said. No, no, no. No, hold on, brother. I never said That's that. What your position is. Wait, let, okay, okay let me tell you what. Okay, it's 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 possible to repent from this sin and not have to abandon your family. Let me explain. If you look at and the book of that's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. If you look at the book of Ezra, right? The book of Ezra, chapter ten, you will see that our ancestor had married women that they were not supposed to marry. This is in every Bible. Ezra chapter ten, verse one to three. When they realized that that was against the law, the Bible tells you in Ezra chapter ten. That they put away, they chose to put away their wives and their children. They had to put away the wives and the children because these women was never their wife in the first place, and the children that was made in, with them was not their children. Now, what I do tell men, what I do preach, what, what I do preach on this, what has to happen? You, when you talk about repentance, and you're telling me that you guys are telling me that you are a new creation. Yeah, you're a new creation. So. Because you were not in the truth, and she was not in the truth, the Most High understands that. The Most High knows that you did not know. Just like the man that wanted to take Sarah in Genesis chapter 20. That king that wanted to take Sarah, he did not know that Sarah was somebody's wife. When the Most High appeared to him at night and spoke to him, he said that he did not know. Yah said, yes, I know that you did not know. That's why you did not die. That's why I didn't kill you. So the Most High knows when we're in ignorant. If I'm living with a woman and she had been with multiple men before I married her, she was never my wife. Now, where repentance has to come in, where, where I'm going to agree with you when it comes to being a new creation is that if there is any punishment as a result of what you did already, what you did when you were ignorant, those are the kind of, that's where grace or whatever comes in, which I can't even tell you that because I'm not the most high. The most high is the one that can decide whether he's going to forgive you or not. So the thing is that if you're telling me that, that living with your wife and having sex with her before you came into the truth, everything that you did with her, that you are now a new creation and Yah will forgive you, that's, that's understandable. But if you're telling me that you're going to continue to have sex with her, even though she was never your wife in the first place, so, when she, can you say she, that again? Please say that again. Just say that one more time because I did not understand what you said. What I'm saying is that if you are living, like you said, that you, you, you married your wife, you were not in the truth, she was not in the truth, and you didn't know what the scripture says about biblical marriage, you didn't know that she was supposed to be a virgin before you married her, you didn't know these things. So, now that you know the, the sin that was between you and her when you had sex with her. The fact that that was an adultery, that was a sin that you did in ignorant. But you cannot, now that you are in the truth, keep on having sex with her. Even though she was never your wife, you can't keep on living in sin with her and having sex with her. Now that you are in the truth. Because now you know the truth. Now you know that she was never your wife. Uh, hold on, Salaki. Because look, when you have sex, this is your wife and you got responsibilities with this woman now. So you're kind of contradicting yourself. No, I'm not contradicting myself. What you have to do is that you have to stop. We can still take care of your children. You can no longer have sex with her. But you still need to take so, care of your children. So, you, so, you have to, so what you're saying is you can put her away? Yeah, you can no longer, if you want to, uh, whatever you want to do, but you can, I'm talking about sex. You can no longer have sex with her because she was never your wife. Each time you do, you're committing adultery. She was never your wife in the first place. So just because you've repented doesn't mean that all of a sudden she's now your wife. Biblically, she's not your wife. That's why I'm not even going to quote that scripture now, but let's keep going. But, you know, if you want to go find a different apartment or whatever you want to do, that's up to you. <laughs> Toby, yeah. Uh, so let me give you one. This is a quick scripture. This is First Timothy five, First Timothy five and eight. But if any man not provide for his own, and special and specially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Toby, yeah. What does that mean? Yes, that means that if any man fail to provide for his family, that would be, for example, a man like. Let me give you. Isaac married Rebecca. 
and took her virginity. No, that's not a good example because look, you dealing with somebody. We dealing with what you was just talking about. So you Wait, got kids yeah. with a woman. You found out she had. She wasn't. Well, you didn't find out. You no. That's not. That's not what the scripture you read is, is saying. The Bible is not saying but that. You trying to. You trying to convince me to put away a wife to leave. She was you know never your that's, wife. That's, Okay, so when you have sex, Tobaya, and you in the truth, what does that mean? She was never your wife. According to the Most High, the woman you marry has to be Tobaya, a virgin. Tobaya, we just went over repentance. We came into the truth. We had sex. What does that mean? It's you, adultery. It is adultery, yeah. It is adultery. That's the point. You have to stop. So how can you commit adultery? When you when you uh, with someone else's wife. Because she was never your wife in the first so, place. So whose wife would she be then, Tobias? The wife of the, the man that took her virginity. Let's take let's take it one at a time, okay? No, but no, but listen, if brothers wasn't in the truth, then the most we just went over this. The most high winked at that, remember? Did we forget that? No, but I just went over it with you. Although you did not know it, it does not change the fact that it was sin. And it is still sin. Because you are ignorant to the fact that it is sin doesn't make it not sin. You were walking up to the truth. No, you realize it is sin. You repent from your sin. You turn away from the sin. That's what we're trying to tell you. Hey, can I say something? Because maybe y'all's accent might be. I can. I can. You know I'm I, I can. Let me explain what he's trying to say. Okay. Say you was eating shrimp, crab, and lobster, right? I'm just gonna give an example. Just an example. Okay. Then you found out. According to Leviticus 11, you ain't supposed to eat shrimp, crab, or lobster. Okay. Now, once you stop, you cannot no longer go back and eat shrimp, crab, or lobster because now you know that is a law, a instruction you, not to do that. Right? So what they are saying is, if you and a woman was having sex, unlawful sex, she was, not, and you come, then you realize a woman is, is biblically, according to scripture, the most high, it was, you know, ordained for a woman to only be with one man for her whole life unless he dies according to romans chapter 7 when a man dies she's free to be another man's wife but but but, but when you have sex you're supposed to be one flesh and woman's we already know a man can have multiple women he can have multiple wives otherwise because it's impossible for a woman if a man if the most high told us to multiply a woman can only have a baby in nine months but a man can have he can he can have semen two or three he can one probably baby get a, a year a woman can he have probably can have a he probably can get ten women pregnant one night. He probably could. He probably could have sex with ten women. He can have, all, a baby. They he all can have two babies every day for the rest of the year. There you go. That's what I'm saying. So it shows you that a man can have multiple wives, multiple women, but a woman can only is supposed to only be with one man. So I understand that. So what he's saying, what I believe most Tobaya is saying is, if you come to the truth, if you have a woman, y'all being together, you love this woman, she loves you, y'all got family. Well, I think Toby I was saying, well, biz, you still take care, still take care of her. She still, you can, you still love her. She still be your wife. You still have your kids, but y'all just, but the sex part you got to cut off. So pretty much you be a nun. So pretty much you can still provide. Y'all still live together, and everything, but you have to have the strong willpower to not sleep together. Yeah, I, I want to just show that. I want to see show that in the scriptures. Now I'm about to bring y'all something else right here, right? Um, uh, what's that right here? This is uh Hosea one and verse two. Hold on, Chris just came up. You want to get it, Chris, or you want me to read it for you? Uh, you can go already, bro. All right, I'm going to give you the breakdown, though, since you're up here now. All right, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I was there one and two, right? Yes, sir. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Bari. Oh, I'm sorry, that's one and one. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go. Take unto thee a wife of the whoredoms and the children of the whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Please continue to read. Uh -huh. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diablum, which conceived and, <coughs> and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel for yet a little while and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel what? 
And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the vow of Israel in the valley of Jerusalem. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Lorama. <laughs> For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Yeah, go ahead. Keep on reading. I, I tell you, keep on reading for a reason. So hold on, but real I quick. So hold, so hold on, real quick. So we can see clearly in verse 2 that the Most High just told Hosea to go marry a woman of whoredoms. Did, did y'all yeah, see that? Did you the Most High tell him to see Hold on. You need to understand what you are reading, because you remember a uh, 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 animal came to Peter, on pink animals, and he said, "Kill and eat." This is a scripture quite similar. So continue to read, brother. You didn't, uh, brother. You didn't answer the question, Fabian. Did the Most High tell Hosea to go marry a prostitute? Yes or no? I just said to you, yes, he did. But all right, did the more say tell Peter? to kill and eat the unclean animals. I said to you, this scripture is quite similar to that account. So, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so let me ask you this for understanding. Are you saying that he didn't marry a prostitute or he did marry a prostitute? I'm telling you there's more to this scripture than you think. Continue to read. This scripture has nothing to do with Murray the Prostitute. Continue to read. So what you're saying is a parable, pretty much. Pretty much. Hey, look. Uh, I, I don't want to interrupt, but um, this scripture is not what you guys think. Okay? It's Brother, y'all crazy. It's For not. Real. No, no, hold like, on. Hey, hold hey, on. Hold on. on. That's why I didn't want to interrupt. Okay, I want to I want to take permission before I speak. I kept quiet and you guys were reading and talking and reading. I don't know. Let me know when you want, want me to talk and then I'll come back. I can explain what you read, but you know. All I'm saying is y'all saying that a man should not marry a woman who has sex with another man. How many if, if, if men was to do that, how many men would be married today? Because I have a, a like Bruh, 80% of the women out here today in 2021 is not virgins. Like, what you're telling people to do is to go leave their wives or to stop having sex with their wives. Like, y'all crazy. Yeah, of course. It sounds crazy because that's how those that are talking about the word of the Most High, I mean, why were they getting killed? Do you know that John the Baptist was beheaded in Matthew 14 because of something like this? Of course it sounds crazy. But you are giving me, you're making a secular argument. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in our families. I understand that. But we cannot live, continue to live in sin that grace may abound. So your, this argument you're giving me is a very weak argument. It's a secular argument. You, uh, it's, not even, it's not even biblical. Look, listen, would you like me to explain? I was not biblical. Would you? When Hosea was told by the Most High to go marry a prophet. Would you, like me to, would you like me to explain Hosea that you just read? Would you like me to do that Man, before? No, because what you've been explaining to me is hot garbage. All right, let you me explain that. To use the Bible to calm down, brother. Brother, calm down. Calm down, brother. No, calm, no, down. No, calm, down. calm down, bro. You're trying to break up house. No, calm, calm, calm down. down. Calm down, brother. Hey, we ain't going to let you do this. Calm down, man. brother. Listen, exactly. we don't have to yell at each other and shout at each other. Let's actually have intelligent conversation. Calm down. You don't have to yell. I'm not yelling at you. Relax, okay? So, now, brother, you guys brought up the issue of Hosea. Okay. The Most High told Hosea to go and marry a prostitute. And he did. I'm not saying you, telling you that he did not. Here, Excuse me? No, I was asking somebody to mind me up. Yeah, so he did. He did, uh, he did make marry a, a, a prostitute. Now, look on that chapter. Notice the children that he had. What were those children called? Could you look at that, what you just read? He was told to marry a wife of a wife of whoredom, right? He was told to marry a wife of whoredom. So, did you see where it says children of whoredom? Do you see that, my brother Malik? Can you please look at look at that? Do you see children of whoredom? He says, "Go and marry a wife of whoredom, and have children of whoredom." Did you see that? Come on, are you? What's wrong with your mic? Yeah. 
Yeah, I see it. And just like I see in Judges, where it says Jephthah, he was a, a son of a strange woman. The okay. same thing. Okay, good. The, the same so, exact thing, brother. Okay, okay, hold the on. Let, hold thing. on, hold on. Let me finish. Can I finish? Or you want to go? Okay. I mean, you asked me a question and you told me to unmic, so I unmiced and gave you the blues. Okay. So, when he says to have children of whoredom, how can children that Hosea impregnated, impregnated this woman to have, how can they be children of whoredom if he married this woman? Which he did. The Most High told him, go and marry a wife of whoredom, meaning a prostitute. And he did. And after he married her, he now began to have children of whoredom. So if Hosea was having sex with her and she was getting pregnant and having, having these children, why would they be called children of whoredom? The reason why they were called children of whoredom was because they were producing whoredom. They were not Hosea's children. That's the point the Most High was trying to make. So they were not Hosea's children. That's the only way you can call them children yes, of whoredom. Because if they are, if, 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 because, hold on. Because if, if he was impregnating her and she was, she was uh, getting pregnant and having these children, they will not be children of whoredom because they will be legitimate children of Hosea. So I don't want us to, to really, because I know how this thing goes. Uh, I I already see that I already see that passion is very high. A lot of people are not happy. You know, passion is very high on this topic. I get it, but I really would like to stay on point. The point is that All right. I'm the gonna stay on point. The, the when point it says it, children of whoredoms. It means that they were born of a whore. That's what that means. You started this room for this type of debate. You started this room for this type of animosity because you titled the room "Sex with Your Wife Is Sin." You are a fool. Yeah, so you don't have to come into the room. I I started the room, but I never brought you in. You can, oh he left. Okay, we don't have to be emotional. You know I don't know why you shout and yell and leave. So you can actually stay and let's make a biblical argument, not making a secular argument and telling me about all the women that is out there and all that stuff that is out there. Let's actually talk the scripture. You don't have to be shouting and then just leave. Okay, I wish, Tobiah, brother Tobiah, just a just a question. I'll praise this to the room. Um, looking looking at the topic, I have a question for you. Uh, let's go to the book of uh, Matthew. I believe it's Matthew. Oh, I'm sorry, the book of John, the fourth chapter. Just a question. We all know there's very familiar passage of scripture. Jesus at the woman, with the woman at, uh, of Samaria at the well. Listen, listen to what he what he told. I'm gonna drop down to the 15th verse, verse 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said to her, Go and call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And, and he whom thou wouldst now is not thine husband. So now Jesus is explaining to her, each of those guys married this one woman or was with her, however you say she was sexually with them, but five husbands. Now let's go to the book of uh, Hebrews. I just like for you to explain it to me. No argument was that I really enjoyed the topic. The book of uh, Hebrews 13 and 4 it says marriage is honorable in all, but the, and the bed is undefiled. Could you please explain to us what, the part where it says, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge? Because there have been some people that was married to somebody in their family and they didn't find out till later on. Accidentally, they may have had the same father and they got a divorce. So a person may deem them, if they remarried again, to be in adultery. Could you explain to that, explain these two passages of scripture? And with that, I'll leave. Beautiful. Okay. So the first one is the woman at the well, right? The first one is the woman at the well, right? Oh, sorry. My, my, my mic was, was uh, off and I was speaking. Sorry. So the first question was the woman at the well, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and your question was more like because she was told that she had four, four husbands. 
Yes, Jesus identified each and every husband that she had. Okay. He called her their, her husband. Okay. So, yes, it is possible uh, for a woman to have four husbands. And some of you who are familiar with the book of, if you're familiar with the book of Tobit. Oh my God, what does that mean, what you just said? I'm confused. That's what I'm explaining. Which part is confusing? Which part? You said it's okay for a woman to have what? No, that's not what I said. I said it's possible for a woman to have four husbands. Then I was going to explain it. I didn't say it's okay for that. Uh, it's okay for. No, I was just making. I just wanted to clarify. I said keep going. So that's why I wanted to use scripture. Uh, so I said that it's possible for a woman to have four husbands. It's possible. So if you look at, uh, if you look at the book of Tobit, uh, the main story in the book of Tobit, part of the main story, is that there was a girl that keep, whenever she she was going to get married, her husband would die, and this happened almost seven times. Until eventually the Most High intervened. An angel was sent down and everything was arranged and she got married and, and her husband did not die. So when a, woman, when a woman gets married, when somebody marries a woman, if that man dies, she, somebody else can marry her. And that second man that marries her becomes her second husband. Becomes her second husband. And if the, first one, the second one dies... A third husband can marry her, and that becomes her third, third, third husband. So sometimes you might see a parable that talked about something like that. There was a, a question that they asked Yeshua. They asked Yeshua. There was a woman that, that uh, keep getting married and her husband was dying. You know, a woman that, that had multiple husbands. You know, she was married over a multiple of time. Um, there was a woman that, 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 that kept, that was, they gave, gave, they gave the, Yeshua an example. Hey, there's this woman. He had multiple husbands, and her husband, uh, they all died. Who is going to be her husband in the kingdom? Yeshua told him that in the kingdom, we're not going to be doing stuff like that in the kingdom. So my point, and to answer your question very, very clearly, is that if, if I marry a woman and I die, somebody else can marry her, and that will become her second husband. And uh, it doesn't happen often, but definitely there are some women that have had a very uh, unfortunate uh, unfortunate. Uh, events that you know they keep getting married and their husband keeps dying uh, dying so in that way that's okay. pretty much the, yeah that's the answer to that particular uh, john chapter four okay let me let me let's go back to the text and, and let's get get the gist of what jesus was implying here let's see let's read into the text because he didn't say anything about nobody dying He's, he's explaining to her he knows her lifestyle because she wouldn't have been so surprised. She said, come see a man that told me all that I have done. She didn't say come and see a man who told me about my husband's dad. He's, he's putting her kind of like on blast, just one-on-one. -on -one. Let, he's letting her know, I know about your life. Let's read the text again. What is he, talking about? he says here, this woman said to her, sir, Give me the water. Listen to how she's talking to him. She must be, I, I, you, know, she, you can tell she was kind of flirting, flirtation. I don't know. Let's, then it says that I thirst not come, neither come unto thy draw. You said to her, go call thy husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. Now listen to the text. And he whom thou art not with is not thy husband. So why would Jesus say go get her husband? He's talking about those who were in her life who's been her husband that is still alive. He told her to go get him. Let's keep going. Let's skip down because he's telling her who to worship and things of this nature. Let's see here. It says here. Uh, let's go down to the 25th verse. I'm sorry. Let's go to the 27th verse. And upon this, this came his disciples and marveled because they saw him talking to this woman. And that he liked, he talked with that woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why are you talking to her? The woman then left her water pot and, and went her way into the city 
and said unto the men. Every time you look around, she's in somebody's face. You know, you might have those women who's always in somebody's face. He said, listen, the woman, uh, the woman left with her water pot and went away into the city and said unto the man, come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. So he's looked into her life and basically said, you've been five husbands. So that's five. He didn't condemn her for being in adultery. He let her know how many husbands she had. So those guys, those five different guys married her. So I asked for the, the explanation of the text. You said, and I get it, that in one of the apocryphal books, it may be that her husband died. That's not the implication of this text. Jesus, Jesus is letting her know, I know all about your life. Go get your man. Go get your husband. She said, right. You said, you're with somebody that, that's not your, so you, you even with somebody. So okay. my question to you is, could you properly explain it without putting the death of, of her former husbands into this text? Okay, brother. It's interesting that... Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tobias. I, I'm sorry. And um, please forgive me. And I want you to tie that up with Hebrews that clearly said marriage is honorable and all. And the bed is undefiled. Okay. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He knows that people's situations. He knows that. I, I got a question also. And I, that, with, with that, I agree. Thanks a lot, my brother. I appreciate you. Yes. So it's interesting that, that you asked me about John chapter 4. And... You asked me, how can this woman have four or five husbands? And I explained to you how a woman can end up having five husbands. I explained that. Then you say that I am putting that in the scripture. But on your explanation, you are insinuating. She was told that you've had five husbands. There was nothing, no other information there to suggest whether everything that you said you are insinuating, you are assuming, you are putting something that is not there. It was never said that she was just shacking up with it. Oh my goodness. Can we meet, meet your mic, please, brother? Please. Okay. Brother Chris, Chris, could you meet your mic? Okay. Sorry, Go ahead, Sorry about that. So, no, no sweat. so definitely, um, I'll just explain to you that there are unfortunate events. There are some people that just have a very unfortunate uh, destiny that when they keep getting married, their husband will keep dying and they can happen twice. That means that she, that, that woman had had two husbands. There are people that like they gave Yeshua an, an example. Hey, there's a woman that had all these husbands in the kingdom. Who is going to be her husband? Yeshua said in the kingdom, there will not be marriage and stuff like that in the kingdom. That's what Yeshua told her. So I was using scripture to, to explain that to you, how this woman at the well, it doesn't give us any further information in that John chapter 4, whether these people were, whether these women, uh, these husband was married her and died, or whether she was shacking up with them. It never gave us this information like that. So but I'm, Tobiah, I'm, I'm simply, but I'm, Tobiah, I'm si it, it usually would say widow in the text. It usually would say a woman that is widow. No, no, it, it would it, no, that. it wouldn't say that, yes, brother. Hold on, brother. It wouldn't say that because Christ was literally talking with her. So they were having conversation. If 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 you're reading her story, if she if you're reading about her story, like he talked about Mary. When you read about the story of a woman, it will tell you that she's a widow and she's a virgin. 
she this woman was having conversation you're not reading she wasn't you know you're not reading a story about her you're reading what she was being told how can christ say she's a virgin but again i really want to stay on topic because i know how this thing goes uh, i understand that this is a very sensitive topic and I, it's very easy to go off and start talking about something else what i'm saying is that you have to understand biblical marriage i'm i'm, I'm going to come to you sister finis I, I just want to kind of refresh the room so we can stay on point the truth of the, of the matter is this. If you know Hebrew culture, if you really know the law of the Most High, you know that a woman is supposed to be a virgin. When you marry her, she, she's supposed to be a virgin or a widow. Once a woman has sex with multiple men, according to the Bible, she is defiled. You cannot marry her. And I can show you places in the Bible that clearly shows this, like as I did in the beginning. So, biblically, the woman you marry has to be a virgin. And the blood that comes out of her, that is the blood of the covenant, covenant between you and her. According to Malachi, as you can see in Malachi chapter 2, verse uh, 13 and 14. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, from verse 13 to 21, it, you, you clearly see that a woman is supposed to keep her virginity until her wedding night. And then the man that takes her virginity becomes her husband in the sight of the Most High. And as long as that man is alive, no other man can marry her. Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. Romans 7, 1 to 3. And also 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11. And also verse 39. It's clearly there. So, I want to come back to Sister, uh, Sister Fenes, who has something to say. If you're downstairs and you would like to say something, please come up. If you're living with somebody and you lost your virginity to a, a man, and you've had boyfriend, and then eventually you met your husband. This man is not your husband. I know it's hard to accept, but he is not in the sight of the Most High. And the more you continue to have sex with them, the more you live in adultery. Uh, please uh, go ahead, Sister, if you have something to say. Yes, um, we, we're talking about the man that has, the woman that has adultery, uh, has committed adultery. Okay, what about the man? Can he remarry if he has had sex with multiple partners? Yes, sister, yes. Okay, because Deuteronomy 22.22 22 says, if a man is found lying with a married woman, so you they have been married if they have slept together, then both of them shall die. That's Deuteronomy 22, 22. If a man is fi found lying with a married woman, then both of them shall die. The man who lay with and the woman, both of them should die. So there is saying that the man cannot remarry either. Your response. Okay, so that's, if you read it, it's talking about when a woman is betrothed to a man. When if a man goes and have sex with a girl that is betrothed to a man, for example, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, while she was betrothed to Joseph, while she was betrothed, if I go to Mary and was able to seduce her and she agrees to have sex with me while she's betrothed to a man, then she and I will be killed. She and I will be killed because she was betrothed to a man and no other man supposed to have sex with her while she's betrothed to a man. Now, if you look at verse 23, you read 22, 22. If you look at verse 23, it continues and goes on to tell you that if I see her or see a girl who is betrothed and I force her and have sex with her, if I have sex with her, then um, I only will be killed. I only will be killed. Why will I be killed? Because she was betrothed to a man. So my sister... I understand what you're saying, but that particular scripture that you read is not just talking about a man seeing a married woman and both of them having sex. And no, it's talking about when a girl is betrothed to a man and she agrees to have sex with another man, both of them will die or should die. But if, if she was raped, 
then only the man that raped her will be put to death. What about the part, the latter part, um, of, excuse me for interrupting again, about Hebrews where it says, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Yes. Do you believe there are just some situations, like I've mentioned, there are some unique situations where we can't judge them because of the circumstances that happened to them. Only God can judge that situation, especially after they had family and it went through years and you read this text and next thing you know, you know, a person is coming. Because remember now, the most high, he, he, you know, he hates divorce. So you have to pick between the two. Yeah. OK. So I, I just wanted that, that part where it says whoremongers and adulterers. The All right. Most I, 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 will, I will. I will definitely answer you that. But I just want to be fair uh, because Sister Finesse was going to speak before Sister Catherine started speaking. So, Sister Finesse, go ahead. Brother, I'm going to come back. Uh, Brother Nihilo, I will come back. And I promise you I'm not trying to run away from that question, but I just don't want to. Uh, I just want to give Sister Finesse a uh, uh, chance to speak before she forgets what she wanted to say. Hey, Toby, uh, can let me say something right quick for Finesse? Is you're bringing out some uh, very, conf uh, I guess, conflictive i mean not well very uh hold on hold, hold on okay hold on because when we say something now again you know, now i'm gonna have to respond and then i'll we'll keep going let's just hear from the system we continue just hold on brother just hold that thought don't forget it okay um i'm not sure why i was pained looking at the title of this room why i was pained to come up here so that's why one of the reasons why i'm up here is okay why was i pained to come into a room with this title. Um, what is the basis of this? Um, I, it, you already know my stance about Israel, how we have to clean up our household, how men have been taken away of our household and broken up a family. And now you're bringing a room like this and you're basically saying that if a man lays with his wife and she's not his, He's not her first. He's committing sin. Um, you, you're still going with that same narrative of breaking up a household. Now, let's go back. I, and, that's I heard, and I heard, I think you are, I don't know if y'all did the complete scriptures about when they brought uh, Mary to Jesus and accused her of having five husbands if we can go there and somebody can read that for me mary yes i'm sorry i'm just i'm yes i have yeah i have hold on for one second please uh the do the chapter the book of john fourth chapter uh i can start at the 15th verse when uh when the woman said unto him, I can start there if you want me to go up, I will. It says here, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go and call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands and he who thou now has is not thine husband in that saidest thou truly the woman said unto him sir i perceive that thou art a prophet our fathers worshiped in this mountain you should say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship the woman continues this yeah you can continue okay jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye all, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father, ye worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour come, and now is when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. 
And upon, upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman, the woman then left her water pot and went her way to the city and said unto the man, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Should I continue, sis? No, let's go over to eight, chapter eight, same book. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's pick it up at verse three down to 11. Okay, verse three down to 11. And the scribes and the Pharisees, and the scribes and the Pharisees, this is the gospel according to St. John, the chapter beginning at the third verse. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up, I mean, lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? And no man condemned thee. Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Okay. Shall I continue, sis? No, that's good. I'm still looking for more, but go ahead, Toby. Okay, so I want to start. From, I want to start from the uh, from the beginning. You asked why you were brought into the room, why you were pinged to come into the room. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't. I don't specifically ping people like that. When I start a room, I ping everybody that follows me, like everybody. I just ping everybody. So that's why you were pinged in, but. If you want, I can stop pinging you. It wasn't like, oh, let me ping Sister Fenerst and bring her into the room. Uh, no, it's just I pinged everybody that that follows me. That's how I. That's how I ended up pinging you. And you know, so if you don't like the title, you don't have okay. to come in. You don't have to come up. Hey, can I chime in on the subject if y'all don't mind? Uh, uh, no, because we, we we got some people that wanted to. Uh, you know, some people that wanted to, that we have to get to, because I don't want to be unfair to people. Okay, so I just want to respond to John, the book of John that you mentioned. I don't know what this really have to do with this topic. The topic, the point is that biblically, according to the scriptures, uh, according to Deuteronomy chapter 22, when you, the woman you marry has to be a virgin or a widow. So typically, she's supposed to be a virgin. That's the reason why the Most High says in the book of uh, book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two, from verse thirteen to twenty-one, the Most High said that if a girl loses her virginity, like if she loses her virginity to some random man before she gets married, she's supposed to be put to death. Why is that? Because she's supposed to remain a virgin until her wedding night. That's the reason why that Joseph wanted to put Mary away. When Joseph thought that Mary was not a virgin, when he thought that, you know, when he was told that Mary was going to get pregnant and have a child, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 19 that Joseph wanted to quietly put her away. 
The reason why he had to do that is because once another man has sex with her, Joseph can no longer marry her. Joseph cannot marry her at that point, and no man can marry her. So uh, we, I would like us to just stay on point because what you guys are bringing from John chapter 4, um, I've already explained to you wh why and how that man, that woman can have five husbands. Because again, if a woman has a husband and her husband dies, according to Romans chapter 7 from verse 3, she, somebody else can marry her once her husband dies. And that when that person marries her, that person is the second husband because her first husband is dead. And I've given you a biblical example, like when they walked up to Yeshua and say, hey, there's a woman that had seven husbands in the kingdom. Who is going to be her husband? Because these men were dying. They keep dying one after the other. It's not something that is very common. It's very rare. But they, you, sometimes you meet women that have had like four husbands, four late husbands. You know, there are some people that have a destiny like that, that they keep getting married, their husband keeps dying. So each one of them will be counted as her husband that can get up to five. So John chapter 4 really has nothing to do with this. The fact of the matter is that most people, including Christians and Hebrew Israelites, most people today are living with women who are not their wives because these women have been with multiple men sexually before you married them there are people who are living in a situation like that and each time you have sex with that person you are actually committing adultery i understand that you guys may have studied relationship before you came into the truth i get it i understand that but now that you are in the truth if they were never your husband in the first place or if she was never your wife in the first place in the sight of the most high she can never all of a sudden becomes your husband or your wife just because you have repented repentance in this case would mean to stop having sex because she was never your wife in the first place or your husband and i gave the example with the book of Ezra chapter 10 when the israelite married women they were not when they married foreign women they were not supposed to marry according to Ezra chapter 10 they had to put these women away and their children that is repentance you can't keep having sex with that person even though you admit and agree that, yes, I know we didn't do it the right way, but well, we are a new creation. No, you sound like a Christian if you say you're a new creation. A new creation means that you have to stop having sex with that person. I'm not saying uh, throw away your children and abandon your family. That's not what I'm saying. I do advise men to take care of your family, take care of your children, be there for them and take care of them. And I know men who have dealt with this issue. So I'm not advocating that someone should uh, abandon their children no it's possible to repent from this sin and still take care of your children because you had that children with that woman she was never your wife in the first place and she will never be just because you repented okay i want to go to uh, br uh to brother nasia go ahead brother hey brother i was in the next i was next in line but i got pumped off all right I, I don't know. Uh, I just give me a please. second all i need is one go second ahead, brother. all i need is one minute Brother, let me ask you something. After everything you just said about the virginity and everything, and it's law, you're right. Brother, you don't think a sister has the same opportunity of repentance as a man does? So a man could be a whoremonger. A lot of us were whoremongers before we came in. You know, and a sister might have been a whore or whatever in the, in, the, in, the, in the world. you telling me that she cannot never remarry again, brother? What about the new creature? What about being born again? What about repent? You know, full repentance? You tell a sister she cannot remarry again, brother. You're not giving her the same repentance as men. And, and even if you say that a man can have more than one wife, that's why he's, he's that's why, you know, um, how you say it? You say a man could get, could get remarried again. But that man might have dealt with harlots. These men wasn't dealing with virgin women. So a sister, you're going to tell a sister that she can never remarry again from something she did in the world in ignorance. You got to watch out for that, brother. Because that, that's not, that's not, you say that sounds like Christians, but it also, what you're saying sounds like a Pharisee. That's the opposite side. And you gotta, you can't tell sisters that they cannot never repent. You're basically telling them that. Are you, you telling them they that, gotta, you know, that a man can be a whoremonger and repent and get married, yeah, that's but up. a woman can't be a that's whoremonger up. and repent and remarry when they come into the truth you're saying that god is a respective person no i'm saying that's what i'm hearing oh, not you, in other brother. words i'm not talking about you i'm talking about tobia 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I understand his enthusiasm. I, I understand the way he's talking, and I understand this is verbal, you know. But that sounds very Pharisaic. It's very overrighteous. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the cap talk. I mean, the cap on it because he know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? We cannot do that. A lot of us brothers, sisters, sometimes we take on women that are not virgins. Sometimes we take on women with children. If that sister repents, she becomes a new creature. She becomes like a spiritual virgin. Of course, she can't grow a hymen back. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Tobiah, what about King Harasheris, Har- 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 who was... I'm going to mute myself. I just Vashti. had to say that. Yeah, when Vashti was married to the king... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. And I then Esther who, came okay. along. So which one of them is wrong? Which Which one is wrong? You, you know, because they both married this one guy. Is he is he wrong? Who's whose husband is she really belong to? OK, so um, there's so many questions. Can we please do it one after uh, Brother Malik? I think you asked the question. Sister Finis, you asked the question and I would really love to uh, respond to. Now you're asking a question, brother. You're the third person. Can I? Uh, Brother Malik, what was the question before I get to Sister Finis, uh, Finis question? Because she did. Finis asked a question about a man being a whoremonger and going on to get married and, and a woman cannot do that. But first, what was the question, Brother Malak? Well, it was basically the same way, same thing in another way. But what I'm saying is, is that I understand what you're saying. And if we went by the, if we was following, hold on, you can hear me? I thought I got disconnected. No, you're um, fine. You're fine. Go ahead. If we, yeah, if we was following before the Messiah and we was following... You know, I don't like to say old covenant, new covenant, because they might think it's Christianity. We're not talking about that. But of course, our forefathers in the past, they married virgin or a woman who died. That's that's true. Even up until 100 years ago, men married that. But you know, the book of Hosea talks about that, right? The book of Hosea, basically, you know, Israel was foreign, was fornicating spiritually. And what did the Most High tell Hosea? To marry a whore. A woman of whoredoms. Why would the Most High say that? The Most yeah, High we, the we, we already that would we, we already addressed that. Okay, so do you have a question? Because there's other, there's other question that is pending. Right I'm just now. saying that, that if a brother can repent a full fledged whoredom, I'm not talking about marrying many wives. I'm talking about whoredom. He's a whoremonger. Then why can't a sister repent? And I'm and I'm not calling sisters whores. I'm just going to the extreme. Because if she, you know, you know, basically that sister, you know, she's been around. She cannot repent. She comes in the truth. She fully repents. She becomes that new creature. This is not Christianity. This is scripture. New creature. Virgin in Christ. Meaning a new creature in Christ. New man. New woman. Why she can't have that same opportunity to start again? We're not saying her to be a whore in the truth. Okay, brother. She comes in the truth. She cannot do that again. All right. So it seems sounds to me point. sounds to me like your question is similar to Sister Finney's question. Right. Well, yeah, she heard. I mean, she, go ahead. She was listening. Go ahead. That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. That's it. Yeah. So I'm glad. I'm glad that you did agree that back in the day, if we are to follow the law, then I'm right. You agreed, and most of you that are arguing against this, you've admitted that yes, that biblically, according to the scripture. Your wife has to be a virgin, and you. So you did agree. So your argument is that well. You know, a lot has happened. We've lost our heritage and pretty much, you know, we, 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 we've sinned. We've committed adultery and we've sinned. And, you know, that's basically your argument. And that's pretty much what I've been hearing uh, since we started doing this. So that, 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 you know, we are a new creation. So, well, you can make that argument all you want. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, is that, you know, the Most High told us to go back to the old ways. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 to uh, 22. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 22. The fact of the matter is that if the Most High tells you that this this is how you get married, then that's what it is. We can't well, get we to... We start re- from that, we, that point. We, 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 we can't... Go back to the old ways from the point that we come in to repent. Okay, we can't... We cannot we, go back in time, brother. We cannot, yeah, so, we cannot so, go back in so, time. So, okay, I, I understand, brother, but the thing is that if the person was never your wife... She cannot all of a sudden becomes your wife because you repented. So you're telling a man to put away his wife? You're going against what Christ said. No, I'm not going. Ag- no, no, I'm not going against what Christ says. 
Uh, speaking of Christ, I want to show you something. Speaking of Christ, but before I do that, can we go to Brother Nasia? Because I let's go to Brother Nasia. He want, he has right, something to say. Right. Yeah. Uh, shalom, everyone. Um, just real quick for me, and I, and I want to try to be as quick as I possibly can. When I came in the room, I heard uh, you were talking about Hosea and the word whoredoms was uh, being emphasized, and I just want to. Uh, just go back to a scripture. I said actually a couple of scriptures real quick. Um, in Second Chronicles chapter twenty-one, and I'll read verse twelve through fifteen. It says, "And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah, but has has walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and has made Judah." and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring, like to the whorings of the house of Ahab, and also has, excuse me, and also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. And I'm ended with this, and behold, with the great plague, when the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and thy goods. I bring that to say, it sounds like I keep hearing the word whoredoms as being related to sex, 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 and not idolatry. Now, when I read Second Chronicles 21, and by your particular definition of whoredoms, you're giving me the impression that the men, the women, and the children were having sexual adultery and not idolatry of following the other nations. Is that true? No, that's not what... I was saying actually, but this is kind of like a different point. Uh, somebody brought up the issue of Hosea, and I was explaining that the children was called children of whoredom. So that's kind okay, of but, that but that that I is. I understand. I, I understand that, but I, what I'm specifically saying is, it says has made Judah and the inhabitants hey, of Jerusalem to go Hold on, Messiah, real quick. Hey, Tobiah, can I ask you a question? What made you kick Cap out the room? Are you hating your brother in your heart, Tobiah? Or can the brother bring off some edification for the people? What? Cap be calling him a Hamite, man. Cap be calling him. Up. And I would, I don't, I'm not surprised. I would kick him out too. Well, so let's stay. Oh, let's no, let's stay. Let, you let's. You, you know, whenever we do, whenever we do so, something like this, I really want, wish that we stay stick to the scripture. I don't want us to to lose point because I'm still saying what I've been saying. There are, well, there, well, are, there, there, there are, there are, let, let, let me finish, brother, let me, let me, let me finish, brother, let me finish, hold on, brother, let me, can I finish? Here's the thing, you and most people that have spoken here, you do agree that yes, biblically, your wife was supposed to be a virgin, but the thing is that we have sinned and we have, we have married women that we're not supposed to marry because we were not in the truth, but now we are in the truth. And there is grace, we are a new creation. That's your argument. So you do agree with me that biblically your wife was supposed to be a virgin. Yes. So that's, that's, the, that's, that's the main point. So now we're arguing. I'm telling you that no, just because she repented doesn't mean that she's now your wife. You're living in sin. I never said that you should uh, stop taking care of your children. I have had a brother that watched my video on this issue and... He's been with his wife, the woman he was living with, for about 15 years. He, he re, in the, at the beginning, he rejected this. He didn't believe it. Then he started going around and began to ask other brothers, Hey, look, I saw this video. I saw this. Is this true? And they keep dismissing it. They keep dismissing it. Eventually, he accepted this. Eventually, he moved out of the house. They got divorced. But he was very committed. I, I advised him heavily to take care of his children. You cannot leave your children. You have to take care of your children. So I'm not saying that you should abandon your children. What I'm saying is that biblically, this woman was never your wife in the first place. She was never your wife. She can never all of a sudden become your wife just because you have repented. You never married her the way you're supposed to. When you marry her, she was supposed to be a virgin. Just like, that's the reason why Joseph, Joseph wanted to put Mary away because Mary was not a virgin. I mean, that's very clear. So like, yeah, can I be, can I come in? I just, I just got a few precepts I want to bring out to everybody. Cause we, 
we we kind of getting away from the text. We doing the Bible uh, disservice when we just talking. I, I just want to bring out a few precepts out real quick. This uh, Ezekiel, I'm going to read too. Uh, this is Ezekiel uh, 18 and 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Verse 22, watch this. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. So when a sister comes into this truth and she repents, those sins will not be mentioned unto her because the Most High said so. We got to give sisters the ability to repent because when we go over, we read in Deuteronomy, it's a law for you know anybody to worship another God, false God. So a lot of brothers should have been put to death and they shouldn't have been married in the first place because brothers is coming from Islam. Brothers is coming from Christianity. That's a false God. So brothers should have had their head taken off, but ain't nobody kill them. So you talking about a sister that was a whore should have been put to death. We well, should have been put to death too as brothers. So we gotta watch what we tell, what we saying, and what we speaking. I'm gonna just read this last precept one more time. It's Ezekiel. I'm gonna just just to drive this home in Ezekiel chapter 33. It says pretty much the same thing. This is Ezekiel 33 and 14. Just to drive the point home. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin. And do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statues of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Verse 16. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be re shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. You understand? So that's the whole point of repentance is the most high having grace and mercy on us enough to um, give us the understanding of what it means to follow him. Because a lot of us didn't have this understanding. So he gave given us the opportunity to do it. So you got to watch what you're saying, brother. That's, that's all I want us to do is bring the precepts out. I understand what you're saying, but I think you got to listen to what the other people are saying that if a sister get married, just like with the uh, what Unk brought out in John Ford. That sister with the, uh, with Yahweh, I was telling her, that sister needed to go and get married and be with one man. She needed to stop that, bouncing around. That's basically what he was telling her. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to take that into consideration. It's the difference between whoremonger and, and, and sisters uh, not being married. So you got sisters made mistakes just like we did. Sisters got to have an opportunity to repent. That's all I've got. Okay, can I res Amen. can I can Amen, I res brother and can I, hold on sister Roman hold on sister hold on. I don't want to forget this stuff please uh, okay. I will come back to you sister Katrine please I I I, right. I I promise brother can I respond to what you just said go ahead I, it's a build I just go ahead okay please can you go to Matthew 5 31 and 31 and 32 I, I I got you with the divorce I got you I got you mm -hmm. It says, it hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Okay, so I wanted for you to look at the last part. Whoever marries her that is divorced, commits adultery. Do you see that last part? I, I got you, I, but I think you're missing so, the point. Hold on, hold on. You, you no, know, I haven't even asked my question yet. Hold on. No, so, no, so, no, I think you're missing what I said. You you just glossed over what I said, that brothers committed spiritual adultery and fornication with all these different guys that we served before we came into the truth. You understand that brothers do that? Yeah, I do understand. So I just want to say this real quick. Brother, so do you... Um, you saw the part where it says that whoever marries the woman who... Who is divorced commits adultery, right? I, I got you. I, I'm following. I got you. Okay. So this is something coming from the mouth of Christ, right? So Christ says that whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. So my question to you is, considering that Christ is the one that said this, would you marry a woman who is divorced? Salakia, you said, uh, I'm sorry, I was texting somebody back. You said, would I marry a woman that is divorced? Christ said that whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. So I, uh, I had everything that you said about how we've sinned, we committed adultery, we did all this thing, and men, uh, men did it too and everything. And, you know, the sister, you know, I understand everything you said. So my question is, 
You're basically saying that we need a second chance. I get that. So my question to you is, Christ said in Matthew 5, 31 and 32, and also Matthew 19, verse 8 and 9, he said that whoever marries a woman who is divorced is committing adultery. My question is, would you marry a woman who is divorced? I, I got you. I, so my, my answer would be with the unk what unk brought out in John 4, when the woman had five husbands, but yet he told her to sin no more. And don't you think he was telling her to go and get a husband and stay with one man? Would that be sin? Because, the uh, I mean, Yahweh was telling her to go get one man and stay with one man. Okay, so, so I don't see that as an answer. I, I, I need an answer. Would you marry a woman who is divorced based on what you see in... Okay, let me put the answer question this way. Maybe you didn't get my, my question. My brother, if every man in this world... if ev let, uh, This is not going to happen, but I'm just using a hypothetical. Like, this is just an example. If every man is to f listen to Christ and follow Christ and look at that verse both in Matthew 5 and Matthew 19, verse 8 and 9. When he said that if you marry a woman who is divorced, you're committing adultery. Can you look at that? Can you look at that? Can you look at that? It says accepted for fornication. No. It says accepted be for fornication. That right there, that, okay, I want to get this answer from the brother that brought this thing up. Brother, I'm going to come back to you if you don't mind, because I don't want to like keep going back and forth, you know, just oh. jumping around. I can come back to you and we can talk about this, my brother, uh, Nuhilo. 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 Brother Zero, I'm asking you, Christ said that if you marry a woman who is divorced, you're committing adultery. I've already asked you this question a couple of times. Christ made it very clear. I cannot marry a woman who is divorced. He said that if I marry a woman who is divorced, I will be committing adultery. Now, we can oh. talk about we can talk about how, um, you know, she has repented and everything and all that. Yes. But the thing is that Christ is telling you that you cannot marry a woman who is divorced. If you marry a woman who is divorced, you're committing adultery. It's, it's very simple. So we can try to say, we can try to say, well, you know, he said this and well, well, she's repented and all that. It's very clear. You cannot marry a woman who is divorced. Why did he say this? Because the man that took her virginity is her husband. And according to Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. As long as that man is alive, Roman seven you, is the one that hold, I was hold on, sis, use. Sis, hold, hold on, sis, hold on, sis, don't, don't, you can't, you gotta maintain because we trying okay. to build. I'm trying to go with the brother here. Just you gotta stay okay. calm. You just gotta. It's not that big of a deal, you know. So, brother, yeah, I think your your problem is you you being too dogmatic about the divorced part. I think you gotta understand what he's saying is that if you marry the woman that was divorced, outside of adultery or fornication. So let's say like a brother puts his sister away because she's wicked or because she don't want to keep the commandments. If somebody marries that sister that that brother divorced, that's adultery because she's still married in the eyes of the Most High because he didn't God, put her God. away lawfully. Putting her away lawfully, which is what he's giving them to understand it, is if she commits fornication or adultery, which adultery falls under fornication because fornication is an unlawful sexual act. I'm going to prove this. This is, uh, well, first off, I'm going to deal with the whole divorce thing. This is uh, Deuteronomy 24 and 1, where the original uh, uh, law for adult, uh, for uh, uh, divorcement is. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. When a man had taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanliness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Now, what we just read in Matthew 5 and 31, this would be an unlawful divorce because he found uncleanliness in her. You can't do that. It has to be for lawful reasons. So, but you got to keep reading verse two. It says, and when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. You cannot do that. That is why when you read Matthew 5 and 32, it says, but I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. So unless it's for fornication or adultery, she is still married to you. Then you were com causing her to commit adultery. I think you're missing that point. She has to be put away for the reason of fornication or adultery. She is loosed from that man. If not, she's still tied to that man, and that is adultery. Do you understand that, Tobiah? I absolutely understand that, and uh, I will also suggest that you read that Deuteronomy 24. Read that also. You read it in King James. Also read that in the New King James. And you see in King James, it says that if she... It said that she may go. 
and become another another man's wife. In the New King James, it says if she becomes another man's wife. So that's a different kind of like a different um, thing over there in Deuteronomy 24. But st st sticking to the topic, uh, we all understand if you do know the law about marriage, it says that a woman would you marry, you can see this in Leviticus 21, Deuteronomy 22, the woman you marry has to be a virgin or a widow if her husband dies, which is the reason why uh, Paul says that in Romans chapter 7 that she cannot remarry as long as the man that marries so, her is so alive. I, I, so um, some of those laws were for the priests, were specifically for the priests yeah, because they were set apart. Yeah, Le 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 Leviticus, like Leviticus twenty one is specifically for the priest, but it's similar. Uh, I uh, never, I never, I never even went to Leviticus twenty one until now. I never usually go there because the law in Deuteronomy chapter twenty two says it all. So the man that takes a woman's virginity becomes her husband. That's why I appointed Mary. Matthew 119. I, I, so I got a question for you. I, sure. What are we supposed to do with the sisters in the truth that have slept with a man and that man is in the world or he's, you know what I'm saying, in jail or something. And you know what I'm saying? That that man had not taken the responsibility of a, of a, uh, of a husband as duties. And what are we supposed to do with those sisters who the man that she originally slept with didn't take the duties of a husband upon her and take up and take his, uh, responsibility as a man what are we supposed to do with those sisters as brothers in the truth uh what we do is what we've always done that's why uh we pay tithes that's why we pay our tithes uh which is 10 percent of our produce that's why it's meant for widows and for orphans and for those who are less privileged that's we, how we gather together and help them and feed them that is what we do with them. We help them, uh, which I said, I'm already doing that. I do own a Hebrew school, uh, online Hebrew school, and most of the kids in my school are in that situation. Most of the kids in my school, they don't have a father in their life. Some of them are a little... So Can I finish this? Can I finish this real quick, please? Yeah. So some of the kids in my school are living with... Um, with their grandmothers some of them are living with their mom they don't have a man in their life and i'm like a father figure in their life and helping them so i'm already doing that and i'm i'm also thinking of expanding that i'm building a physical school a hebrew academy so i'm already doing that so i'm not just telling brothers to this is what the bible says your wife is not your wife let her go i am not uh i'm not i'm not you know i'm not doing that trying to break up family because i I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm already doing something in help, trying to help those sisters who don't have by starting a Hebrew school and helping them to raise their children according to the Hebrew culture. So, but that doesn't so, mean we should continue to live in sin. That's right. So, Lockett, tell, hold on, hold on, Catherine. So, uh, I just want to ask that's you, Tobiah, what, what, what is the solution, Tobiah? That's all I want to know from you, brother. The solution is what some brothers have already started doing. This is already happening. So brothers are finding out what the Bible actually says about no, 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 no. You misunderstood my question. I'm talking about solution for the sisters. What should they do That's when what... they're searching for hair? Should they just be headless? No, they shouldn't be headless. That's what I'm saying. Um, I have, I, I, I mean. So then my question becomes, how do they get ahead if what you're saying is they're not going to be married? Yeah, they, 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 again, we, we do it the way we've always done it in the past before we started following the Western culture. Like in a, in a, a, a man don't have to go, a woman don't have to go um, living with a man in order for her to be her head. A woman who is in the congregation, if you join a congregation, the man in that congregation becomes your head. I mean, and, and if you need any help, the men in that congregation. That in no, so, no, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm asking you, what, what is a sister supposed to do if they wanted to seek a husband? They supposed to just not seek a husband no more? Hold on, Priest. Hold on. Hold on. Mute, mute, mute your mic, Priest, because I don't know if that's you on purpose or by mistake. I could hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask you real quick. I don't know if, what do you want sisters to do? Do you want them to not, not have husbands at all? That's what you're saying? Yeah, they can have a husband. They can because according to the scripture, Come. according yeah, they can they can't because according to the scripture, they are defiled. They are defiled once and once more. Okay, this is the reason why in our culture, right? If you look at Numbers thirty one, Numbers so thirty one. If you don't, no can I finish? Can, can, can I finish husband? just one at a time, one question at a time? Because you know I want to be able to process the questions. So, just to answer your previous question, if you look at Numbers thirty one. Numbers chapter 31, one of the most darkest chapters in the Bible. Numbers 31, you see that our ancestors went to war. 
they took these women and their children and came back. And Moshe became angry at them. Why did you take all these, all these, these you know, kids and these women? Go and kill the sons. The boys, kill them. And also the women that have known a man. Only keep those that have not known a man. Only keep the ones that have not known a man. Meaning that they were still virgins. That's Numbers chapter 31. So, uh, in terms of what to do, I'm already helping. And there are brothers who are already accepting this truth. And they are, they are you know, they, they, they still help and raise their children, which I do advise them to do that. But you can no longer have sex with that woman. She was never your wife in the first place. Now, the question is, are you saying that she can never remarry? Yeah, she can never remarry because I know it's hard to accept. But in terms of sex, no. If you have sex with her, you'll be committing adultery. Because she's had, she's been defiled in the sight of the Most High. She had multiple men inside of her. She's defiled in the sight of the Most High. And if you marry her, you will actually be going against the word of Christ. When he said that if you marry a woman who is put away, you're committing adultery. Because who put her away? That man that took her virginity that, that never paid her bride price. That was the man that put, the man that put her away. Uh, uh, that's a false equivalency. Uh, the, the All right, hold on, brother. Let's go to Katrine. I'm sorry. Uh, because she's been waiting for a Thank while. You. I have. Okay, you keep referring to Romans chapter 7. Okay, so what I'm seeing in Romans chapter 7 is, okay, so we're, 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 I think Paul is talking to the people that know the law. And he's saying, I know I'm talking to you that know the law, that a man is, a woman is bound to the man as long as she lives. You know the verse. But if she be married, she should be an adulteress. Okay. But then he goes on to say in number six, but we are delivered from the law. That, you see Romans six, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. How do you explain that? I see it as... Yes, it is sin, and it is law. But once we accept Jesus Christ, we are delivered from that. And now we are delivered from the law, and being therein, we are held, and we are under the Spirit now. So how do you answer that? Sister, I absolutely agree with you, and I agree with the Scripture. So what that was talking about is basically... Say I'm eating pork, I've been eating pork and I've been fornicating and being a whoremonger and just doing stuff I'm not supposed to do according to the law. When I repent, when I accept Christ, I am now supposed to start living according to the law. I'm supposed to be a new creation. I cannot claim that I'm a new creation, but I'm still shaving my beard. I'm still eating pork regularly. I'm still committing adultery, but I claim to be a new creation. So my brother Zero read ezekiel chapter 18 he read ezekiel 18 where the most high the most high yah outlined the process of forgiveness the process of forgiveness is in deuteronomy uh ezekiel chapter 18 he read that so if i am living in sin and committing sin and i repent and accept christ what we see from the bible is that the things you did in the past based on the place you just read and the place that Brother Zero read in Ezekiel 18. The things we did in the past, that's behind us now. So if I was living like a homosexual in the past, that's behind me now. I am now supposed to now live according to the law. So that's what the scripture is saying. And that's what that's pretty much what we're saying. But it, here, it, here, here, here is the thing, my sister. Not exactly so, what it read. No, it said, no. and that we should serve in the newness of the spirit. That means that we, it says, well, I'm not even going to interpret it. I'll read it. But now we are delivered from the law. That being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Okay, so my sister, that sounded kind of like, you know, I don't know if you're a Christian, but... I don't want to go into a Christian argument saying that we are I delivered. Only read we, the we, I no, only no, read the no. I'm not saying what I am. So, I just read a biblical, uh, biblical scripture. Okay, okay, sister. 
If you want to go down that road, then go to Romans chapter 7 and go all the way down in Romans chapter 7 from verse 22. Romans 7, hold on, hold on. Romans 7 from verse 22. If you read it, Paul was talking about the law of, the, of, of my flesh, law of sin, law of God. He was speaking about different types of laws. The point I'm trying to make to you, my sister, is that when he said that we are delivered from the law, it doesn't, it's not talking about the law of the Most High. The law of the Most High is not oppressing us. The law of the Most High is not bad for us. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, that the law is spiritual. He said that he loves the law of the Most High. My point is that Paul was speaking about different types of laws. Paul did not only talk about one particular law. He spoke about different types of laws. When he said that you are not under the law, he's not referring to the law of the Most High. Look at Romans chapter 7 from verse 22 and you clearly see it. So I don't want to like get into Christian argument that we're not under the law. We're clearly under the law as you can see in Romans chapter 7 from verse 1. We're clearly under the law. But um, I, was going to, I was explaining the question that you asked me, uh, which is that I do agree with you. If we're whoremongers, if we're thieves and liars and adulterers and fornicators, and then we repent. Once we repent and actually start following the law, it looks like, according to Ezekiel chapter 18, that all those stuff we did in the past will no longer be remembered. I do agree with that. But what we are talking about here is that if I am living with a woman, please everybody listen carefully. This is my point. If I am living with a woman and she was never my wife in the first place because she was neither a virgin or a widow. She's been with multiple men before I married her. And you guys did agree with me on this. B because if you understand Hebrew marriage and biblical marriage, you, would, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so hold on. Let me finish this thought. Let me finish this thought. No, no, no. Let me finish. I have to finish this thought, brother. Let me finish this thought. Let me finish this real quick, please. Please. Just let me finish, please. My point is this. If we repent, if I'm living with a woman that was never my wife in the first place, once I repent, I cannot keep having sex with her because she was never, we never got married the way we're supposed to. She was not a virgin and she was not a widow. She's been with multiple men before I married her. She was never my so wife. So, one, so, so once, we, once we repent, I have to stop having sex with her. She was never my wife. And if, so what about her sin and her repentance, Tobiah? That's yeah, all the stuff she did, her sin that she and I committed in the past, yes, she's forgiven too. But the thing is that she's okay, neither... Okay, she, so she, 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 she's forgiven, can you give me a chance to... Can you, a, can you, a, a righteous brother, marriage, when you Tobiah. ask me a question, can you please ask one at, a, one at a time? Let me respond, please. I would like to respond, but I have to also process what you're saying. I'm, I'm trying to build with you, Tobiah. I'm yeah, but you have to let me her. respond. Like you have to, I'm, I'm answering all these things. I have to be able to process what you're asking. So as the thing is that she and I have committed sin. We've, we've all sinned and fallen short. So once we repent and start keeping the law, the things that she did in the past have been for, has been forgiven. But what you guys are so not, what, what you guys, what you guys are not understanding is that if you go and marry her, you are committing adultery. Because she's neither a virgin nor a widow. She's been with multiple so men. Biblically, forgiven, biblically, Tobiah. biblically, no. Because she's no longer a virgin. So biblically, biblically. So you're just saying he didn't forgive her sin essentially then, Tobiah. That's what you're saying. Again, the, the actions that we took before we repented will be forgiven. You're not forgiven. marrying the same woman. You're marrying a new woman when she repents. Kind. Thank you, priest. The, act, the actions that we choose. the name she done put on the fringes. This is not the woman you was dealing with. This is a new creature. This is a virgin. And, and spiritually, this is a new woman. You're still talking about an old woman. That means you're marrying a woman in the world. Like, a, like, as, I, I, like, like as I asked before, I asked the question before, that she is a new woman. That doesn't change the fact that she's no longer a virgin. Neither no, she, no, she you're ne actually a new neither, woman. Neither, no, no, she's no longer a virgin because if she's a new woman, if you get on top of her, then she should be able to bleed. She's no longer a new woman, and just because she's a new woman doesn't mean the that. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, because the point he's making is null and void when he brought out the scripture dealing with the woman with five husbands. Even if they die, that that means she still has been entered in two. So is her vagina forgiven? No, according even to the. She not even in, hold on, then she not even in sin. If she was a widow and, and got a new husband, is her vagina new? Because to yeah. your theory, okay, can I can I answer her. you? Is this for Israelites, brother? 
It's a ball. Yeah. Told by y'all don't know. He be trying to mislead. No, no, like, no, no, brother. I, I already know. I, 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 I already know that you it was. What I'm saying? Can we speak one at? Can we speak one at a time? Can we speak one at a time, please? Can we speak? Can we speak? Can we speak one at a time, please? Already kicked Captain Kelly. Okay. Can we speak? Can we speak one at a time, brother? Brother, listen to me. I'm gonna listen to you. I've given you chance to speak. Can I? We, we can't do it this way. We can't do it this way. Malak, 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 can you listen? Are we just gonna keep doing this? Okay. Can we? Okay. So I'm not gonna speak then. Okay. All right. So listen, listen. Uh, if you want to speak, please let me know. You can speak. Here, yeah, let me speak, Toby. Uh, let me let me say something right quick. Just let me say something. Yeah. Okay. Bef All right. be be before you say, say that, before you say that, I'm gonna Bro, let me say hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Heaven. Hold on. Okay. Let me just let you guys know. Okay. I already know. I already know that this is gonna be a hot topic, and nobody wants to hear this. Nobody wants to hear that they're living in sin. I already know that. I've been dealing with this issue for years. So. Uh, I know how it goes. Most people don't want to. Uh, people will tell me, "Yeah, brother, you're right. According to the Bible, yeah, it's true." But we're living. We are under. We are a new creation. This is what I keep hearing. We are a new creation. Our sins have been forgiven. I'm trying to tell you. You are. Look at the book of Ezra, chapter ten. You see these. these you see these men in Ezra, chapter ten, that married women that they're supposed to. So they're supposed to marry. They had to put them away. So. Uh, I already know that you guys are not going to agree. I get that. But oh, there are some people... Some real quick, there there are some real people... Can I ask some? Because I ain't said go. nothing. Wait, wait. Let's let Heaven Shot go. And then I want to ask Tobiah, uh, can we bring Cat back too? I just want to say one thing. I ain't said nothing. Because it don't really sound like... Um, like, it ain't a hard topic to me. It just sounds like unrighteous judgment. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm a wicked man, and I, like, has sex with plenty of women, you know what I'm saying? And then... I get married to a woman who a virgin, she shouldn't want a man who, you see what I'm saying? Like the Bible should speak, it like you should, it should be somewhere it's like, dog, she shouldn't marry no man who not a virgin. You see what I'm saying? Like the man shouldn't be able to not be a virgin and the woman be a virgin. You know what I'm saying? Like it don't seem, it seemed like weird, bro. Like it seemed like, if it seemed like she just not forgiven, like no, she wasn't a virgin, bro. So put her, like get her out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like if the man was wicked too, how is that? Like, how could you not look at the man too? You see what I mean? Okay. Can like, I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Especially can I, with him being the head and him being the leader. Yeah. It should be more like worse. All you right. Wicked. I, like you, the most wicked one. You okay. see what I'm saying? Okay. I wanna I wanna respond real quick to what you just said, real quick, and I'll go to brother Heaven, my brother, uh, Josiah. Why did yeah, yeah. when in Matthew chapter one, verse nineteen, when Joseph. When Joseph wanted to put Mary away because he thought that she was no longer a virgin, why would he want to do that? Like, when he wanted to quietly put her away, why would he quietly want to put her away? Why? Do you know why? I would say because it was like a miracle out of nowhere. That's why the angel of the Lord came to him. You see what I mean? Like, of course, if out the blue, that's why the angel of the Lord came to him and told him, like, hey, bro, don't trip about that. You see what I'm saying? Now, if it was just a regular, you know what I'm saying? If it was just a regular, hey, she just came up pregnant, you know what I'm saying? And no angel of the Lord came to oh, none man, of them. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's definitely not, bro. It's weird, bro. And they had sex, brother. Don't let him misconfuse you. Okay, all right. We're not gonna, we're not, we're not, we're, 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 brother, brother Malak, brother Malak, can you hold on? Please hold on, hold on, brother Malak. Because he said he was a just man, so if just, she would have committed adultery, bro, would have killed her. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, like he knew what he was doing, bro. That's how the angel of the Lord came to him, bro. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, and me being a man, bro, if I'm having sex with so many women before I get married, and then even if I'm, I'm not in the truth, like if I'm not in the truth, and then me and my wife get married. And we ain't know nothing about that. And then we just came up in the truth. Bro, you think, like, you literally telling me to follow the curses of the Deuteronomy. Like, leave my wife, the woman of my bosom, and my truth. You see what I'm saying? Like, it don't make sense, bro. He like, wants you to go be wicked. Yeah, bro. That don't make go. sense to me. Let's let All right. Go. Okay. Go. Uh, Heavenly Shot, go ahead. They leave different women over and over again. Go, go ahead, Heavenly Shot, bro. Please hold on. Go ahead, Heavenly Shot. Can you put me back in? So uh, yes, I think maybe this topic might be the reason why two thirds of us gonna be killed, man. Because this might be one of the hardest topics to us to <laughs> take is sex. Yeah. We can we can repent from pork, we can repent for everything, but can we repent from sex? So this really might be why the two thirds of us are gonna be destroyed. 
Now, I don't think Toby Oz telling you to put your woman on wife. What he's saying is stop. I believe you still can take care of your family. You can keep your wife, but can you, but do y'all have to still have sex? That's the problem. Is your faith in the most high powerful enough to avoid having sex with the woman? No, because she is my inheritance. What? Okay, like, that don't make sense. Don't know. Know. Like I said, like, that don't make this, sense. this could be the reason why two thirds of us perish because of this right here, because we, we do not, we cannot stop having sex so this i'm not saying it is but this might be the why the two-thirds of it's gonna be destroyed because this so is, he tell us uh, to be fruitful and multiply uh, brother, he said, oh, okay all right all right all right order order hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on brothers hold on hold on hold on uh, hold on i'm gonna come back to you hold on guys hold on brothers he said be fruitful and multiply hold on uh we're gonna go to we're gonna go hold on let, let we're gonna go to sister finesse and then after that we're gonna go to Dr. Abba. Uh, so, um, I want to well, say... Can I ask a question? Yes, we're going to go Thanks. to S Sister Vinny. I think actually Sister Vinny had... You you, you you wanted to speak earlier on. So, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to go to Sister Finesse. And then we're going to go to uh, brother uh, Sister v uh, Vonnie, who wanted to speak earlier before Dr. Abba. And then, uh, before I go to Sister Finesse, Brother Josiah... I think that the issue is that you don't really understand. I've listened to you and I've listened to everybody here. If you're listening closely, you hear that, that you know, people are saying that, yes, this might be the law back then, but now we've repented. That's what pretty much everybody is saying, really. But you're, it doesn't seem to me that you, Brother Josiah, really understand biblical marriage. That's why you keep saying, the this point is, is she, 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 she was never your wife in the first place. But I'm going to come back to that. Let's go to Sister uh, Finis. Please go ahead, Sister. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Um, has God put away Israel? Has he put his people away? Well, uh, you can look at Romans chapter That's 9. That's a cup, bro. You can, you can look at Romans chapter 9. Uh, look, Romans chapter I 9, Romans chapter... Brother, that come on. Brother, cup, come bro. on. You're done, brother. You, that was a fat cup right here, bro. Repent. Okay. If you put away Israel... Can I, right can I answer? Can I answer? Let me follow her real quick. That's heavy. Whoa. What? Come on, you get you're acting like a child. I'm sorry, where did you say go? Romans what? Yeah, I was gonna say, but they won't let me. Why are we acting like little child? Just let somebody speak. Okay, so the answer to your question. So you never answered my question, Toby. Where is Cat? Can we bring him back? No, Vani go give it to him. Vani go Please. give it to him. So just, just let Vani her ask go that give again. it to him. So I asked you. Okay, did can God I? Can I want to answer your away? question, sister. You asked, "Has Yah put Israel away?" I said that your mm -hmm. answer is found in Romans chapter nine, chapter ten, uh, when people were. Where, show me. You could read it. Show Paul, me. Paul answered that that question already. Take me to a verse. I want you to show me where God said that he put his people away. No, I said that the to... answer is found there. You most high put his people away, but he also said that he will gather his people from the four corners of the earth. That's the most high. Okay. You can't even use that yeah, argument. Just, Hold just on. Let me finish. Can I finish? We can do it this way. Please. You have to, you have to meet your mic. Please don't interrupt. Please don't interrupt. Listen, I'm trying to be respectful. I'm, when I go to people's room, I'm respectful. Please, let's not talk over each other. The sister asked me a question, but you guys won't let me answer the question. How are we going to do it this way? Can you please keep your mic muted? Let's do one after the other. I do take permission from you before I speak sometimes. Okay. My, my answer to your question, sister, is that, yeah, I understand what you're bringing up with Yah and Israel, but the thing is that it, 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 it's, it, it, if you look at the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, and chapter 23, the Most High described Israel as being Yah's wife. But all those are spiritual. It was never physical. You can never tell me that the Most High is physically uh, having sex with, uh, with, with Israelite. So it's I'm not, not it, it's, 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 it's not, I'm let, let me finish, with... sister. It's mm -hmm. not, you cannot compare a marriage between a man and a woman. Between exactly 100% being the same as a marriage between Yah and Israel. That relationship is not the same. It's not even the same at all. Not the same at all. The, the, one is physical, the other is spiritual. You can't tell me that we're having sex with the Most High. No, it's spiritual. That relationship is spiritual. Relationship between a man and a woman is physical. That's why you see Deuteronomy chapter 22. When, a man, when, you, when your husband marry you, he's supposed to have a white cloth. 
And the blood that comes out of you when you lose your virginity, supposed to be put in that white cloth, which your father will keep just in case if the man lies on you in the future. So it's a physical relationship between a man and a woman where sex in, is involved. It's not something you cannot tell me it's 100% the same thing. As okay, so let me ask you this question. When I get baptized, don't I come up under the blood of Christ? Yeah, you come up under the blood of Christ. But okay. according, according to... If, according, let me ask you another question. If I go and turn my back, now that I done came under that blood, and I go and hormone and start serving another God, isn't that whoremonging? In his that I done, I done left him. I done left my covenant, right? And I done went and whoremonged and started serving other gods, right? No, biblically, biblically, it's, biblically, it's it's not called whore. It's it's called biblically uh, it's idolatry. But if you then, start serving isn't that other what gods. Israel but, did? We but, went whoremonging and serving other gods. Yeah, we went serving other gods. But like as I said, sister. It's like it's not even close because the relationship between the Most High and Israel is spiritual. The Most High is not coming down here and having sex with Israel women. No, it's spiritual relationship. You stuck it's on it's, sex. It's, it's, I'm not stuck on it, sex. It's spiritual relationship. When it comes to a man and a woman, it's physical. That's the point. It's not the same example. So is sex the only thing that that makes a marriage? Well, it tells you in Genesis twenty four. That Isaac took his wife, took Rebecca inside the tent and had sex with her. It became marriage. The most the high. Marriage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When you when it, when a when a man takes your your virginity, you become his wife. Deuteronomy twenty two says that. All right. Let's go to uh, sister uh, sister uh, Voni. Honey. Yeah, I'm here. Um, so you're saying that under any circumstance that she has to be, um, she has to be a virgin under every circumstance, correct? No. Okay. What, what under what circumstance can she not be a virgin? When, when, uh, according to the law in Deuteronomy 22, from verse 13 to 21, the Most High makes it very clear that a girl has to keep her virginity until, until a man marries her. And that man mm -hmm. that marry her has to take her virginity. But mm -hmm. if for whatever reason she mm -hmm. loses she loses her virginity mm -hmm. before a man marries her. So she starts shacking mm -hmm. up and she starts hanging out with the men and she loses her virginity. Mm -hmm. Then she is to be put to death. If a man marries her and then mm -hmm. has sex with her and then realize mm -hmm. that she was not a virgin, that man was mm -hmm. supposed to put her away and she herself will be put to death. So that when you marry a woman, she has to be a virgin or a widow. A widow means that I marry my wife and then uh -huh. she's a virgin. I take her virginity. Uh -huh. if, if, she, if I die, now she's a widow. Now another man uh -huh. can marry her. Okay, so this is the thing, right? So you're saying that if I'm, if, if I'm not a virgin, let's say for whatever circumstance, right? And I'm not a virgin and I'm married to my husband now, right? You're saying that at this moment, because I'm not um, a virgin, that he has to now put me away? Yeah, because if, you, if you've if you had sex with multiple men, if multiple men had no, no, had... No, 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 that's not what I'm saying, right? I'm saying right now I'm married, right? When I got with my husband, I was not a virgin. Are you saying that now my husband has, even though I have not been with any other man since him, since I've been married to him, that he is to put me away. Yeah, you guys can no longer have sex because you've been with okay. more. And I, I have to give you the reason why. You can't just, ask, you have to let me answer you. you. You've been you've been given the reason why. That's what I'm saying. So that's why I'm trying to, that, I'm trying to pin it down for you. You've been given the reason why, brother. Just calm down. It's cool. Just calm down, right? But but the thing is, is that if you went into that woman, she can no longer go back to what you would call her wife or husband. Because you have devoured that you have defiled that woman. Exactly. That's so what I've in, been saying. Yes. Well, no, 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 no. Give me one second, sir. So you have defiled that woman by going into her according to what you're saying. So now she cannot go back to her wife or husband because he has the right to put her away now for what you would call fornication. Right. So now if you are claiming that woman to be your wife, you have done that and, and it is established between um, in front of two or three witnesses. It has been established. And now that is your wife. 
and the only reason that you are that you can put her away is if she commits adultery on you because she cannot go back to what you would call her rightful husband right there's nowhere in the law that it states what you're saying if you took that woman knowing that she wasn't a virgin then you are you are not to put that woman away there's nowhere in the bible that says you can put that woman away for not being a virgin. I understand what you're saying when you're saying, oh, well, she was supposed to be a virgin, right? But the man is also supposed to be a virgin, right? Unless he's already married and he's taking on a second wife. So we can't we can't negate that part of the law, right? Nobody was supposed to be having sex before marriage, right? Unless the man was married and then I'm coming in and I'm being his second wife, right? That's the only way that a man is not to be a virgin. So my thing is that what you're promoting is divorce and you're promoting unlawful divorce because you're taking it back to the beginning. But you already defiled that woman by going into her. So my thing is that if you stay with that woman, then the marriage bed is no longer defiled because the marriage has been established in front of two or three witnesses like the law describes it to be. Now, if you were going to subscribe to her being a virgin, then that matter should have been established on the night that y'all consummated the wedding. But you can't go two, three years down the line, brother, and y'all have kids and you telling these men that they need to put their wives away and leave their families. That's not righteous. And that's not righteous judgment, especially if coming into that marriage, you were not already married and you lost your virginity being married or you was already not a virgin because at that point both of y'all are defiled and if i repented before getting married to my husband then like the sister said before my sins have been washed clean period we're in the land of our captivity all of us have been squirrely screwed a woman could have been raped it could have been a, a plethora of things or why she could have been deceived or why she lost her virginity so for you to tell men of israel to loot to leave their wives and their children no no yeah. That's not right. Uh, and th nowhere so, in the Bible and nowhere in the Bible does it does it say that you're adding to the Bible. No, no, sister. Man, no, no, sister. Not, sorry. Give me one so, second. Sorry. Okay. Can, can you land? I don't want to interrupt you, but I would like you to finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to land. I'm going to land because what you're saying, because what Jesus told them is that if your wife commits adultery in the marriage, then then you can put her away. But my thing is that she once you marry her and she's no longer a, a, a virgin and you knew that then that's between that, that's between the husband and, and, and the wife. There's nothing to say if she was if she wasn't already a virgin, then she can repent from that and move forward into her marriage, period, point blank. There's nowhere in the word does it say if you marry this woman and she's not a virgin, then you are to put her away. That's he was correcting what Moses said, because if we go back to Moses and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy actually tells you that you can put a bill of divorce in her hand and she can go and marry another man. Jesus is saying, well, no. Nah. The only way that you can put your wife away now is if she commits adultery in your relationship now, in your marriage now. Period. What you're saying is unlawful. Okay. All and right. So, your, so, so, so us. I would like to I, respond I, to that. Please, I would like to respond yeah. to that. When somebody speaks like this, I have to respond. I don't want to forget what she said. So, so sister, uh, again, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the brother earlier. Matthew 5, 31 and 32. Christ says that whoever marries a woman who is put away commits adultery. That's Matthew 5, 31 and 32. If you marry a woman who is put away, you're committing adultery. What I have gotten from hearing, listening to all of you uh, today is that I have listened carefully to everything everybody is saying here. And I can tell that some of you do understand biblical marriage. And those of you that do understand biblical marriage... You're saying, yeah, brother, you're right. But you have to understand that we've all sinned and we've all come short and we've all... You, that's something coming from those that understand biblical marriage. They know that what I'm saying is the truth. But the problem is that they're saying that, well, you know, we are a new creation. But then I hear a different group of people, like the sister that just spoke and also brother Josiah. People who don't really understand biblical marriage. And you're coming no, up here. You're you're coming up here and you speak, and I can tell that you don't really understand biblical marriage. Because those that do understand biblical marriage have more, more than one person here have said, Yeah, you're right. You're right. If we are to live according to the law, you are absolutely right. But the thing is that we're not living according to the law and we've all sinned. So I would suggest that you might want to go back to uh, to, to the drawing board and understand biblical marriage. If you don't understand biblical marriage, I guarantee you, you will not have any idea what I'm talking about. Everything I'm saying will sound crazy to you. The thing is that 
that Christ told that woman, that uh, told people in Matthew chapter 5, 31 and 32. At the very end, he says that if you marry a woman who is put away, you're committing adultery. That literally means that you cannot marry a woman who is put away. Put away by who? Put away by her Goodbye. dad. Put Goodbye. away by put away by her employer. Put a, no, put away because the context of that place is biblical marriage. Put away by her Goodbye. husband. You cannot yes. hold on. Let me finish, please. You cannot marry somebody. You cannot marry a woman who has been put away by her husband. Even even uh, Romans chapter seven tells you that. Please look at Romans chapter seven verse ten and eleven right now. Romans uh, Romans chapter seven verse one to three, and also First Corinthians chapter seven verse ten and eleven. You see what Paul said there, and also verse thirty nine. First Corinthians seven. 10 and 11 and also verse 39. You will see what it says. So do, some of you don't understand biblical marriage. That's why this whole thing sounds crazy to you. Listen, if you are living with a man and you've already lost your virginity in the past and then you've been with multiple men sexually and then finally you met this man and he married you and you guys have been living together, he is not your husband in the sight of the Most High. Now, the sins that you committed, all the sex you had with him, for years, that can be forgiven if the Most High wants to forgive you according to Ezekiel chapter 18. That can be forgiven. But moving on from now, just as long as you were never his wife, you can never be his wife. You can try to say whatever you want to say and sound like a Christian and say all this stuff. This woman can never become your wife in the sight of the Most High. Our ignorance can never can never uh, uh, nullify the law of God. God has said can that, this, our Heavenly Father has said that this is what marriage is. So now we, we can't nullify the law of God with our ignorance. We can do that. Brother, uh, Dr. Abba, go ahead. Dr. Abba? Yeah, let me, let me, please, yes, let me say this. No, but, brother, Dr. Down. Abba have to speak, brother. Hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on. It says that the night Brother, Dr. Abba have, have to speak. God, if, if he doesn't want to speak, then you can speak. God, brother, hold on. God, he has to speak. Let, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can let... Yep. let All right, yeah, okay, go ahead. Like, let me tell you something. The quick, 19th right? chapter of the book of Matthew. This is your unyielded God-given right. Listen to what your God-given right is. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. That is your God-given right. You see this right here? Matthew 19, I believe this is, is 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be. You see that exception clause? And shall marry another committeth adultery. And whosoever put away her which is uh, which has put away doth committed adultery. And I ask you, and I have to go to bed. <laughs> The Bible says whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I've been waiting for an hour for you to answer it. Who's up on this line? Your, your God-given right. You see here, if, if somebody committed adultery on you and you married, you can do, you can divorce that person and marry them again. That's scripture. Yeah, see, brother, you, scripture. brother you're, you're, you are arguing against something that, has nothing to do with this. When did I say that you cannot, you know, divorce somebody if they commit the adultery? I never said that. That's in Romans chapter You're 7. You're saying if the person, but what I'm saying is the way the context is, it's almost like you basically, if you're, you know, you got in a relationship, you're 12 years old, you're 15, you had your little boyfriend, and y'all got together, and from 15 years old, you got into the truth at the age of 16, and you can't marry, you can't marry nobody. Because you had sex. That again, again, wrong. Christ That's says wrong. that, can I respond? I'm going to let you respond, but I have to say this. I have to say this and I got to go. This is a real story. This man and this woman, they was married. They was virgins. They married. They found out three years later that they had the same father. The same father. Once they found out they had the same father, they didn't have any children. They had the same father. They got a divorce and remarried. They got a divorce and remarried. Is that wrong, Tobaya? Yes, my brother. Time? That oh is. Oh my God! So stay married to your sister. I got to oh go to bed goodness. now, my brother. Oh, my goodness. I got to go to uh, bed. Okay, brother. Hey, my brother. Uh, I love you, yeah. brother. You know Thank you. I Thanks, for, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. You might want to look into uh, the laws of our biblical marriage. You want to stay married yeah. to your sister? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Well, you have to. You say you have to go. If you if you want, you can stay, and we can get into that. But uh, Are you saying sex is marriage? 
like yes or no yes sex is marriage and i, I have to okay, explain that i have to explain that okay, that's yeah i have to good. explain that you, there, there are some questions that don't have uh yes and no answer okay so if you ask me a question you can't force me to answer it to you at a specific way i have to answer you because there are some questions that need explanation now if you like i can explain to you why sex is marriage there's a reason why joseph wanted to put mary away when he thought that Mary was not a virgin. He wanted to quietly put her away. So according to the law, when you take a woman's That's virginity, because they were betrothed. according to the law, he wants to put her away because they were betrothed. Yes, they were betrothed already. Yeah, we know so that. So he, he, he wants to put her away. Baby. He wants to put her away because he was told that she's going to have a child. And he knew that he, she was a virgin. Why, how can she have a child if no man have touched her? Just like Mary herself told the angel. How can I have a child when I'm still a virgin? So, you ask me if sex is marriage. And I would love to answer that if you guys will allow me. Why, how sex is marriage? Because there's a law that shows that sex is marriage. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 22. When a man takes a girl's virginity... She becomes her husband. Any man that lays with her after that, 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 that's pretty much an adultery. So this is what Romans chapter 7 is trying to say. So once a man takes your virginity, that man, no other man can marry you as long as that man is alive. This goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28 and 29. So sex is marriage. That is the reason why that if a girl lose her virginity before her wedding night, as you see in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13 to 21, if a girl lose her virginity, right, before a man marries her, the Most High said that after a man marries her and discover that she lost her virginity before, if you marry a woman and you discover that before you married her, she lost her virginity, and now you're having sex with her for the first time and she's not a virgin, the Most High said that that girl should be put to death. Why? Because she's supposed to keep her virginity until her wedding night. Once multiple men have sex with her, she's defiled according to the law. That's why the Moshe, that's why Moshe, Moses told the Israelites in Numbers 31, when they went to war and they captured lots of women and their children, Moses became angry and said, why, why did you come back with them? Kill the boys and every woman that have known a man and keep the ones who are still virgins for yourself. Only keep the virgins. So there are scriptures that deal with this. My problem that I'm having right now is that some of you don't really understand biblical marriage. And you're just answering just like out of emotion. But those that do know the law I understand. The scriptural facts. Toby, uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but Can I say something? Hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, but like you're really the only one that's kind of like raising your voice. And then on top of that. You kind of told Dr. Abba, even though you backtrotted out of it without like humbling yourself and apologizing, you told him that his wife was not a virgin when he met her. Like you openly accused him in front of everybody. So like, no, sister, sister, I say that general. I said that generally. No, I said, I said, I said. Let, let's Thank let, you. Let, your own let, moderator is telling I, you we, it's two or three witnesses. You yeah. did do that. I did you explain. I es yeah, I yeah. We we can go with personal second, attack. Give me one second, sister, to me, uh, sister. Give me one second, no, no, no. You're no, you're, you're, you're misrepresenting me. You're misrepresenting me. I did Everybody make you very clear. It? And the uh, so the the brother understood it and he accepted what I said. I did give a general explanation why people respond this way. I explained it to him and he accepted it. Now you're coming up to make a personal attack, to deviate from the topic. No, 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 now no, we start no, talking about something else. We, we start talking about how I'm a false, a how I'm a false like you said. Let's bit, stay on topic. Let's, no, no, actually, I, actually, actually I'm not because people have been screaming over here earlier on. I've been coming everybody no, but down. But I'm saying us on stage, that's on stage now, we've been talking real calmly. That's why when I was talking yeah. about, I asked you to calm down. And that's what I'm saying. You're a little bit temperate. No, sister, that's what you're trying to do, what you're trying to do, which... I'm not which, trying to do no, anything. I, I'm, trying, I'm actually... I'm trying to... No, I'm what you're trying to, to do is that down. you're I'm trying to make it can, personal. Sister, sister, hold on. Listen, I know you're never going to accept this. Okay, I know you're never going to accept it because I already see where your argument is coming from. So what you're trying to do, okay... What you're trying to do, because when you do something for a long time, you kind of see, know how it works. Been doing this for years. What you're trying to do is like, I had a, a, an issue with the brother, brother Dr. Abba. I explained myself. He said, okay, I get it. But you come up now 
you're trying to deviate from the topic and all of a sudden we start talking about me let's stay on topic if you're living with that man and he was not the one that took your virginity sister he is not your husband whatever you guys did in the past whatever you guys did in the past that thing you did in the past yeah that will be forgiven but moving forward from now on if you truly repent you cannot keep living with a, ma a man who, uh, you, you who was that. not your husband you in the that. first place and the book but of now, Ezra. what i was responding to what i was responding to toby y'all was the fact that you said that we were being emotional so I, what i was coming off my so here, mind here you go again sister that, can we not make it right, personal can we just stick to the topic you that's what i'm saying toby y'all you are the only one on stage that is making it personal I, so no 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 i'm down, not sister i would like to stay i would like to at least like to stay on topic because at this okay, point well, let's, okay, you're, 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 let's you're trying to change the topic then. I know no, what you're no, doing, no, no, my no, sister. No, 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 no. You, you're throwing a lot of slugs. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We see that, Thank bro. You, like, I, everybody in the world agrees. Yeah, of course, I, 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 of course. Of course, everybody agrees. Of course. Because what I'm what, I, what I'm saying is... Hey, you my brother. Listen, listen. Let's stay on topic. Let's stay on topic. I know what I know what's going on. Let's stay on topic. The thing is that... if wrong with talking passionate. Yeah, if... If you, if you are living, nah, nah, I'm not saying no thing, slugs, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with talking passionately, but I'm saying if you're throwing slugs at people, then it's going to ignite emotion on the stage. So let's take the slugs out of it. No one is throwing slugs his way out. That's what I'm saying. We've been building in the scriptures and we do this every day. But if you start saying, oh, people being emotional, if you telling this man that the woman that he living with is not his wife and you doing all this and doing all that, then it's going to erupt the stage. Op. That's all I'm saying. Keep That's all good. To the scriptures. Come on, let's move on. I'm That's what it. I'm saying. I'm I, That's all let's I was trying on. to get him to understand is that he's going to erupt emotions because he's being emotional. The, right. the, 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 the topic is emotional and I get it. I understand. And I, uh, people get offended by no, this topic. we good over here. Uh, we good. Because <laughs> the only judge I got is the most high. So we good. Just calm All down. All right, big thing. Come on, let's finish. All let's right, finish. let's move on. Can I ask a question? Hey, Toby, yeah. I, Jazzy wanted to talk to you. I can let me get after her. All right, go ahead, Jazzy. Okay. Uh, so you said sex is marriage. Can you explain Exodus 22 and 16 for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful and Please. beautiful. I'm glad you brought that up. Exodus, uh, six, Exodus, uh, uh, 22 and 16. 20, Actually, you can start it at 15. 22, 16, have, right? And, yeah. and ended at 17. All right. Yeah, ended so, at 17. Okay. So the most high is saying that if a man. Nah, read it word for word what it says in the book. All not right. Your, not your opinion. I want you to like read the actual scripture. Please. All right, could you read it, or somebody somebody can pull it up and read it? No, nah, I want to. Could you? Okay, could you, if you I. Have a book? I actually I want to keep my screen open here. I'm monitoring uh this room right now. Yeah, I'm adding people. I'll, I'll read it. I'll yeah. Read it real quick. Thank you. Uh, this is the book of Exodus 22 verse 16. Uh, 15. My sister wanted 15, but if the owner, well, yeah, 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 we can go to 16. We can go to 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall er, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of her. So if sex is marriage, when he lay with her right then and there, that should have been his wife. He shouldn't have to endow her to be his right. wife or betroth her because betroth means you make someone eventually you plan out to make someone your exactly. wife if i lay with the man that does not make him my husband i can leave him i'm not tied to him you know what ties me to him unfortunately a lot of people just like to say it's a piece of paper but even the book talks about divorce divorce and duties of marriage yeah and duties of marriage so what ties me to him is when i officially say Okay, I got a, a piece of paper to say, yeah, we're married. But in the eyes of the Lord, when I say, yeah, and then we consecrate our marriage, that's I am officially married. But if I just lay with him and we don't, that's not me making me his wife. You can't go around saying that because you kind of put people. Sister, are you asking me a question? A you, is this not, a question? Yeah, you, because you want you want you wanted to you you wanted to read it and want me to respond. So are we doing okay, that no. or no? Wait, Toby, she wasn't finished. I, I wasn't let her done. finish. I wasn't done, sir. Let me let me get my point across. 
the reason why you can't go around saying that sex is marriage because you have people who are in, let's say, domestic violence relationships that have that type of mindset that say that people go around and say sex is marriage and brothers force women to stay with them because of that. So you have to be careful with what you say and not add and take away from the book. That's all I have to say. Oh, so you didn't actually have a question. I thought in the beginning you wanted no, to ask I me a question. I wanted you to explain. I wanted you to explain Exodus 22 and 16. Can I explain that? Because yes, sir. you started reading it and then you were done. So I, I was confused whether you're asking question or you're making a statement. Read, I, I want you to explain Exodus 22 and 16 through 17. Good. Thank you. So Exodus chapter, chapter 22, verse uh, 16 and 17. It says that if a, if a man enticed a maiden or a virgin and have sex with her, he is supposed to go to her father and pay her bride price. Even, okay, let's, let me pull it up actually. Exodus 22. Um, I didn't want to leave this screen, but I have to. Exodus 22. Okay. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, so she's not betrothed to anybody, she's just, you know, what you, what you might call single. If a man betroth a entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Verse 17. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to dowry of virgins. I'm so glad you brought up this scripture because actually I have not brought it up. I know about this scripture. If you watch my videos, you're going to see this scripture. I'm glad you brought this up because this actually proves my point. It says that if a man entice a, entice a maiden, a girl that is a maiden, he shall pay her bride price. He must endow her to be his wife. He must go and pay her bride price. Even if her father says no, he must still pay her bride price. Even when her father utterly refuses, he must still pay it. So, why is it that after having sex with her, he wants to marry her and pay her bride price? His father clearly says, no, I don't want you to marry my daughter. Get out of here. Don't marry my daughter. No. The Most High said that even if her father says no, he must still pay her bride price. Do you know how he, go, how he gets to do that? Because we have a system in our culture, the elder system, what you see in Deuteronomy chapter 17. So, you will also see this in Deuteronomy chapter 22. So if this man wants to pay her bride price and her father says no, guess where he goes to pay that bride price? He will take that bride price and go give it to the elders. The elders at the gate. Just like when you read Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 talks about uh, the husband of that woman that sits with the other elders at the gate. So if, if I... Take your daughter's virginity or if I, if I ha let, let, let me just stick to what it says. If I lay with your daughter and I then want to marry her or I come, I, I, if I lay with her and I come to you to marry her and you said no, even if you said no, that will still not stop me from paying her bride price. I still have to go and pay her bride price because she's my wife. So yes, sex is marriage and I'm going to throw this scripture too. Okay. Genesis 24, let me finish. Genesis 24. Genesis 24, we see that when they brought Rebecca to Isaac, there was no bad, wedding. Bad, they, bad, where, where, bad example. You can't can answer. I finish? Can you I finish? You didn't answer my question. I'm no, answering you your question. If you will let me finish, that. I'm answering Very your bad. question. Can I, can I finish with this last scripture? When they brought Rebecca. Yeah, that's a bad example though, Toby. Can I finish? Can, can you even hear the example before you decide if it's bad or not? How can you how can you decide? Is, I know you're talking I know you're talking about Rebecca going into the tent and don't be a very but there was a whole process before that that you're skipping. Yeah, Go but ahead, but you I haven't even finished. And if you know about that scripture, there are some people here that who might not know. So can yeah, they Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Go through it, but but make sure you I would say get the whole context. And we gotta read all those all those verses. You can read all those verses. As we probably should. <sighs> okay. So I said that I, I, the question was about whether sex was marriage, and I'm giving an example. 
that when right, they, right. When, but when, you're, you're giving it, you're giving a bad example, brother. Can I finish? How can you are, know if it's bad if you don't even listen to I it? I know this by heart. I know this. Yeah, but you're not. But you're not the only one that knows. Yeah, you, you're not the only one that might ahead, know. Bro. Can you listen to other? I mean, let me finish. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Toby. Go, go ahead. Okay, so, so when we say that we're being emotional, that's kind of I'm a human being. Okay, I am a human being, and when I'm oh, when, oh, when I'm asked a question, and then I, I'm not allowed to answer the question. I mean, at some point, you kind of get it's, frustrated. It's fine. it's fine, Toby. Go ahead. Okay, bro. so I'm not just raising my voice. Just at some point, anyway. So, Genesis 24. Starting from the beginning, Abraham sent out his messengers or servant to go and find a wife for Isaac. They go on, they pray to find the right wife. The Most High go, give them, you know, directs them to Rebecca. She was a virgin, and they went in to went to her father's, uh, to her mother and her brother. They paid her bride price. They gave some gifts and everything. They took Rebecca and brought Rebecca to Isaac. When they brought Rebecca to Isaac in Matthew, uh, uh, Genesis 24, Isaac took Rebecca inside the tent and laid with her. He, she became his wife. There was no any other ceremony that happened. There was no white wedding. There was no church wedding. There was no court wedding. They just went, paid her bride price, brought her and gave, it, gave her to him. As soon as he laid with her, he, she became his wife. And that's what I mean when I say that sex is marriage. The most powerful scripture on this, which I really think that anybody who is interested about sex being marriage, please look at Exodus chapter 22, uh, no, Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22 from verse 13 to 21. It clearly tells you what happens on the wedding day. On the wedding day, you see that a, 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 the girl is supposed to, the girl is supposed to white, have a white, white cloth, like a piece of cloth that she would take with her when she goes in with her husband. And once she goes in with her husband, when he goes into onto her, when he goes into her, the blood that comes out of that her body will be put on that white cloth. And that cloth will be given to her father. Just in case. What if, happened before the sex? In that story that you oh, have. Trans- That's what I'm saying. He don't want to read into it. A whole bunch of yeah, he do talk about that. You stuck on sex, like yeah, I do. Yeah, he, the he que- do, the que- the quest the question I was asked is whether sex is marriage. I don't know how ca- how I can yeah, answer that question. Right. Hold on, hold on. on how how how, how can I how can I answer the question about whether sex is marriage without talking about sex? I have been interrupted right now and told that I'm stuck on sex. I'm not the one that asks myself whether sex is marriage. You see, this is what but happens, you, you, and but then you did lie on the room, though. Though, can I can I did, can I did lie on the scriptures can, by saying that you said that that is there was no prior transactions or conversations to that, like no prior engagements. No prior uh, barterings or anything prior to. You thought that they just went to the tent. No. And I, I just explained. You, you said that. Brother, you said I that. just literally explained. I just literally explained that Isaac, Abraham sent his messenger out to go and find a wife for Isaac. They prayed about it and the Most High directed them to Rebecca. I just said that, that, that the servant followed. So f- hold on, so hold, on hold, hold on, hold on. I just said that the, the servant followed her and went to her mother and her brother and they exchanged gifts, which is basically her bride prize. I just explained all that. All that. And you're, you're saying that I never talked about that? Are you kidding me? Brother, because I'm saying you gave a bad example because you're giving, a, you're giving Isaac and Rebecca. Did Isaac entice Rebecca into that tent? Like, did he entice her to go into the tent and lay with her like Exodus is talking about? That's why I'm saying you're out of context. Bro. No, saying, no. Context? All these stories are not the same. The story in Genesis 24 is a different story. The reason why I even quoted Genesis 24 is that I'm trying to show you that according to Genesis chapter 24, this is the process of marriage. They paid her bride price by giving all those gifts that they gave. They took her and brought her to Isaac and Isaac had sex with her. And he, according to the Bible, she became so they went his to the wife parents first right they did what so they went to her parents first right like her brother and her mother right yes and i did mention oh, that okay so they went to that okay so there's a prior, there's prior steps of course there has to, there okay. has to be prior so, so sex so sex is a uh, so sex is a part of marriage 
it's not marriage in itself like you said earlier. Okay, that, gotcha. that, that makes sense. That's what I just explained that there are things that happen but like you bright did, but price. You didn't say that from jump though, Toby. That's why you, you confused everybody. See, you're you you're, you're, you're proving my point, marriage. my brother, because I just explained Genesis 24 and you, you remember that people are listening. So this is not just between you and I. You can't say that, that I did not say what I said. You can't say that, my well, brother. It proves it proves my point. I already know that most people are not going to agree with this. But let's continue. Now, the, I was talking about you the know? other. I was talking about the other part that that shows that sex is marriage. And I was saying that if you look at Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two, from verse thirteen to twenty-one, you can see what the Most High said there. If a man marries a girl and go in into her and if he accuses her of not being a virgin and they can't actually prove that she was a virgin that girl is supposed to be put to death so sex when you when you when you're supposed to pay a bride price before you marry a woman you're supposed to pay a bride price but if you don't pay a bride price and you take her and have sex with her you still have to go back and pay her bride price that was the scripture that the script the, the scripture that the sister brought up in exodus 22 16 and 17. So you're supposed to pay a bride price. But if you don't do that and you take her virginity, you have to now go back and pay her bride price. So, what the hell uh, to? Off, of, off of what you said, right? Uh, as far as. Okay, so you're saying, basically, off the topic of the room, that sex with your wife is the same because you are not her first. Okay, so using Exodus 22 and 16 to 17 as an example, right? And you said that a man has to pay her uh, price and everything, right? But if the father refuses, then, no, yeah, if the father refuses, he has to pay her price. So if the father refuses, does that mean that she can't go and marry someone else? Again, yes, because you have to understand that in our culture, in the Hebrew culture, and I wish you, I wish you guys would let me answer this question. I wish, I wish you, I wish you let me answer this question. When, whenever I'm asked a question, most of the time I, I get interrupted when I'm when I'm answering that question. Sometimes you don't let me finish the question. You assume that you know what I was going to say. So, because you know, in this particular particular subject, I already understand. When I deal with other issue, people love it. People love when I talk about other things, and they agree with me. This issue is one of the issues that people don't want to hear. People just don't want to hear it. We keep going round and round and round and round round. Those that do know the law, there are people that came up here today that do know the law. They said it multiple times. Yes, you are right, but you have to understand that we've repented. So I can stick with the argument about whether, you know, what whatever happened in the past, you know, happened in the past. But the thing is that I am trying to argue with some, some, some of you don't really, really, really understand uh, biblical marriage law because going back to what you just asked right now um, you asked me and the question is if you take a girl if you, if, you, if you have sex with a girl and you go to pay her bride price and her father refuses can she remarry? Can somebody else marry her? No yes. and, and, and the reason for that is this and I will tell you why so the reason why nobody can marry her is because you have to understand that according to the Hebrew culture, like according to the scriptures, usually girls keep their virginity. You hardly see a girl in the land of Israel who is no longer a virgin and don't have a husband. Typically, girls, they are virgins and then they get married. The Arab people, the Arab culture, they continue to practice this till today. They're still practicing this. South Africa, if you go to South Africa, you see that they, are still do, they do virginity tests every year. Every year they do a public virginity test on their daughters. You can look this up on, online. So in our culture, girls are encouraged to keep their virginity until their wedding night. It's very well understood that if a girl loses her virginity before a man marries her, then she's supposed to be put to death. So in our culture, we didn't, we didn't practice like boyfriend and girlfriend and dating. We didn't do that. You, you must keep your virginity until a man comes and marries you. That's the Hebrew culture and the most high said that if you lose your virginity, you're supposed to be put to death. All right, can I, can I just ask one more question to piggyback? Let me ask one question. And then I'm going to be quiet. What does the, uh, I hear you saying a lot to me, but let's say my daughter, I have a daughter, right? 
if such is marriage, what do I have to do with it? What so I'm her father. Great point. I'm, I'm, I'm her father, right? So if sex is marriage, you might as well knock me out the box and she might as well go have sex with somebody and that's her husband. What does the dad have to do with it? What does her dad what's have to do with it? Yeah, what's, 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 what's my cause of being here? What's the point of me being her dad if sex is marriage? What's the point of me being her dad? What do I have to do with anything? If she just, if a man just find her in the field and and uh, he entice her and he have sex, what do I have? Why do I have the choice to say no if sex is marriage? All right. Why can me as the dad say no? You're not marrying my daughter if sex is marriage. All right. So I would love to answer that. Can we please? Uh, can we please go to? Um, let's go to, Sirach forty two, verse nine to twelve. I would like to, it actually talked about um, a father and a daughter, like what fa the father has to do. So can somebody please read the book of uh, Sirach, uh, chapter 42, verse 9 to 12. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 42, verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and be married, lest she be, lest she should be hated. And her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house and having a husband, lest she should misbehave herself. And when she is married, lest she should be buried. Okay. All, all, all the way to 12. To 12. Mm -hmm. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Lest she may be a laughing stock to, be, to thine enemies and a byword in the city and a reproach among the people and make thee a shame before the multitude. Behold, not everybody's beauty and sit not in the midst of women. Okay, so this scripture is talking about, um, talking about a father being worried that his daughter might, might you know, start having sex or lose her virginity. Uh, the point is, watch your daughter, be very careful uh, so that she doesn't humiliate you. And in our culture, that means if she becomes pregnant at home, like somebody pointed out earlier, about 100 years ago, the stuff we do today, we didn't used to do this stuff like having boyfriend and girlfriend and dating and hanging out. We didn't do these things. So the job of the father is to make sure that he gives his daughter a marriage uh, as, you know, as, while she's still clean. And you see this in the law in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13 to 21. So your job as a father is to make sure that your daughter remains a virgin until her wedding night. Now, if, if, if for whatever reason, as you see in that Sirach 42, Ecclesiasticus 42, verse 9 to 12, if for whatever reason she, she goes astray and a man takes her virginity, then that man is now supposed to come back and pay her bride price because according to the law, the man that took her virginity becomes her husband. That's Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28 and 29. So as a father, your job is to make sure that you, know, you teach her these things and let her keep her legs closed, until her, teach her Hebrew culture until, for her to remain a virgin until her wedding night. A, a man is supposed to come up to you and... You can betroth her to him. And then once, you know, once you guys agree on everything, her bride price will be paid. Just like you see in Genesis 28 and 29. Uh, Genesis 28 and 29 also shows that after uh, our ancestor, Jacob, after Jacob had finished paying the bride price of Leah and Rachel, he said to her father-in-law, give me my wife. I have, I'm done, you know, I'm, I'm done um, paying you. And they gave her to him and he went into her and she became his wife. So that sex, that very first sex that happens, that's how you consummate the marriage. You can never, ever, ever, ever uh, disregard the law in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13 to 21. That clearly shows you what happens when your daughter gets married. You're supposed to give her a piece of cloth which she would take with her inside the room with her husband. 
and once he has sure. sex with her, that Very blood different. that blood that comes in, they put the blood on that cloth and give you you the father. They give you back the cloth and you keep it just in case. That's a, that's an evident, evidence what of her virginity. What if she got a high high man? Wait wait wait, wait 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 wait. Let me talk to him right quick. Let me let me talk to him. I'm getting a second. Give me a second. Uh, so my job is to only look after my daughter' virginity. Right? That's what you're saying? To make sure she don't be a whore. Right? So, basically, she she has no value to me but to just look after her virginity. Which means, you know, not supposed to cook, clean, do all this stuff. I don't supposed to show her how to treat her husband uh, by watching my wife. Like, she don't supposed to do no how to do this, no anything. My job is just to look after her virginity. That's what you're saying? Okay, this is what I'm saying. Uh, if you look at Titus chapter 2, from verse 3, it already said that... What book is there? I, I didn't understand. Titus chapter 2. Okay. Titus okay, chapter 2. Gotcha. From verse 3. It already shows what the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. So when it comes to cooking and cleaning and stuff like that, that's what her... And loving her husband, that's what her mother teaches her your job is to i was simply answering the question that you asked me sometimes people will ask question if i start answering you'll be like oh no you're answering too much if i try to answer too little no, no, no. hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on brother hold on if i if, if you ask me a question and i go straight to the point and give you the answer i will be accused of oh so you're saying this well i said that because i just wanted to give you a very simple answer so if you want me to give you a full answer, no. Your job is not just to sit over there and watch her virginity and protect her. No. Your job is to, uh, you know, to, 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 to provide for her, to protect her, to, to, to teach her whatever a father has to, to teach her the law. You are the father of the house. Your, jo your, your, jo your job is to teach your family the law. So there's a lot more, there's a lot more that you teach her, you know, there's a lot more to you being a father. Yeah. Listen to my question. Listen to my question because I don't think you understand. Right, but that's a good answer. I like your answer, but that's not the question I ask you. Uh, what's my job as a father? Right, what's my job as a father to make sure my daughter married the right man that, that, that I give her to the right man to take her virginity? What's my job? Well, that's why I gave you the scripture I gave you in Sirach chapter 42. Verse... Well, the scripture just was telling me that make sure she don't shame me and stuff of that nature. I understand that. That's a good scripture. I agree with that. But I'm, what I'm asking you is, what's my job? Like, hold up, hold up, bro. Hold up. Hold up. Because I want to talk to Toby for a second. What is my job? she don't fall to that kind of man how can i make sure that she don't fall to that kind of besides showing her the laws because i can teach her the laws all i want to and she still can slip into the hands of a man that entices her so what's my job right as a father to make sure she don't fall for that your job as a father is to I a biblical example I can give you is Susanna in the Apocrypha. Susanna, it describes Susanna as a very, very uh, beautiful Hebrew woman, one that feared the Most High, and then it tells you that she was raised in the law of Moses. Her parents raised her in the law of Moses. So your job as a father is to raise your children in the law of your uh, law of the Most High. The Most High gave you a commandment. Deuteronomy 32, 46. Deuteronomy 32, 46. The Most High gave you a commandment saying that you are to teach your children everything that he commanded you. So if you do teach, them, teach your children all the laws and the commandment, then they will understand the kind of man that they will marry. And all that will be passed on as you're teaching them the law. So, oh, yeah. Listen, my job is to, as a father, my job, and let me tell you, what my job is because I don't think you know her. That's why I'm asking you. No, that's you, that's you know your job. job. So so you but and I might you, you and you and I might have I don't think that that question is really me, you know asking ask me your you, job. Ask. Your your job might be right, different. Let me, let me ask you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay. Me tell you. Go ahead. All right, 
it's not just about her virginity, right? It, which it is. It's a big part of her. I, I never right. said it's just about her virginity. But, I just told you you're too no, supposed no, to I, provide, no, no. right? I, I never said you said that, Toby. I, 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 listen, bro, I'm, not, bro, I'm not attacking you. I'm having a conversation. Man, you're having a dialogue. But uh, do you have a daughter? I'm just curious. Do you have any daughters? Uh, let's not let, let. I don't think we should. You know, we should uh, no, bring no, I'm in. Asking a simple bring question in. This, I mean, we can talk. We can talk father to father. So I'm asking, do you have a daughter? No, I, I don't. I, I don't think we. You know, we. Uh, we I don't want. I don't want to make it personal. I'm really trying to keep it. You know, no, no, keep it not, to the point. Well, well, when it comes when it comes to Israel and the laws, it, it is personal. No, no, no. Listen, when it comes to Israel and the laws and our daughters, we should be personal. It should be personal. It should be very personal, especially when it comes down to our women. It should be a hundred percent personal. So this is why I'm asking you, uh, do you have a daughter? I have daughters, right? And my job is to watch who I want them to marry. I want to be around the man I'm going to pick for them. Therefore, I have to know if this man is a working man. Can he take care of my daughter? Can he protect my daughter? Can he provide for my daughter? Right? So therefore, this is why the fathers of Israel used to uh, hang around, uh, hang around certain families, so they could see how the family is before they give their daughter to a brother. You have to see what kind of family they come from. The first thing I want to do is I want to meet your dad. Do you have a dad, young man? Let me see your dad. If you don't have a dad, I want to meet whoever your guardian is or whoever your parent is. Right. I want to see how you interact. I want to see how y'all interact. I want to see what kind of household you come from. Right? My job is to watch the man and give her to a man of understanding. Like the scripture said, you keep you keep coming out with scriptures. But uh, do you understand Sirach chapter 7 verse 25? Right? Exactly. Yeah. It, I know about that scripture. It says, it says, marry thy daughter. And so should thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of give her, but give her, give her to a man of understanding. So therefore, if you give her to a man of understanding, if you've been watching this young boy since he was a baby, and you make a, a, a covenant with that family, then listen, I like the way you raise your son. I want your son to marry my daughter. Me and her, me and his dad, have a talk. Yeah, well, you remember in, in, in Genesis 34 when the young man took Diana and he would talk to his dad and say, I want to marry this woman? Remember that? And then Jacob came and had a talk with him and said, yes, you can marry my daughter if you get circumcised, if you circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, that way we could become one people. Because guess what? If it was married, Jacob wouldn't have had a choice. He would have had to let Diana go with them. Because that's what that dude did. He had sex with Dinah. So therefore, that telling you right there, Jacob understood when Dana was defiled that she wasn't married yet. So they had to go and talk to him and say, well, listen, if you get circumcised, your people, we can become one people and we can marry your daughters and my, your daughters and marry us and we can marry you. But we got to become one people first. So you got to be on one accord. You can't give your daughter to a nigga that's not on one accord with you. You can't give your daughter to just anybody just because she has sex with them. That's out of order. The most you high mess around and give your daughter to a Satanist. Exactly. The most high doesn't like that. He don't like you just giving your daughter to anybody. You're supposed to be on your daughter's ass. Just like you're supposed to be on that young man ass that you want to give your daughter to. Ain't no, ain't no just anybody going to walk in my house and say, I'm about to take your daughter on a date. Nah, nigga, it don't work like that. Yeah, so brother, Turn. brother, I want to make oh, sure that. On, let me finish. Let okay, me finish so if, you, if you don't mind landing, because I. Uh, I'm, about to, I'm, about to, I'm, about to, I'm about to cut it short. Uh, I ain't going to be all good. But what I'm telling you is, this is the reason why I ask you do you have a daughter? And I don't think you have a daughter. Because you wouldn't be high in sex as marriage if you had a daughter. Because in the book of. In the same book that you quote in Sarah, it tells you, right? It says, put all things in writing. What you put, what you give in, or what you put out, right? All things must be balanced, right? 
you don't know who you're giving your daughter to. You're talking about sex is marriage. And then a nigga going upside your daughter's head. And you, she just said, I do. And you just walk it down the aisle to a nigga that's beating her head. Right? Now you sit up there saying, damn, I should have checked and see who this nigga was before I gave him my daughter hand in marriage. Now it's too late. Not a nigga telling you, mind your business, because you gave her to me. And what God Fact. has brought together, no man should put us under. Hey, Therefore, it's scripture you say, man. Watch the man. You Thank watch you. The man hey, hey, man. Daughter. Scripture. Hey, man. These scriptures also say a prudent man looking well into his going. So you're gonna exactly. look well into who you giving your daughter over. Exactly. So we just can't give our daughter to anybody. This from a man that has daughters, not just one, not just two, not three, but four, not four. Of them. And I'd be damned if I sit up there and tell my daughter sex is marriage. A nigga think he gonna sex my daughter. Oh, no, we're married. I'm gonna put something on your ass. You ain't married. She coming with me. So, so I want you to be careful with so, that sex is marriage. So, God, brother, brother, brother that's all not, right. That's not so I, I, I want to be able to... Listen. I want to not only to, is he saying able, that, he's also saying that she can't marry nobody else after that. Too. Yeah, yeah, you can. But if you guys, if you give me a chance to re respond to what you said, you said a lot. Yeah, go ahead, bro. yeah so uh, you're talking about Dinah, the only daughter that Jacob had. He had 12 sons and one girl. The Shechemite, a Gentile, came and first of all had sex with her before approaching her father. He took her virginity. Right. He had sex with her, right? Uh, for more information on that story, I suggest anybody who cares about that story, because you don't really have a lot of information on that in the book of Genesis, you go to Jubilees chapter 30. If you Google Jubilees chapter 30, you will see a lot more information regarding that on, on that story. So the man came up to her, a Gentile, uncircumcised Gentile for that matter. He was uncircumcised and took her virginity. After having sex with her, he now came to her father, Jacob, and said, I would like to marry your daughter. So Jacob and his sons, his sons actually, not him, but his sons came up with a plan. The, our forefathers, the Israelites, came up with a plan to destroy all of these people. So they said, if you guys will get circumcised, then we will let you marry, our, you know, take our daughter. If you will, uh, because he already took, took Dinah already. He took Dinah to his house. So they said, if you guys get circumcised, then we can give you Dinah which they did, he went home and convinced his people to get circumcised. They got circumcised and the sons of uh, Jacob came with a sword and killed all of those men. They were all killed and they took by Dinah and brought Dinah back to his house. Now, as soon as they killed that Dinah, all of a sudden, that means that she is now free for, for someone else to marry her. You said a lot of things about not giving your daughter to just a strange man and some man that you don't know. I agree with you on that. I would never agree, advise anybody to give their daughter to a man that they don't know. I grew up in a culture, as you can tell from my accent. Actually, I grew up in a culture uh, where the Hebrews in America used to live before they were taken from Africa and taken to the Americas. That's where I grew up. And in our culture, when you want to marry a woman, it's a long process. Once you want to marry a woman, you do exactly what you see in Judges chapter 14. So Judges chapter 14 from verse 1. When Samson saw a girl that he wanted to marry, Samson went back home and told his father, Dad, Mom, I would like to marry this girl. Go get her for me. Go marry her for me. That is how we used to do it. Even till today, in my culture, we would go back and tell our parents, now, your parents will now start an investigation. Your, you that want to marry the girl, your mother and your father will go and investigate the family that that girl came from. And the girl herself will tell her parents that this man wants to marry her. And then her parents will, 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 will initiate uh, an investigation to investigate the man and find out what kind of people are these. Do they have a history of mental illness? Do they have a his, his, history of not being able to have a child? They will do all this investigation before you even pay a bride price. So I agree with you. I, 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 I never said anything about giving your daughter to some strange man uh, like that. But if you would look at Exodus chapter 22, verse 16 and 17, it did say, if what you're saying is right, 
if the scripture agrees with, with the way you said it, because you're simply saying that you're not just going to give your, your daughter to a man just because he had sex with her. Well, if you look at Exodus chapter 22, verse, 17 and, uh, verse 16 and 17, Exodus 22, 16 and 17, it says that even if you, the father, if she goes out and sees some boy in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood and they start having sex, even if you say you don't like that boy because he is in a gang, even if you refuse to give your daughter to him, the Most High still said that that boy still have to pay your daughter's bride price. Because in the sight of the Most High, that boy is her husband. Now, it's understandable why you don't want to give her to him. But why will the Most High tell him to still pay the bride price? And the way we do it scripturally, biblically, is that if you say no, I'm not giving my daughter to that, that man, then that man will, if he wants to obey the law, he's going to have to come to your elders, come to your neighborhood and come to your, to, to your, to your king's men. They are the ones that he's going to give that bride price to. And your, 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 your brothers will keep that money. They will tell you, look, there's a man that came over here to pay the bride price of your daughter. And you're going to... Hold on, where's that scripture at? Exodus 16, yeah, Exodus 22, 16, 17. No, you say that they go to like a whole go to the brethren and give them the money to make to make the father and talk to them. You were just about to get into it, but I need to know where that scripture is at so I can read along with you. So it says in Exodus twenty two, verse sixteen and seventeen, that if a a man entice a maiden and have sex with her, he is supposed to endow her to be his wife if his father if her father this brother is if, if, like i can't can i finish if you can't you can can i can i finish okay it's it's it, hold So yes, so I let me, so see, I so don't see, I don't uh, see where it's talking about his brethren. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, brother. Okay. And I don't see where it says she can't get married to nobody else either. All right, one at a time. And you one, one, one at a time, please. To you, now you want to use it to justify you? Okay. Wow. Brother, uh, real deacon. It says that if her father utterly refuses, he is still supposed to pay her bride price, right? Yes, sir. So, right, I said refuse to give her over. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you guys, because this is what I'm trying to explain, but I'm being accused of butchering the scripture. So if the Most High says that this man is supposed to pay the bride price, even if you say no, he is still supposed to pay the bride price. So let's assume that this man decides to obey the Most High and follow this law, but you are refusing to take the bride price, and the Most High is saying that he must pay it. Let me ask you, who does he pay it to? Who does, who does the man that had sex with the daughter pay the bride price to? Yeah, if the father says no, he's not going to take the money. Who does he pay it to? It says he to pay to the father. It, says the, it literally says in the scripture to pay to the father. So, but if the father says no, who does he pay it to? No, the, it doesn't Nobody. say Nobody. He don't no marry the money. girl. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't add the word. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. The scripture ain't saying that he's saying no to getting the money. It's just saying he's saying no, you can't get Brother, can't read, get read, 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 read verse 17 again. No Can you please read verse 17? Oh, yeah, I'm reading, I'm reading it right now. I'm looking at it. Uh, it says, it says, if the father utterly refused, if he, it says, if he utterly refused to give her over, then that the man shall uh, pay the bride price, the pay the, uh, he shall pay the bride price uh, according to the dowry of virgin. So does he tell you who he pays it to? You said, does it say who he pays to it to? To the father. Yes. He pays it to the he father. He pays it to the father. Okay. You, you read about that. You read about him getting the, 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 the yeah. They pay yeah, it so he father. said that he should pay the bride price. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that if a man refuses to give his daughter, and, and, and this right here is pretty much bringing up the issue of dowries. You do understand that in, in our culture, we pay bride price. So bride price is specifically when you're marrying a woman. 
You can't just pay the bride price of somebody who is not your wife. Bride price has to do with marriage. You pay the bride price of somebody who is your wife, the person you're marrying. That's what or you do. the person that is going to become your wife. Yes, but it has to do with so, marriage, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, so that's a step. But they're not marriage. married then. So the, question, so, so the question is, if the father is saying no, I don't like this man. This man is a gang member or whatever. I don't like yeah, this man. Said I ref it says that he utterly refused to give him over unto him. That's what he said. Okay. He said, he don't then sidestep the dad and get the money to the friend. He said no. Right. That's yeah, it. Don't say that. yeah, so, he, so, he says nobody pays the money to the father. In your like, culture, like, you don't have like it a, all. In your like, culture, it's yeah, different. Brother, you're hold looking on, at... Your, on, your, just, your, your, like, just like... Hold on, hold on, Toby. Because then the scriptures also went, if the father had said yes, because verse 17 is giving you the no situation. You get in Deuteronomy where he says yes, he doesn't give a no. He just says okay, and he pays him. He pays the father straight to the father in Deuteronomy 22. So you will pay the, the father in Exodus 22. So it's nothing different. It's just that if the father says it's no in Exodus it's 22. It's not the daughter, the father inheritance. I, I have a true. question. All right, so so can we can we? I have a question. Uh, let's let's go ahead, Nitsa. Okay, so um, I just want to ask a question solely off of the topic. It says sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first. So um, in the chapter of Deuteronomy, wait, who said that? Who said that? That's the That's topic, what the topic Danny. Says. That's what the topic oh, says up here. What the hell? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I just want to finish my question. That's what the topic says. That's what your wife is saying because you are not her first. And please, 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 um, sisters and brothers, please let me know if I'm coming off aggressive. Um, in the chapter of Deuteronomy 22, where the divorce contracts are mentioned, that lady is, that particular woman is divorced because her husband finds uncleanness in her. And she is allowed to get remarried and the second man ends up hating her also. So was that second man in sin? Just solely off of your topic, sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first. Because the second person she got married to um, was not her first. Yes, uh, the second... Yeah, I'm not the, according to what he said. Yes, the second... That, that literally contradicts 24. No, so... Uh, Thank you. All right, can I respond without being, I don't know if I should respond. Can I go ahead and answer her question? Please, please okay. don't respond, please. Okay, so in Deuteronomy chapter 22, the Most High uh, through Moshe is telling us, as you can see in verse 28 and 29, that if a man takes a girl's virginity, he must take her to be his wife. He is not to put her away all his life. That's right there in Deuteronomy 22, verse 28 and 29. I'm now, sorry. I, I'm sorry. That's the, wrong, that's the wrong chapter. I'm sorry. It's Deuteronomy 24. I'm going to Deuteronomy 24. I'm, going, I'm, I'm quoting. I'm, I'm starting from because uh, Moses cannot. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Moshe cannot tell you to do this here and turn around and tell you to do, do this here. If you clearly look at Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13 to 21. It clearly shows you that a girl is supposed to keep her virginity until a man marries her. If she loses it, she is to be put to death. If you go down to verse 28 and 29 in the same chapter, it tells you that if a man has sex with a girl and take her virginity, he must surely take her to be his wife as long as he is alive. That's what we see in chapter 22. Now we fast forward to the two chapters after that in chapter 24 we now see that it talks about if a man takes a woman and sees some uncleanness in her and sends her out and she goes and be with another man the first man cannot take her back because she's been defiled that is the reason that has been given in that chapter that she's been defiled so the first man took her virginity, and everything was fine. But then, something came up, issue of uncleanliness, as it says. And then, he puts her away, and then another man, she goes on to be with another man. 
is telling you that that first husband cannot take that woman back because she's been defiled. So your question is, what I'm trying to explain to you here is that as we know, and I have to explain this, please forgive me and listen. Please don't judge my answer until you finish hearing it. In our land, in the land of Israel, not everybody kept the law. There's always people that disobey the law. There's always people that don't want to follow the law. So anybody, any Israelite that understands the law knows that you cannot take that woman who is put away. Just like Christ told you in Matthew 5.32 that you are not supposed to marry a woman who is put away. So if I put away my wife because I see some uncleanliness in her and I put her away, according to Christ in Matthew 5.32, you cannot take her. If you take her, you're committing adultery. So that second man you see there in Deuteronomy 24, that man you see there that she goes on to go and live with. And I have another question. It says that, if, it, it says that if, if that man put her away, the first husband cannot take her. What I'm trying to explain to you is that any man that understands the law will not take that they will not take that woman that has been put away by her husband. I have Just like Christ says Can in Matthew. I go after her because I was waiting. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, tribe. Um, in 24, same chapter, um, still sticking to the topic of your question, it says that he found some uncleanness in her, and he put her away. But it did give her permission to go out and marry another. It said the only reason why she cannot go back to that first husband was because she was defiled by the second. But it says if both of those men hate her, then at that point she could not remarry until the both of them are dead. That way she won't be considered a whore in the, uh, as the daughter of Zion. But it did give her permission to go and remarry. Okay. So my question again is sticking to the topic of the room. Is that second man in sin just based off of that? Because he was given permission to take that woman as his wife according to Deuteronomy 24. Yes, that man is in sin. And I will explain that real quick, real fast, and then we'll go to tribal. Uh, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Can somebody please read Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3? And it, it, it gives the answer to your question right now. Romans 7, 1 to 3. I can do it. Give me a second. Okay, thank you. Uh, Romans 7 verse 3 1 to 3 oh 1 to 3 okay uh, alright this is a King James version uh, verse 1 know ye not brethren for I speak to them that know the law how that the, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no, so she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Okay, please, could you... Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 10, and 11. First Corinthians, what, what was that? Chapter 7, verse 10, and 11. Okay, 1 Corinthians 7 and 11. No, 10 and 11. Oh, 10 and 11. Okay, I got you, brother. Um, and unto the married I command ye not, I, I command ye not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Okay, jump down to verse 39. Give me a second. I just closed this. All right. All right. Um, you said go down to 39? Verse 39. 
Okay, verse 39 reads, The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Okay, so this is the reason why Christ told his disciples. By the way, thank you, brother, for reading. This is the reason why Christ told, told uh, the people that he was speaking to. You have heard, it has been said, whoever wants to divorce his wife, give her a writings of divorce. Notice that Christ said, it has been said. Christ did not say it is written. The word of the Most High is written. The, the word of the Most High is not said. So there was a saying that if you want to put away your wife, write her a bill of divorce. And then he said that it was not so in the beginning. Moses allowed you to do that because of the hardness of your heart. And I tell you that whoever puts away his wife, sake for fornication, is committing adultery or causing her to commit adultery. So it's been said. The Most High, this is uh, what they call what they call um, oral tradition. So they started doing stuff. They started putting away their wives because it's been said and passed down. Christ was telling them, no, the word of the Messiah is usually written. It's been written. Why did I show you Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3? If you look at that, it's telling you that a, man is, a woman is bound to her husband as long as her husband is alive. Paul was saying the same thing in Romans and 1 Corinthians. So if we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 24, how can she have a second husband? That's what I'm trying to explain to you. That not everybody keeps Yah's law. So she can live. If she is to follow the law, she has to be with her husband. But if for whatever reason, she's no longer with her husband. Paul says that she has to wait. She has to be single until her husband dies. So, but we do throughout the history of the Israelite. There's always few people among the congregation who doesn't follow the law, who can gladly take her and live with her. And he's telling you that, that if, if, if for whatever reason she's no longer with that man, you cannot take her back because she's been defiled. Why did he use the word defiled in Deuteronomy 24? Because the, the second man have now had sex with her and his sperm has gone into her. According to scripture, she's been defiled. You cannot take her back. So this scriptures, Deuteronomy 24, is not contradicting Deuteronomy 22, where Moses clearly tells you, that if a man takes, takes a girl's virginity, she becomes the, the wife of that man. And they, they cannot be separated. No man can marry her as long as he, he is alive. That's exactly what Paul was reinforcing in the things that we read in Romans chapter 7 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7. That's the reason why Christ told you in two different places, Matthew 5, 32 and Matthew 19, verse 9. Christ is saying the same thing. If you marry a woman who is put away, you are committing adultery. It's there. So why is that a problem if you marry a woman who is put away? Because she still belongs to the man that took her virginity. And that brings me right back to the topic. A lot of people today are living with men who are not their husband. If you lost your virginity, according to the law in Deuteronomy 22, you became the wife of the man that took your virginity. Now, what happens is that typically... This doesn't happen all the time. But typically, a girl will lose her virginity. And then she will break up with that boy. And then she will go on to have multiple boyfriends before finally settling down with one man. That man you're living with right now is not your husband. Because you've been with multiple men in the sight of the Most High. He's not your husband. Same thing with brothers. If you're living with a, ma a woman and she's been with multiple men, she's not your wife. You have to put her away. Each time you have sex with her, you are literally committing adultery. We have to repent from that. Well, thank, well, thank the Most High. Thank the Most High for going and sending no more. Thank, him, thank the Most High for baptism. Thank you the Most High for repentance. Thank, you. thank him for winking at our sins and our ignorance. Thank him for the, um, the sacrificial lamb so that when we rebirth, all things were cast away and behold, everything became new. So we are, we are not who we were before we came into this walk. What we do once we apply this walk is not the same as what we do before this walk. So that's not the same thing. There were plenty of people who converted. Rahab was a whore who converted. So I, I don't think the Most High was holding her to things that she did before she denounced her God over there in Jericho. 
So I thank the Most High that He is the author and finisher of our faith. Because according to you, we all be dead. There is no mercy under you at all. Wait, wasn't, Ra- wasn't Rahab married after that? And she's in the line of the she's in the line of the Messiah, ain't she? A whore oh, yeah. brought through the yep. Messiah. A whore. So, so, so I want to ask you, uh, brother T- Tobia, with uh, Rahab, was she not was she not considered um the wife of her husband? Okay, so a lot I, have I been did said. Wanna, like, I was waiting. I was. Yeah, I was... sister, please go ahead. I'm trying to make for everybody to answer. You guys, I really wish I do, I do understand that you know you disagree and everything. Actually, by you talking about grace and baptism and all that, you're saying that yeah, I see what you're saying, but we are under the you know grace now. So, um, you at the end of the day. If you understand biblical, ma- hold hold on, sister. If you understand the law of biblical marriage, if you understand it, you will definitely understand that what I'm saying is is the truth. So, uh, what I would like to do because when when we, when, 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 when we say a lot of things, when we when we say a lot of things, when we say a lot of things, uh, you have to also give me opportunity to be able to respond. Uh, but sister Triba, go ahead. Let's just be fair. Uh, Wait, you- I think J- sister Jazz was. She was ahead of me, and I don't think she finished. So okay. Did you, did you want to? Yeah, I I kind of wanted to ask because you say that um, we don't understand the spiritual. We don't understand spiritual marriage. I believe. No, that's not what but I said. A bill of divorce. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't give me. I'm, I'm sorry if I misinterpret your words. I'm kind of trying to remember. Yeah, what he you said, said the spirit of marriage or something. Like that. No, yeah, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I say that the no, marriage, I, the marriage between the Most High and Israel is spiritual. The marriage between a man and a no, woman no, is I'm physical. Talking about when you talk about a man and a woman, you did say that we don't understand marriage, spiritual marriage. I'm, no, that's not what said I said. No. I say biblical marriage, the laws regarding. Okay, bibl- bib- yeah, biblical marriage. Okay, so sister, so, do you, do you have a question before we go to tribal? Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the bill of divorcement. Yes, bill of divorcement. If, okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you, go ahead. If if a woman, right, if a guy is marrying, saying that, you, if you're what you're saying, the sex is marriage and all of that, right, why is there a, uh, a divorcement? Why do you have to betroth her and then he can give her a bill of divorcement afterwards? Asking that question is proving his point. I don't think y'all realize that. It really is. Yeah, so because Bill of really proving his point, asking that question. No, if you don't have to have an instrument of marriage and sex is marriage, then what, why do you need a bill of divorcement if there's no so instrument the of, of marriage from the rib? The, the, what he's going to tell you is the bill of divorcement was not so from the beginning. It now, wasn't, but it wasn't a, done away with if either. If you want to ask a good question, you should ask him what First Corinthians 7 and 15 mean. Now, and, but the bill of divorcement wasn't done away with. Christ said... Had. From the beginning, it was not so. But if you must, it didn't say thou shalt not. It didn't so say no more, don't do that. Listen, Manny, just let them ask that question. We got it. We got it. Just let them ask that question. No, I got I'm going to after, go after Jazzy. Uh, Deuteronomy 24 is telling you. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, still waiting. I'm still waiting to go. In Deuteronomy 24, men was putting their wives away for nothing because of the hardness of their heart. Which is still happening today. Which is true, which is what still happens today. But that's when the, that's that's not really lawful. Now, I would like to hear him answer first Corinthians seven and fifteen. Yeah, but she asked the question about the divorcement, so you can go ahead and answer his Who's in the queue? Because I wanted to ask him. I All was right. next, but I think the, the ahead, real Charlie. head, the, the real wanted to ask him about the Corinthians. Okay, so uh, let's go back to you, uh, Sister Jazzy. You were asking about Bill of Divorce. Would you still like no, me? this is a scripture that... Uh, I passed my mic to Brother, uh, the real and, Deacon. I passed yeah, my mic to Deacon, can right. you add... Yeah, Manny, can you ask him about right here? Can you just ask him about right here, real quick? 
Okay, Manny, Manny so, was asking about this so, one there here though. He was asking about first Corinthians seven fifteen. Yeah, we can get there. We can get there. Yeah. But can you ask him about Rahab real quick? Because I want to know: was this marriage? Um, yeah, well, was this acknowledged by the Most High? Thank you. All right. So, like yeah, like All right, so this marriage recognized by the by the Most High. Okay, so let's let's. Uh, so are we still doing the divorce thing or no? Because I'm just listening and it seems you like... You can't make this stuff up, man. No, no, no. Yeah, no. We, listen we doing, to my question. Doing right hand. We doing Hold right on, hand. listen I'll to pass my question. Mic. You can disannul my All question. All right, okay, tribal. Yes. Go ahead, sister. Right. Oh, you going to Okay, so you were saying that, like, if a, a woman is not found to be a virgin, like, she, she going to die. Like, what if her husband hated her and he was just saying that? Or what if she got a high hymen and he was mad at that? Like... She just did. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, um, there's definitely, uh, you know, sometimes a woman, I've heard, I'm not a woman, I've never experienced it, but I've heard that sometimes, you know, women that, like, are into sports and stuff like that, um, or women that climb trees, they might, uh, their, their hymen might break or something. Um there's definitely, uh, there's not an absolute in everything. There's always an outliner, you know, there's always... And today, they got tampons, like, and these little girls is wearing tampons. I don't mean she a virgin. If if it ain't no blood on the sheet, it's a wrap. You did. Yeah, so I, I, I do understand that there are, there are um, you know, there are stuff do happen, but I'm simply just basically stating what we see in the scripture if the most high says that if a girl is to you know take a piece of cloth as you see in Deuteronomy chapter 22 they are to take a piece of cloth and she will go into the room with that with the man and the blood that comes out of her is supposed to right we know we, we know we know about the the um the evidence in the marriage chamber but that's why you can't reenact that right now because it's grace. Most high in Christ knew that that was kind of flawed. So that's why it's a new covenant. It's a new thing with grace and mercy because that, come on. And then you reenact, you reinforcing that now, like it's sound. Like, and then after that, even if she survived the marriage chamber and he a liar or he hate her, she can't marry nobody else like ever. What? How is that logical? That's not even biblical. Okay, so, um, yeah, you're talking about grace, there's grace and all that. The problem with the argument about grace, when you once you make that argument, which you guys have been making all night long, once you make that argument, you, there's some scriptures you have to consider. Scriptures like Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 22. Jeremiah 6, 16 to 22. The Most High knew that we were going to sin. He knew that he was going to scatter us in the four corners of the earth. He knew that we were going to walk after the Gentiles and abandon his law. He knew all that. But in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 22, he is basically asking us to go back to the old ways. To go back to the old ways and do things the way our ancestors used to do it. So I understand we live in 2020, 2021 and we lost our culture. We don't know any of these things. Um, but we have to do what our ancestors have done in the past. Whenever they go away from the law, eventually they repent and come back to the law. We cannot say that, you know, yeah, it was done like this back then. But you have to understand that, you know, we are under grace. Yes, of course we are under, you know, we are under the Christ died on the cross. And But you have to also remember that Paul said in Romans chapter 6 from verse 1, are we going to continue in sin that grace may abound? So I think that you guys are really missing my point. And we keep going, we go this way and then we go this way. Initially, I was being accused of trying to break up families. And I, you, I, you I, I told you, I told you, divorce them though, I, I told you that, uh, no, I'm not trying to break up families. I'm actually trying to, to build up families. I do have a school 
uh, I have a Hebrew school. It's a free of charge, and we've been doing this for a while now. And I'm actually, it's an online school, and I'm actually uh, trying to working on building a physical Hebrew school. Uh, so in that school, you have mainly kids that don't really have a man in their life, and they're just by their either with their grandmother or their mother. So I actually. I'm not who you think I am. I may sound to you like I'm trying to break off. No, I'm trying to help our people. Uh, wait, I wait, you're teaching this to people? Oh, yes, I've been teaching this to people. Can I ask for, my question for, now? I've been teaching this to people. Y'all yeah. brothers need to divorce your wife and go find virgins. Yes, yeah. you, you have to. It's not a joke. Toby, can you let Vonnie ask her question, please? And I want to go after her. And, and I'd when when I'm asked something, I will appreciate if you guys would give me a chance to answer. I've had a couple of questions that you asked, but you have to give me a chance to answer. So uh, I'm not trying to break up families, but I'm trying to help brothers to come out of sin. If you're living with a woman and she she's been with multiple men and has sex with them, uh, she, she's not a virgin and she's not a widow, you cannot marry her. The only woman you can marry is either a woman who is a virgin or a widow. So we've seen what the Bible says uh, and everything. I, I knew that there's no way that you, people are going to agree to this. Whenever I bring this out, there's always maybe one or two people that will agree, that will say, yeah, this is true. So I already know that most they people are not... They don't beat their wives at home and, all and the they time. Left after they heard yes, the yeah, actually, actually, I do know people that left their relationship after. And, I, I, and you know what? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do advise them. Exactly. That's why I wanted everybody to get out the way. That man duck in this mud. Okay. All right. So when when you you're all speaking and asking questions, but I'm not allowed to answer. So all right. So who's next, sister? Yeah, you're talking about the school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to ask. I just wanted to ask real quick. Um. Was uh did the Most High acknowledge Rahab's wedding or Rahab's marriage? Well, uh, did the Most High acknowledge Rahab's wedding? Uh, no, no, her no, marriage. no, 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 her marriage, her marriage, her marriage, her, her, marriage. her, her covenant, her covenant with her husband. Her covenant with her husband. Well, um, yeah, because you know we, she was we, a hoe. Excuse me. She was Rahab a prostitute was a like hoe. Gomer. She was a prostitute like Gomer. So when when she got married, how do you feel the Most High feel about her? Because you know she repented, you know. Like how like how the Most High recognized Gomer and in Hosea's marriage was. Just was, let him answer, y'all. Just yeah, let him yeah, answer. I don't. Yeah. I really don't want to move the Just to make post. it clarified. Just make did, it clarified. Did the Most High acknowledge Rahab's marriage? It's kind of uh, going back to the same question with with Hosea. When, yes the, no. when the most high, okay, you have to let me answer, sister. Not every, it's not, not, the same, though, not, not nobody every, commanded them to, to, not, to marry. not every marry. question have yes and no answer. You can ask me if the sky is blue. Sky is Let not, your yes be yes and your okay, yes. no, not, not every question have a yes and no answer. Okay, you, go you ahead. know that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So bring the sky, up, the bring, sky bring is up. not. The sky is not always blue all the time. Sometimes the sky is dark. Sometimes the sky is black. So you can ask me, is the sky blue? I give me yes or no. Yes or no. Of course not. There's, sometimes the sky is dark at night. Sometimes the sky is blue. Sometimes it's it, 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 it. So you can, if you ask me a question, you have to give me a chance to explain. So again, you are, I'm being asked pretty much the same thing kind of that I was asked with, with the question of Hosea. Uh, the most, the, what the Most High did here is it right? Is it right? Who am I to judge the Most High? I'm simply telling you guys what the law says, and those that do know the law agrees with me. So you can't put me in a situation where I have to judge what the Most High said or what He approved. I am not to judge what the Most High said. Let him answer, y'all. Let him answer. You're supposed to be a teacher. Hold on. Let him answer, y'all. We gotta listen. I I am answering you. I am answering you, and I already know. And anybody who anybody who is being honest knows that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the answer I gave you; it will never be acceptable. I know that. I've been doing this for years. So again, your question. I'm answering your specific question. 
you want me you're asking me whether the most high approve or whatever the most whether the most high and i'm bringing it back we we already did that already earlier on so i am not in a position to judge what the most high did whether it's right or wrong i am simply bringing everything i'm bringing out tonight from the law anybody who right. knows the law agrees with that we're, all we're arguing right, here now is here. all we're arguing right now is whether we are under grace or whatever you you, you cannot you, you no. listen you no. cannot you you you, you 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 well, let me finish let me finish let me finish you cannot look at deuteronomy chapter 22 and exodus 22 all these laws all these scriptures are brought out you cannot look at that and say that 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 doesn't mean verse 32 and also matthew 19 verse 9 christ 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 says that if a man takes a woman who has been put away he he is committing adultery okay so putting away in our culture biblically means that the man that took her virginity put her away that's why it says in the law that if you take a woman's virginity, you cannot put her away. So if you look at what Christ said there, that a man is not supposed to marry a woman that has been put away. And then we see that Joseph wanted to put uh, Mary away because he thought that she was no longer a virgin. If you look at those places and we're really being honest and you take that back to your question that you asked me, no man that fears the most high can look at what Christ said there and look at all these laws and will go and take a woman who's been put away. A woman who's been put away or a woman that, ha that has been a prostitute, it's pretty much the same thing. She lost her virginity and then the difference between her and a regular woman is that she lost her virginity and she had sex with, much, more, more, with more and more men. That's the difference. But at the end of the day, she's neither a virgin and she's not a widow. So when a woman is put away, you cannot marry her. She has to be a virgin or a widow. So... The, the, what Christ said in Matthew 5, I'm using that to answer your question. That's why I keep telling you, uh, it's like, it, it's basically like looking at Isaiah chapter 20 and saying that I, the Most High told Isaiah to walk around but naked. And he did that for three years. Um, if, a, if, if somebody does that, if someone does that, um, are they going against what the Most, uh, what the most High said? I'm not going to go. Wait, what's I, I'm, happening? I, I'm, I'm, All right, I'm, just I'm, give me a second try while I got you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and start walking around butt naked because the most high told, uh, told Isaiah to walk around naked. None of us will ever allow a man to walk around naked in our neighborhood and claim that, uh, he's doing it because the most high told Isaiah to do it. That's the point I'm trying to make. I understand where you're coming from. I understand what you're saying, but I'm coming from these laws. According to these laws, the woman you marry has to be a virgin or a widow. Manny, we can barely hear you. Uh, if y'all be quiet, maybe y'all can hear. Because everybody's hollering. No, we, we, we just I, can't I, hear you. Your like audio that. is um, but, kind of uh, lured. Leviticus 20, 21 and 1. Did you hear me better now? Yeah, you good. Okay, Leviticus 21 and 1, right? It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speaking to the priest, the sons of Aaron, and said to them, there shall no none be defiled for the dead among his people. And if you drop down, right, it says, right, if you drop down, it tells you uh, that the priest should not marry any horse. Their daughter should be a virgin and all that good stuff that you were saying. In verse 13, you should take a wife in her virginity. Verse 14, a widow or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Now right there, the Lord made that very clear about the Levitical priest and who they shall marry. Can you show me the same thing if I'm from the tribe of Ephraim, where the Lord said that to me? Yes. Uh... If you, and that's why I don't quote Leviticus 21, because I know that this is talking about the Levite. Somebody did bring it up earlier today. Uh, and I, I don't normally quote this. If I quote this, I would totally be quoting this out of context. This is specifically talking about the priest. But, brother, 
just like you see in this chapter. It also goes on to talk about their beards, right? Not shaving their beards, right? Um, so, just like that, if you go to uh, Leviticus 19, 20, uh, 27, you see that the Most High also gave the, the, the general population of the Israelites, he gave them the law about their beard. So, I'm just using that as an example. So, just like this man here is not supposed to, a, a, a Levite is not supposed to marry a woman uh, who is a harlot, uh, who is... You know who who all the stuff you read there the same way if you go to deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 28 and 29 you will see that the law you see there which is the one that i used that law was specifically for the general population in deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 28 and 29 it says that if a man takes a girl's virginity he uh he is to marry her and he cannot put her away as long as he is alive. Now, uh, you have to mix that with the other scriptures like Exodus chapter 22, verse 16 and 17. That says that if you, if you take a girl, if you have sex with a girl, you, are to, you must marry her. Even if her father says no, you are to uh, pay her bride price anyway. Even when her father says no, you are still required to pay her bride price. And then... You look at all these scriptures that I've quoted already. The point is this, that according to that scripture, a, an Israelite man is supposed to marry a girl who is a virgin or a widow. The clearest scripture to this is in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13 to 21. Where, 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 where it says in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13, to 21 it clearly shows you that if a girl lose her virginity and then a man marries her and then that man lays with her and then realize that she was not a virgin that man is supposed to come out and speak up and report her and if her father could not provide the evidence of her virginity that girl is to be put to death so that clearly shows you that a girl is supposed to keep her virginity until her wedding night. That's why whenever you read about a girl, whether you're talking about Mary or Rebecca in Genesis 24 or Dinah, whenever you read about a Hebrew girl, most of the time they will tell you she's a, a virgin. They keep repeating that. She's a virgin. She's a virgin. First Kings chapter 1. First Kings chapter 1. When they brought that young girl to David, when he was very old, First Kings chapter 1, they tell you that she is a virgin. They were specifically looking for a virgin. So in our culture, if you put all these scriptures, like we, we like to say, uh, precept upon precept, if you put all, this, all these precepts together, you begin to see that a Hebrew man is supposed to marry a girl who is a virgin, which is the reason why that Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, Joseph wanted to put Mary away as soon as he thought, he mistakenly thought that Mary was no longer a virgin. As soon as they said that she was going to have a child, Joseph was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. She's supposed to be a virgin. How can she have a child? So if you put all Yo, this scripture, he is saying a lot. Is somebody going to wrap him up? It, like it, if, you, if you put all these scriptures together, you will clearly see that in our culture, a, a girl, a, a girl, a, a girl, yeah, a girl is supposed to keep her virginity until her wedding night. I agree. I yeah. agree. Listen, let me, let, me, let me say something. I agree with what you're saying. Listen to me. We know that we're supposed to marry a virgin. We know this, right? We know that we're supposed to marry uh, if we've been trying to a woman. Yo, he, not, he, he successfully deflected that. from answering your let question me, so me much that you chill, forgot chill, the chill, answer. Chill, chill let me talk to him. Hold up. Let me talk to him. We know that we're supposed to marry a woman that's a virgin, right? We understand that. But I don't want you to get mixed up. That's not what you're saying. Everybody agree that you, uh, a Hebrew man should marry a Hebrew woman that's a virgin. But the topic is sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first. That's a different topic. I don't want you to get this mixed up, right? So, by you saying, I agree with you. All Hebrew men should marry a virgin. That was in the law. I agree with that. But by you saying that our women cannot be married because her first husband divorced her, right? Or she divorced, if she divorced her first husband, 
right? So let's say one of these sisters, let's say I was to take one of these sisters, right, and marry them, right? And come to find out that her husband used to beat the hell out of her for nothing. Used to, this used to be a punching bag. This punch all over her. This beat her, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely no reason, right? Would, would the Most High allow me to take her, or would I be a adulterer? Okay, so am I am I considered an adulterer? Am I going to hell because this woman was in an abusive relationship with a man that used to beat the hell out of her, and now I got her. I started taking care of her. I do everything I need to do: show compassion, love, emotionally, mentally, all that good stuff. And I decide I want to take her and marry her, and I marry her, and I pray, and I ask the Lord uh, to give to give her to me. Right, I take and I marry her. She's divorced now. She's divorced, right? She used to get her ass beat. She's divorced. She moved on, right? Would you think I'm an adulterer in that point? Because according to you, you said a man cannot put a woman away unless it be for fornication, right? True. Right, said that. Right. So in that case, uh, would Christ let me? marry her because this dude damn the beat her to death. Is that her fault? Okay, can I answer? Yeah, okay. please be brief. Please. Please. Okay, uh, Sister Nitza, do you have a question? No, I'm just saying, can you please be brief with your response and kind of stay on topic, please? I still ain't hear the answer from what, about the the uh, law. So point. let's not let's not let's not get the him other tribes. Topic. Okay. Let's, so let's not get him off topic, please. Just let him answer that one, please. All right. So if uh, to answer your question, you can take the sister if you want, but you cannot be having sex with her. So there are today women um, that are like, for example. Um, we do have a congregation and I do have people that I worship with. And there are women in that congregation who some of them, their husband died. Uh, they may not have a husband anymore or whatever. There are some that I'm helping to, to raise their children and things like that. So that, you are, that, you, that a sister is being abused by a man and you jump in to help her, that's absolutely fine. No, 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 There's... I didn't say that. I didn't say I jump in and help her, though. Yeah, listen to my question, right? That's not what I said. I want you to pay attention to my question, right? Let's say one of these sisters was getting beaten, beaten, 10 years ago. She's been out of her relationship for 10 years. She's been divorced for 10 years. I meet her. I get engaged to her. I decide to marry her. After she ain't got her ass beat, she's single, she single now for 10 years. Will the Most High honor my marriage to this sister after 10 years of divorce and after many years of abuse? And she can't take it no more. She just divorced him. Okay. Never sees him again. Move out of town. Meets me. I'm her knight and shining on. We fall in love. We get married. Am I an adulterer? Well, according to Christ, yes no? according to Christ, yes, you are, and that's Matthew chapter five, wow. verse thirty-two. Let me finish. Let, can I finish? Can I answer? Can I finish? He said you the first time. Could you please let me answer you, please? Like it's like you guys don't even want me to. You're asking me questions, but you don't want me to talk. Like, oh, answer this question, but be brief. Let me talk. That's why I asked you. Do you want to speak so I can let you speak first? You know, so you have to let me answer you. I, again, not every question have yes and no, no answer. So, again, yeah, you are committing adultery according to Christ. Christ said that whoever marries a woman who is put away is committing adultery. And Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians 
chapter 7 verse 10 and 11 that if a woman wants to depart from her husband let her do so but let her remain unmarried so if a sister is being attacked by her husband she's being you know she was being abused and beat and she got divorced 10 years ago it's very bad i sympathize with her it's bad but the thing is that according to paul <laughs> according to paul according to paul she has to remain by herself as long as that man is alive you cannot marry her if you marry her yes you are committing adultery so according to marry. matthew oh, 5. i thought sex was very so so. i can marry her as long as i don't have sex with her right that's what I was going to explain, but then you cut me off. Can I finish? I was going to, I was going to explain that part. I was going to marry her as long as I don't have sex with her. That was actually that 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 that's what I heard him say that. That's what I was going to explain, and you completely come, cut me off and repeated the question. Okay, let me go. I've already answered you. Yes, if you marry her, if you have sex with her, you're committing adultery. Now to the. The question that you just asked, the question that you just asked, I, I like as I said, like as I said, the question that you just asked, there's nothing wrong with helping the sister. There's nothing wrong with that, with helping her and, no, you know, I prove, marry her. I you cannot, you cannot, her. you cannot, you cannot, you can't, no, you can't, it's going to be an adultery according to Christ and Paul. I, I, I have a question. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I was in front of you. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, I got a question. I'm so sorry, brother. I got to get this out. I'm so, so. You know what? There we go. I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. I'm doing it again. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know if anybody asked this question yet, but um, to the brother, what's his name? Uh, to be ya? To be ya? That's fine. It's to be ya, yeah. Okay, so how do you marry a woman? <laughs> We've been through that. We, the please don't get him started, please. I, I'm, I'm just asking. asking. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know how do he marry a woman? I, I mean, then maybe I can understand his premise. If that's know. the case, all of us are adults. Yes, that's the point. You're living in adultery. That's the thing. <laughs> that's the oh, point. So the man don't have to be a virgin either. The no. man don't have to be a virgin. Only no. No. Exactly. Yeah, uh, 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 virgin is yeah. All, night. all right. Okay. So, uh, can I answer the brother's question? Can I answer the brother's question? Are you married? Please, can I answer the brother's question? He just asked yeah, a question, you and you guys just, you, you guys just like, you, you guys married? hold on, brother. You asked your own question. The brother asked a question, and you guys are pretty much, you know, suppressing his question because we've already been through it. Yeah, we've been through a lot. Uh, here tonight and i keep repeating answering i can't just say no i can't answer that because i already answered that if i say that you guys are not going to accept that so let me answer his question he asks a very important question a very good question he asks right now and his question is how do you get married so it depends on the system you're talking about there you have the worldly system and then you have the biblical system so in the biblical system according to the law the way okay, you well, hey, not, hey, not to cut you off, I'm talking about the system that comes with the premise that you're saying if you have sex with a, your wife, then you commit adultery if you're not a first. So tell me the system that you're using. Don't tell me what all that, 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 that's system. the biblical about, system. If you have sex with your wife, let's say your wife is a virgin, right? Let's say I marry a virgin, my wife is a virgin, right? And she look at a fine man in the gym, right? You know what I'm saying? She's a bird. She look at a fine man in the gym, right? And she have thoughts of doing it with him, right? I can go and divorce her now because she committed fornication. So I can go marry another. It's because she had those thoughts. Ain't the true Tobia? So in that case, every man that put He's their wife away... He's not ready for that. Wait, wait, listen. In that case, yeah, but every I, man... I, wait, wait, listen. Wait, wait. Tell me something. In that case... Every man that put their wife away can be lawful in your eyes because he can say, well, she thought about another nigga. She thought about another dude. She thought about having sexual relations to another dude. Christ no, that, that's, 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 that's not I according mean, to that's the law. That's not a good example, Manny. Can I, can I answer? Listen, 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 let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Yeah, because the scripture do say I a know, person it's is a terrible, having adultery in their mind is still an adult. Exactly. It's a terrible example. But listen, let me make my point. I understand. That's a terrible example. Well, according to what he's saying, 
right? Because then Christ said, if a man even look up on a woman and lust after her, he have committed adultery. So therefore, I can sit up here and I can see, I can see my wife looking at a man and say, she committed adultery. You're out of here. I'm done. No, no, brother. No, that's not, that's not biblical. That's a, I'm glad you said it's a terrible example. It's not because that's not biblical. You just no, that's you, no, you can, no, no, you can't put your wife away because she looked at a man. You can do that. And, yeah, and uh, can I can I answer this or not? Okay, let me know if you want me to answer this. I'm just no, gonna no, wait. No, I see, I'm saying look and lust and wait. Okay, can I answer I can that? Put her away, I, can, I can put her away from looking and lusting after a man. No, you can can't. No, you can't. Answer. You can't. Let him answer. You cannot do that. It's I not can't? biblical. No, you cannot. Oh. But, you can't just but, put away uh, your. Uh, wait, okay, wait, but according to Christ, I think we take it up too fast. No, 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 no. <laughs> according to no, Christ, no, he said you can't put her away if you just look at her. No, no, no. Lusting, looking, and listen to what I'm saying. Looking and lusting, according to Christ, is fornication. N so no, far. brother, brother, come on. I think you should know no, better. I'm serious. I mean, I can no, bring no, it to the Okay, could you wait, 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 just give me, me a chance? Uh, give me, give me a chance to answer this, or I can wait whenever you're ready for me to answer. Hold on, let me get the scripture. Let me get the scripture. How do you know if she's lusting real deep? To be genuine. I know. How, when I'm supposed to walk up to her and say, "Say, my, you're a virgin." You see, you, you, you see, you see, you are pro you guys, you, you, hold on, C can I speak? No, can because, I speak? No, because if you marry to a husband, right, and you, your husband is supposed to make you better, so if you lusting, you're supposed to go to your husband and tell him hey. you lusting, so he can help you. Listen, man, y'all take this away, I ain't trying to take it, y'all take this away, I ain't trying to take it. Listen to there you go, Tyro, that's the point. No, no, listen, y'all take this away, I ain't trying to take it. Listen, I'm talking to Toby Yah, nobody else, I'm talking to him. I want him to answer this. Okay, right? okay you have to... I want to show y'all, I want to show you something. So, I brought the price. Yeah, I brought the price. But you can turn for Exactly. You even throw a curveball, slender ball. Yeah, but it's disingenuous. Because oh, Hawkmire had a, had a genuine question. Listen, I, this I, is not, it. No, 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 I said a hard question I asked. I know it's a logical question. He's testing his logic. He's testing Thank his you. logic, so let him Thank let him you, let him test Thank his logic. You, it's not about any other stuff y'all talking about. He's trying to test his logic to see if he's consistent. Hey, if I if I make what I'm doing, we are deep. All right, that's how you say if it's based on the truth. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Wait, 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 wait. The spirit said, "If I make this, we gonna be real." Wait, bro, hold up. Just, just let him finish. Let, let him get to his spirit. point. By the spirit, bro. Listen, I know what I'm doing. All right. Now, according to Matthew 5 and 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now, I'm asking him, according to that logic, can a woman, can I see my woman looking at a man and lusting in her eyes. Come on, I know my wife. Because we're one, we're one soul. Remember that we're we're one body, we're one soul. I know her. I know what she likes. Right. Maybe, maybe so if I happen to look at her and she's looking at a man and lusting after her, can I put her away? Okay, you cannot. Uh, put high away because she looked at a man and I really would love for uh, can, can you can you get give me a chance to respond okay I'm gonna stop responding just let me know whenever you want me to talk please okay let me know when you want me to speak and I will respond hey it's obvious the brother has been through this Toby y'all I, I would just like to hear the answers I mean he's kind of being attacked and I, I, I like the dialogue really I'm, I'm enjoying conversation but we don't have to attack I, I i like the information so i'm not i'm not attacking bro i promise you i'm not attacking i mean i don't even feel like nobody it's gonna say i'm, I'm running so out of time I'm, 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 I'm i triggered you I'm I'm there's so I many coming you, at him though but i'm no, no. I, I, you tell him to man. stay on point to tell him. Yeah, this is a very serious. Okay. Is so, serious. all right, my brothers. Oh, all right, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Please. I've been talking very patient. Me and him have been having dialogue. I haven't attacked him not once. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, can I respond to this question? Can I respond to this question? You should let me finish my question. Uh, my, my question triggers you. Uh, you should let me finish asking who? Me? Triggering me? Yeah, come. I think my I question. I didn't know what your question was, bro. Oh, yeah, but okay, so you didn't know I asked the question? No, I mean, you asked, well, how did he answer the question? How was it? How did a man, how can a man get married? So you know what it was. So yeah, he, so I, I, I just thought about it. Yeah, I just thought Oh, about it. you thought about it. Like, he threw that curveball. That's all. He threw that curveball, but it's still. Yeah, like, yeah well, I, 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 I had a follow up with a curveball. Ain't still in the bay. Listen, that's no hey, follow hey, brother, up on the curveball. Ain't like they're gonna hey, do brother, in the game if I'm throwing a curveball. Ain't no follow in the curveball. You know what I'm saying? I was doing it. I'm not doing it for entertainment. I'm doing it for edification, honestly. I'm that not trying to entertain nobody. That was entertaining, though. Right, it was, I'm not it, trying to. I'm doing it for out of a case because I don't want yeah, nobody. Because obviously, obviously, so, obviously, the way you feel is flawed, and you got him in a, in a hole he can't get out of, and, and obviously we No, I, I, I actually want him to get out. Brothers, brothers, please, please, y'all, please. I mean, we good. We just, we just talking. We good. We just I love y'all. I just but, want to uh, I'm just asking to y'all. What, what do you think about that? Okay, I will. So, I, I it's, it's it's interesting that you say that you got me in a corner and I can't get out. But how can I? I haven't even answered your question. You do, you guys won't let me I answer the question. That, you yeah, won't I let me answer the question. The but I'm already like in a corner. But I'm not giving a chance to answer the question. You have to give me a chance. You, you I mean, I keep trying to answer you, but when I try to answer, you cut me off. So I don't know. Yeah, like, it's true. You keep on cutting him off whenever he's trying to answer and he can't even defend himself. Can you just give him a chance to speak? It's not Don't about defending all night. It's not about defending himself. Listen, I, just everybody, just let him talk. Just be quiet. Let me and the brother have a dialogue on this question because you don't even know what you're talking about, Hazel. Just be quiet. You just came up here. So, right, exactly. No, he but it, no, I'm saying talking. that you're not letting him a chance. He I'm, has I, been I've doing been been here. Daddy. No, let her see for herself. Let her let him talk. Yeah, okay, let, let her see, see for herself. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. You go ahead, Tob. Okay, so the question is if your wife goes to the gym and she looks at a man, can you put her away? I said no. no. Yeah, she no, she's right. she's no, no, looking no, no. at lust. Lust. Yeah. Oh, she's so lusting. She's yeah. Lusting after him. Yes. So you can't put her away. And you went to the book of Matthew, right? You read Matthew. Yes. Okay. And yes. you said that according to what Christ said, right? That that's adultery. That's adultery. That's adultery. Yeah. So yes. so if you look at that, what Christ said there, he actually said, gave you two examples. He said that um that if you, whoever, like if you look at a woman and lost after her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. He also said that if you, if you hate your brother in your heart, you've, al you've already committed murder in your heart. Now, the Most High, nowhere in the law did it say that if you, if you um, look at a woman and lost after her, you've committed adultery and you should put her away. This is the kind of mindset well, that, no way in that, the law. I wanted you to say that. Listen, there's no way in the law that say I can't marry a woman that haven't been divorced. Let me Game finish. Over. Let facts. me finish. Let I'm me done. finish. I'm done. Yeah, that's big facts right there. Let, 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 let me finish. Can I finish? So there's nowhere in the law where it says that if you look at a woman and lost after her, oh, it looks like he left. Okay, you ask me a question and you just leave. Keep uh, going, brother. All it's, right. It's good info. Okay, so this is the kind of mindset. You're literally listening to the kind of mindset that caused the Israelite to start putting away their wives. And for whatsoever reason, you're just witnessing that right now because it was never the intention of the Most High for a man to put away his wife. That's what Christ was telling them. Christ said to them, you've heard it. You've heard it's been said. Whoever wants to put away his wife, let him write her a bill of divorce. It's been said. It was never written anywhere that you should write your wife a bill of divorce. It's been said. And like he, he told them, because they asked Christ, hey, Moses said if you want to put away your wife, write high bill of divorce. Christ told them, no, 
Moses told you that because of the hardness of your heart, because they were not interested in doing it the way the Most High intended. They didn't. They, they were hard-hearted. They were. They didn't want to do it the way the Most High intended. So he was telling them, Moses allowed you to do this, not because it's the will of the Most High, but because of the hardness of your heart. That's why he allowed you. So the, when you come to this question that he just asked, you can't put away your wife. There's nowhere in the law that it says that that you should. You can put away your wife because she was lusting after a man. Because you know what. Lost it when you think that your wife is lost after a man, that is subjective. You could be wrong. You could you could you could be wrong. That's why the most high gave us the law in the book of Numbers. The law in Numbers chapter 5 about taking an oath. About taking an oath. The most high didn't want us to be going by our feelings. So you can't even just put even if you suspect that your wife was doing something. The Most High gave us a law in Numbers chapter 5 that regulates that. Why? Because he doesn't want men to just put away their wife based on their feeling. Just because they got a gut feeling. Please, when you get a chance, read Numbers chapter 5. The Most High put a law to regulate this. To prevent men to, to, from putting away their wife based on their gut feeling. So when Christ said that if you look at a woman and lost after her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. He's trying to tell you that don't even think about it because that adultery starts in your heart. The, the man that thought about taking Sarah in Genesis chapter 20, the king that thought about taking Sarah from Abraham, when he saw them that day, he started thinking about it. Then that evening, that night, guess what? The Most High appeared to him in a dream and told him, if you take this woman, I'm going to kill you, you know. And then the, the, the king started crying and was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know she was a married woman. The Most High said, yes, I know you didn't know he was, she was a married woman. I know that you did not know. So the sin usually starts from your heart. Nobody is going to actually go to hell because they thought about killing their brother in their heart. If that's the case, then all of us will all go to hell because at some point, there's a time that you, you may think your, your brother might offend you. You might think about killing them. The Most High gave us a law that you cannot physically do it. You cannot physically commit adultery and you cannot physically uh, kill somebody. So you can't, you can't, you know, that just, it doesn't work. That argument does not work. Uh, I wish the brother was here, but he had to leave for whatever reason. So um, we'll, we'll just move on for, you know, for... Okay, so now can I ask my question now? I've been waiting. Okay, go I ahead. wanted to go at the Vani. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, Toby, is that all right? Sure. Okay. Sex with your wife, that's a law, is sin. So you got two different things going on. Can you give me the biblical definition of sin? First John 3, 4. Sin is breaking God's law. No, like... That's, can you tell can you read it what the book say first john 3 4 sin like when you when it tells you in first john 3 4 that sin is a transgression of the law when you break god's law okay okay and then also we know that uh in order to not commit fornication or adultery you have to get married right according to everything you have in your title is that correct Yes, my title, my title is actually something I had to think about. I had to, I had a conversation with a couple of brothers about this particular. Right. I, I'm about, just going to stay on. I, yes, I'm going somewhere yes, else. Yes, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, so but I'm, tr I'm okay. trying, I'm trying to explain the title because the the title is, I mean, it says that sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first, meaning that. Uh, the point was that if you see the title, I can then go on to explain it, which I've been doing for a no, couple of I've hours now. No, I've been here for a long time. I already know. I'm going yeah. somewhere else. Okay. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to ask you a few questions. So just bear with me. So if you have uh, a couple and they come into the truth, right, and they repent, they both repent. According to your title, though, you're saying that even if they repent and they come into the truth, they come up under the most high, that he still has to put her away. Can you show me in scripture where God says 
that even after you come up, come into repentance, he's still going to hold you accountable for what he said he was forgiving you for. Come on, sis. That'll be That's where I was gonna go. Okay. I've been, I, I had to calm down because your title is very triggering. So I'm ready to dialogue. Let's dialogue. Okay. Uh, let's go to the book of Ezra chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Hold on. Ezra chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. And please, please, please. Please let me give me a chance to answer this question. I would love to answer it. And um, you asked me to give you a scripture, and I'm starting with a scripture, and I would love to answer it if you guys don't mind. Ezra 10. You said 10, right? Yes. Hold on. What verse? Verse 1 uh, to 3. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead and read it if possible. Now, when Ezra had prayed and when he had heard, I'm sorry, when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shekinah, the son of Jehiel, I'm probably butchering these names, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, we have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. Okay, so if you continue reading in that chapter, you will see that eventually they <laughs> they they did, eventually they did. Uh, what? Put... That's not the same thing. That has the, 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 the wives of the men. That's talking about the okay. women of the men. Can I finish then? Can I finish? We've read the scripture. Can I explain it? I I, you don't even know what I was going to say about that scripture. <laughs> you see, that's why I said that the, the, it doesn't matter what I say. Doesn't matter what the answer I give you. It doesn't matter whether I'm we're right or wrong. To uh, I'm going to be wrong listening. anyway. So I'm I mean, no, go ahead, go ahead, Tobia. I'm listening. Um, we listening. Go ahead. Yeah, and Tobia, can you put me on cue? Uh, yeah, you can speak whenever uh, we can speak whenever you you want to. All right. Okay. Yeah, when you, once you're done, I want you to put out your point, but I do want to comment after. Okay, that. so um, if you look at Ezra chapter ten, the Israelite had married foreign women. These are non-Israelite women that they had married and had kids with these women. But when they now began to keep the law, they went to the priest and, you know, wanted to learn the law. As they were being taught the law, they realized that they were not supposed to marry these foreign women. They by themselves came back to the priest and said, we've done this thing. We've married foreign women and we've decided to put them away. Not just the women, but their kids. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because a point. the reason why I'm bringing this up is that uh, throughout throughout uh, tonight, um, there has been a couple of people, not everybody, not all, but there have been few people who have listened so to. So even in that point, show me where God said that it was OK for them to do that now that they done learned the law. Yeah, so they le they, point right here. They, they learned the law. So they, did, the most I did give them a time, I think it was like six months to put the women away. So he, okay. on that note, he do got a point. I, so, I don't know. Yeah, let, let, let okay. him. Okay. I don't know how to put him on that one. So I would I never, I, I would never say that this is exactly, uh, but I'm just using this as an example where you see people that was uh, marrying people that they were not supposed to marry. Now, when they found out what the law says, they put, they decided by themselves when they realized that it was against the law. They decided to put the women and the children, the, their children away. They were not even asked to do it. They realized it was against the law and they did it. So if you look at all the other scriptures that we looked at, we've already, um, including the brothers that, that. Wait a minute. So they weren't asked to do that. I thought the most high told them to. So if they weren't asked to, then I don't think the most high would have, you know. No, they, 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 they saw that it was against the law. They realized it themselves. <laughs> They chose to do it because they knew that it was against the laws. So they decided to do Wait, it. Wait, what are y'all talking 
talking about? What y'all All talking I, about? I asked him my question to Toby I was first the, the biblical definition of sin and he gave that. Then I asked him when if a couple come into the truth, right? They repent, they come up under the most high, they get baptized. Are you telling me that can you show me basically where it was um all right for like basically God punishing them even after they repented that he still punished them for the sin that they repented of. And he took me to Ezra 10 and where we at 10 and one through three, one through three, where these men learned that they married strange wives and that uh, they wasn't supposed to. But when I'm reading through this, I don't see where God said I see what they came up with it, but I don't see what God said. And if you could show me that verse, then I'm okay with it. So they, you got to go they, back to they, the verse where it shows why they shouldn't do, why they shouldn't marry those non-Israelite women. You go find that verse, then that'll help. It says Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Deuteronomy 7 and 3. We're not supposed to take their sons and they not supposed yeah, to write about they did what they did. Not Hold on, y'all. That's, that's talking about the Canaanite nation, the seven Canaanite nations. It's not nations. even talking about what she... That's so not then, even talking to the question that I asked him, though, but this is where he yeah, took so, me. And then also with Ezra 10, uh, that's talking about uh, women that were in idolatry. So they, they weren't worshiping the Most High. So that's why they were right. put away. And that's why the children were put away, because you read in Nehemiah 13, they were they were put away because they couldn't even recite Hebrew. They didn't even know their own language. So that's why they were talking, because they were getting taught paganistic ways. They weren't getting taught anything about the Most High God. That's why they had to put them away, because they were too ingrained in their in their paganistic ways. That's why they got put away, not because but, they were so That's true. They died for the secondary thing. Okay. Because right. so, then you got, because then you got, uh, you got, you got, uh, you got Solomon marrying an Ammonite. So that's, you know, you can't, you can't, nah, that's, that's different. So the reason so why I brought, the reason, was, yeah. My question, though, was not about, you don't know if this woman, I didn't say that this woman was um, worshiping strange gods. My question was about a couple that come into the truth, they get, they repent and they get baptized. Are you saying that God is still punishing them for something that he said he has forgiven them and basically putting, he has to now go put his wife away? for something that she just got forgiven of. And I asked for scriptures, and now that everybody has said what told me what this is about, I don't think this is answering that question. Okay, so... Finesse, or oh, can, I, can I jump in? Finesse, no. If you just, if you're already married, I, I, and you're married I, to this person who's divorced... Hold on, sister, hold on, Hazel, Hazel. Hold this on, is sis. to Toby, because he started this room, and Remember, I'm really you struck. told us to stop cutting him off, right? Come on, girl. Like, come on. We let no, I, I, I just started to say, because I've been waiting in this room for so long to say something, but all of you just keep going because in, and I've been, been patiently in waiting. We is we've been in queue going back and forth. She so I can't I can't I can't support you, finesse in your in your. So what why, 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 why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Can I just let, let me just answer this question and then Hazel, you can go ahead and speak. Um, that's that's actually okay. Okay, all right, let's do it that way. Okay, so uh, again, I brought up the issue of the book of Ezra to show that these men repented and they had to actually do something to show their repentance when they realized that what they did was against the law. They, yes, there is nowhere in that chapter where the Most High told them to do it, but they, 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 they showed their repentance by actually putting away those wives and their children, even though they've repented. Now, if, we are, if, if, if they are to go with our argument today, they will say, well, we've repented, well, um, actually, you know, the Most High will understand that because the, I think there was a brother that, that uh, Dr. Dr. Abba had said that it was because they were pagan women, because they were worshipping idol. Well, what about the kids? I mean, all these Israelite they, men... They didn't, even, they didn't even know their own language, brother. Yeah, so what about... Let them finish, please, let them finish. Please, please, please. That, that's, yeah, that's, that, that part. That, that's what I'm know. saying that... So, again, I'm not bringing this scripture to... I want to really stick to the exact question that she asked me, which is about scripture. So, I would like to give you uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, 
verse 16 to 22. That's the reason why that if you and your husband did not know the law, you were not in the truth. And then later on, you realize, you know, who you are and you decide to repent. The reason why, like all the sins you committed in the past, yes, the Most High clearly told us in Ezekiel 18 that if you repent, all the stuff you did, you did in the past will not be remembered. It's very clear. I am not arguing against that. I will never tell you that your sins that you committed in the past, you know, is still up in your head and against you. I will only go by what the Bible said, which we already did earlier today. And I do agree, yes, according to the Most High, if you repent, you will be forgiven. But what we're talking about here is what happens moving forward. But I wasn't, what, I what, didn't answer what, that, so I had a follow-up. I never landed. I just only asked one question before, and I was going somewhere else after you answered. Now you finally answered. So now I'm going to ask you this. According to everything you've been saying, and I've heard it all, everything, all the scriptures. So now what I'm going to ask you, according to everything that you've been saying, right? And you just said that, no, you're not saying that um, you're going against what the Most High, what he said when he forgives you. But your title says sex with your wife is sin because you are not her first. But if the Most High forgave them and he forgave her, according to your title, you're still telling that man because he's not her first? To put her away. That's that's where I'm going. Okay. Yeah, and that's not even scripture. Okay. All right. Can so, you show me book? Since we still doing book. Okay. After the after they, the repentance and she done had slept with multiple men. We're not even talking about a woman that's been divorced. That's not my question. My question is a she had multiple men, right? But they done got baptized. They done repented. They've been forgiven. And she that's not his first or she's not his first or however way. But you're still saying to put her away. Why put her away if she was forgiven is contradicting. Okay. So uh, can we go to Jeremiah chapter 6, 16 to 22? You're basically asking me for scripture that supports this. That's why I'm, why I'm bringing up this scripture. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 6. 16 to 22. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I sent watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore, hear, ye nations, and note, O congregation, what is among them. How far you want me to read? Okay, so you've already like read the part that I wanted to show you, but you can go all the way, all the way down to verse 22. So if you look at the beginning, the Most High is telling us to, to, to go back to the old ways to go back to, to the way that things used to be. That's the thing. It's a very important point. So I understand that we've made a mistake and everything, but the Most High is still telling us to go back to the old ways, go back to the way I commanded you to do things. That's what you see in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 uh, to, to, to 22. So, sister, the thing is that you have to understand what marriage is in the sight of the Most High. If I meet a woman, I take her to church, we went to the Catholic church or whatever, and we, we got married and everything, but she was not a virgin when I married her, and she's been with multiple men. She was not a virgin, she was been with multiple men, she's not a widow. And then afterwards, we realize that according to the law, which there are some people here on stage who know the law, that, have, that understand and say that, yes, what you're saying is the truth. Those that understand biblical marriage. The problem I'm having here is that some of you, and I don't mean to say this in an insulting way or in a, in a, in a, in a negative way, but the truth is that some of you don't really understand that biblical uh, system of marriage. And there was a brother that asked me a question to explain that, but unfortunately, 
uh, I was not allowed to answer that question because he said that you guys already had that. So if you don't understand biblical marriage, you will really not understand what I'm talking about. It will make no sense. You have to understand that the way we do marriage today, today, is not the way that the Most High wanted us to do it. So if you, if I marry a woman and we did everything right, we're having children and everything, and then we later on find out exactly what the Most High said that constitutes marriage, how we are supposed to get married. Yes, we are going to repent. We're going to repent and we're going to... Um, I, 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 there's actually... I know a brother that did this. This is not, I, I don't even have to give you an example because I know somebody who has seen my video on this issue. He didn't believe the video initially, but he said it, he doubted it and he began to ask other Hebrew Israelites. They keep dismissing it. He keep asking them. They keep dismissing it. But eventually, he had to... Um, he, he explained to his wife it was very difficult for her to accept. It was very difficult. And eventually... So, Tobia. He, 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 he Tobia. Eventually... Man, Tobia. Wow. Tobia, wow. you're going somewhere else. So, I just read what you asked me to read, right? Okay, and then you said he's telling us here to go back to our old ways, right? Okay, so if I kept reading what you gave me to read... And it tell, we're going to go down to 31. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friends shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, behold, a people coming from the north country and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. So basically, because we wasn't doing what we supposed to be doing, we went. We basically got what we got because we went across, we went against the most high. And if you remember, I asked you hours ago, did God put Israel away? You never, you tap dance around that. This actually takes that back to that particular no, question. No, sister, I answered and you that it, question. No, I did. Come no, on, sister, come on. It, it, it no, you can't because, do that. But hold on. I answered God you said, that question. He said my word, he said my word is spirit and it is truth. You know what I mean? His law is spirit and it is true. You can't you can't make this thing one way and then make it another way to justify something else. Because at the end of the day, we in trouble because of doing carnal things. You know what I'm saying? He said, let this man be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. OK, so it's Can I real. ask you a question, brother Tobias. All right. So what so so actually we're going to go to uh, Hazel uh, and I would I would have loved to. To finish up that question that Sister Finis asked me, but unfortunately, um, we couldn't finish that. Uh, I would have loved to finish it because I was going to give you an example, an actual example of somebody who repented. He is still taking care of his kids. He's feeding his kids. He's taking care of them, but he's no longer physically, actively having sex with the That's woman that crazy. he married. So, you made a man put so, away his wife? So let's go to... This sister. is a dangerous le, le, part le, about this. You got to realize... Yeah, 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 yeah listen. Listen. Don't listen, get emotional, you Listen. You listen, sister. And you got to be careful because they blood going to be on your hands. Yeah, That's si why sister. That's why we all like this. So you can speak. You, so let you, somebody let's let Hazel you, speak. Sister, you, hold on. Sister, hold on. Saying something that's not No, hold on, sister. You, I you know, you've been speaking and you can speak. I I've taken a lot today and I don't mind taking more. That's fine. So you can speak, you can accuse me or say whatever you want to say, that's fine. But the thing is that um let's go to uh Hazel. She wants to speak and then I think Gregory is going to speak and as far as I know, there's nobody else who is in line. We can come back to you, Tribal, and then you can speak. I was giving you guys an example of somebody who, uh, and the point I was trying to make, I really wish I could have made that point, but you guys are not allowing me. My point is that everything you did in the past, once you repent, all things are passed away. But you still have to understand if, if somebody is not my wife, and I didn't know that. I did not know that she's not my wife in the sight of the Most High. I married her anyway. When I repent, she's not all of a sudden going to become my wife because we repented. We have to uh, acknowledge that she's not my wife. I'm not did saying. Did you make a vow? I'm not did saying. Like, I'm not saying. Vow? I'm not saying you should. Ah, I'm, I'm just I'm, saying, yeah, we'll come back great, to you. No, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not saying. Point, hold on, I'm not saying that you should. Great point. You should. Great you should point, throw. Paul. Yeah, a lot of great point has been made, and I've addressed those great point. But first, Sister Hazel, go ahead. Uh, then Brother Gregory, uh, Sister Tribal, and then Brother Paul. 
Okay, thank you, Brother Tobiah. Um, I just want to say, biblically speaking, now please don't come and attack me just yet. Biblically speaking, if you already knew the law, if you and your wife knew the law, you got divorced, you or your wife, I think man included, if you, if you got remarried, that would be considered adultery. Now, Sister Finesse, um, what you were saying about if they came to the truth, they weren't Christians before, and then they got married, uh, someone was divorced, and then they got baptized, and they repented, now they are forgiven, because baptism takes away their sins, right? They've repented, and now they've come into a new covenant, so their sins of their past doesn't come with them. But um, if you are in the covenant, you did know this law, and then you got remarried, whether you're a man or a woman, it is considered adultery. Now, Brother Tobiah, I don't agree the, with the example that you have given where man put away his wife and he doesn't want to have sex with her anymore. I think he can repent, but the fact that he's entered into this marriage covenant now before God, he's raising kids and he has to take care of his wife too. For me, I don't see that there is a problem if he wants to have sex with his wife because God commanded that between a man and a woman even though yes he realized that he has committed adultery but now you're in a different situation you are now you know the wife the husband of this person so I don't think it is to to say okay don't sleep with your wife or your because you 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 now realize committed adultery because I think a lot of things can go wrong in that situation as well. You know, um, God gave us um, godly um, sexual desires for a reason, and we're supposed to fulfill that desire with our spouses. Now, if we can't do that, where do you think the spouses are going to look for that desire to be fulfilled? Pornography, sleeping with other people, I don't know. But, you know, it's a really unique situation, but I don't think it is reasonable for and or woman to put away their if they realize that there are so that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you so much for giving me time. And okay, just real quick, real quick, uh, Sister Hazel, do you have Bible in front of you? Just have one question for you. Yeah, sure. Can you go to my two five thirty two or five, verse thirty one and thirty two? I want to show you verse thirty two. Matthew five thirty two. Yeah, verse, uh, chapter, verse 31 and 32, but I want to show you mainly verse 32. But you can read the two verses. I got a question after Paul. Okay, brother. Okay, Matthew 5, 32, right? Yes. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery yes but brother Tobiah I am agreeing with you I'm saying that this is a biblical marriage I'm agreeing with you but there are differences she's breaking up you're breaking this up. might not be applied like sister finesse brought up sorry if could you please repeat that you're breaking up you're in the matrix yeah, your audio is going in and out. All right, let's go to Brother Gregory, and then we can come Church. back to her. Oh, don't give her a chance. Tell me oh, give her well, a chance. No, if she's there, no, if she's there she can speak. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, oh, we can hear hello. you now. Sorry, sorry. So, yeah, I agree with your biblical no, you, definition no, you, you have of to, what could you please, marriages. Could you, um, hold on, through. hold on. Could you please repeat what you said because you were cutting out. We couldn't hear you very well. Can you hear me now? Yes, but we, you need to repeat what you said because we didn't hear everything. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I agree with you um, biblically in what the verses are saying. I agree with you. I said that if a man and a woman enter into the covenant knowing this and they have divorced, then yes, they are committing adultery. But what I'm saying, like Sister Finesse has pointed out, that there are different situations where this may not apply because if a couple were not Christians before, but they've already been married, and then they've, you know, they found God, and then they, they've decided to be repent of their sins, 
I don't think it's fair for a man to put away his wife or a woman to put away her husband. I agree. I agree to Raya that that's biblically what it says. I agree. Catholics believe it. Some Protestant churches believe it. But I'm saying that the situation um, depends really on, you know, certain things in a situation. So I don't think it's a foolproof rule to apply onto perhaps non-believers before they found Christ. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so the reason why I asked you to read that place, because at the end of that verse, it says that whoever marries a, a divorced woman commits adultery, right? Yes. Okay, so can I marry a divorced woman as this thing came from the mouth of Christ? Can I marry a divorced woman? At a, like, is there any circumstances where I can marry a divorced woman, even though Christ said you cannot do that? No, I'm That's saying if they're non, non-Christians. I'm saying if they're non-Christians, you can't apply to that. Apply no, this no, to I'm, them. I'm because asking, they didn't know the can, law. I, can I just marry a, can I marry a divorced woman, even though Christ says if I do, I'm committing adultery? Is there a circumstance? Are you a Christian man or are you a non-Christian? No, I'm saying like if if I'm following Christ and I have repented and I'm following Christ and she is, has also repented and she's following Christ and, and then she's, she's a divorced woman, can I marry her? No. Okay, so you, I can't marry her. Why can't I marry her? Because it's considered adultery. Okay, good. And that's my point that I'm trying to make. And the reason why Christ told but you that's the, because the, the man the, put hold her on, away. Sister, what hold, if hold the on, man sister. didn't put her away factual? So, that's what I'm saying. It's great. Exactly. Area. You can't do that, Toby. Huh? Hold, hold, hold on, sister. Hold on, sister. Come on. We'll come back to you. Sister Finis, we'll come back to you. Please hold that turn. thought. Could you please Way hold that turn. thought? Sister, sister, sister Finis, I would love to hear what you have to say right now. Please hold on. I would love to hear that. So, my point is that the reason why Christ told you this. Once Christ says that you cannot marry a woman who is put away, you cannot do that. So you cannot say, well, yeah, I know that Christ said that, but, you know, she has repented. Christ is going to say, get away from me. I don't know. Who, I don't know you. So we cannot. This is this is like final. This is like the this is like a nail on a coffin when it comes to this point. You cannot say you can't even mention grace on this because this is coming from the mouth of Christ. The question now is, why would Christ say this? Did Christ not know that some women are going to be abused? And kicked out did he not know that there's going to be circumstances like everybody has pointed out today he knew that and he still told you that whoever marries a woman who is put away is committing adultery that means there's no exception so why would christ say that because according to the law according to the law of marriage which most of you don't understand that i'm telling you if you go back to all of this deuteronomy chapter 22 Ex exodus 22 and all the rest of the laws if you look at that law, you will see that the man that took your virginity actually became your husband. According to the law, the law of God, that man that took your virginity became your husband. And according to the Most High in Deuteronomy 22, as long as that man is alive, no other man can marry you. And this is exactly what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 and 11, and also verse 39. So according to them, if I am to obey Christ, that means I cannot marry a woman who has been divorced. It doesn't matter how much I love her. It doesn't matter how much she loves Christ. If I am to obey Christ, I cannot marry her, even if she has repented. If I am to obey Christ. Now, I can, I can make up a sentiment and say that, yeah, she's repented and she's this and she's that. That's going to be my own uh, point of view. But Christ said you cannot marry a woman who is put away full stop. Okay. I agree. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Put away. I, I, I was a, not. A, a I was what is she being put uh, away? Uh, did, did she? Let, let, let Hazel respond and then we'll go to Brad Gregory. Oh, and Gregory, I, yes. But can you put me in the queue? I want to go in the queue. I want to go in the queue. Oh, queue. Who, wait, wait. Who's, who's saying that? Is, is, is it you? Is it you, Nitsa? Oh, Nitsa, is that you? Yes, I'll go after Gregory. Okay, I think you're going to go after Phineas, I think. Yes, Phineas is. No, you wait, got wait. Hazel, Paul, Gregory. Wait, who, who, who is Nancy next? Is it Paul? Is it Paul? Can I go after Gregory? Yeah. No, it was it was Gregory, and then it was me, and then it was Paul. 
Oh, okay. Wait, wait, oh, yeah, that's know, right. That's right. That's order. true. That's true. Just, just send I'll another order. I'll be fine with the. I'll be fine with the. That's position. true. It's just it's tribal. It's tribal, and then um. So, uh, Gregory, uh, but I really wanted uh Hazel to respond because she said something. I responded. I would like to give her one more chance to respond if she has anything to say before, because she might have a, a thought, something to say. I just don't want to cut her off. Do you have anything you want to respond to this before we move on? Yeah, but like I said, the situation depends. Now, if you're a Christian, of course, that law applies to you. But if you're not a Christian, you, you're a couple who, who wasn't Christian, that law doesn't apply to you uh, when you... Yeah, but Christ is telling you that you cannot marry a woman who is put away anyway. But, okay, we can come back. You're cutting off again. I can't hear you. I don't know if you're speaking. But we, we, you, you'll be on Baptism the queue. forgives you for your sins. Hello? Oh, okay. Hello? I don't know if it's me, yeah, so but, but I, I stopped hearing you. I don't know if it's from my end, but I stopped hearing you. But could you uh, hold that thought? Okay. We'll, we'll come back to you. Let's go to Gregory. No worries. Okay. Oh, Gregory. no, no. It's, I, I think I have to go so anyway. But I'm just okay. I'm just saying that um, situations differ from a non-Christian to a Christian. And Tobiah, your example that you gave about the man who's already married and he had to put away his wife as in not have sex with her but still be married, I that's so sad and i don't agree with that and uh, that's my point yeah you know, I, my view my view. I, i'm i'm very sure i'm very sure that if we are around during the time that the israelites put away their wives and their kids i'm sure that some of us will not agree too we will, we will think that this is so bad how can you put the kids away too i'm sure i mean there's a lot of stuff that we feel that is not biblical there's a lot of stuff that the most high tells us to do like Let's when like, like wait hold on there's a lot of stuff that the most high asks us to do that i'm me myself might be a little uncomfortable like when he says for you to go to a war go to war and kill all your enemies um i mean yeah i mean I'm, I'm sure that not all of us will be comfortable with that right like you see in numbers chapter 31 numbers 31 you see it it's there it says kill all the young boys and all the women that have known a man okay brother gregory please go ahead so my point is that there are some things that, the that there are some things that we the, yeah, they keep the virgins. That's right. Yeah, we went through that scripture already before. So there are some things that we, our feeling might not tolerate, but it's in the word of the Most High. The Most High says do it, you know. And uh, there's so many of them. Go read Deuteronomy chapter 13 to see what I'm talking about, you know. So but uh, let's get to Brother Gregory. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Can we go to Genesis chapter 34? Genesis chapter 34. Can you read from me, Paul? Yes, sir. Where, where, where at, brother? Throw so that verse one, bro. Of what? Um, Genesis 34. Okay. All right, thank you. Genesis 34. Okay. You said verse one? Yes, sir. So surely the father okay. of the preacher, and okay. so Jacob, he definitely would know the law, right? Let's go ahead and read. And Dana, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Yes, and when Shechem, and when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Habite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Mm -hmm. And his soul, and his soul clave unto Dana, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. Uh -huh. And Shechem spake unto his father, Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. Okay, so I have a question. So if sex constitute marriage, why weren't they already married? And why did they have to negotiate circumcision with Jacob and his sons as a means of being able to marry his daughter? Okay, so the reason why they had to negotiate circumcision is that they never wanted to give Dinah to her. First of all, he treated her like a whore by not coming to her father. You can read the book of Jubilees chapter 30 to see more information on this. In the book of Genesis, actually in Genesis, you don't have the full story. So I would suggest for anybody who is interested in this particular very interesting situation to Google Jubilees chapter 30. Just type into Google Jubilees 30 oh and read, <laughs> well, let me finish, and read the whole chapter. If you read the whole chapter, you will see that these people were Gentiles. These Shechemites she were Gentiles. They were uncircumcised Gentiles. And he, without coming to her father, he took her and had sex with her and even kept her in his house. 
and then came to them and said, I would like to marry your daughter. So the sons of, sons of Jacob became furious. All these men, uh, uh, Levi and, and um, Reuben and uh, all these, um, 12, the head of the 12 tribes, the father of the 12, 12, 12 tribes, the, the 12 sons of Israel, they became furious by what this man did by taking their sister and having the sex. Point that I was trying to make hold on, brother. hold on, let me finish. They became, you, you asked me why would they negotiate circumcision? And I'm trying to explain to you why they negotiated circumcision. Because the no, that's not my question. That's not my question. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's can, not my can question. I, can, I, can I then finish this? So You're you, answering a question that I'm not asking, brother. So can I, you, can I exit the question again so you can sure, actually answer sure, the question? Ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <laughs> so it says that he sent his servant to go make it, that his wife, right? So you said that when a man takes a woman's virginity, he immediately becomes the husband. So why did he need to ask for permission from the father for that to be his wife if he was already a spouse to her? But uh, I, I don't want to argue that point anymore because I can see where you're going with it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. It's just one verse, and it, it, it raises another question for me. Matthew chapter 1 and 18. You got it, Paul? Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Now, the birth of Jesus was on this wise, mm -hmm. when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together. Before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So there's a lot of things going on there. There's a man and a wife who haven't had sex, but before they came together, Mary was found with the Holy Ghost. So in the other service situation, you started talking about circumcision, etc. Okay, but these are Israelites following the law of God, yet they did not consider themselves husband and wife, and they had not had sex. So once again, how does that work in this situation? How are they husband and wife if sex constitutes marriage and they had not had sex? Yeah, so according to the law in Deuteronomy chapter 22, it says that uh, when a girl, typically, um, you will see that a, when a girl is betrothed to a man, sometimes she will be called his wife. That's the reason why that if I take a girl who is betrothed to a man, if I have sex with her, she, uh, I will be killed if I rape her. If she agrees to have sex with me uh, when she's betrothed to another man, she and I will be killed. So um, I would really like to finish up what I was saying earlier on in terms of uh, the reason why they had to succumb. They, because that's actually a very important point when you brought up the issue of Dinah. The fact that he had sex with her and took her to his house and kept her in his house and then wanted to talk to her family. That was the reason why they, the, the Israelites couldn't go over there and kill them right away because there are just too many of them. So they decided to, to trick them. They tricked the, the Shechemite into getting circumcised. And if you notice that the Israelites waited for them to get circumcised, the day that they all got circumcised, the Israelites went in there and killed all their males. So they, 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 and then took their, took their sister and the man was also killed. They took their sister. So we, if we come back to your last question, um, your last question, well, the, the thing is that we just have so many scriptures, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, because if you clearly look at Deuteronomy 22, it's telling you that if a man has sex with a girl, he is not supposed to put her away all his days. As long as he is alive, she is his wife. This is found in Deuteronomy 22. And this is the reason why Paul tells women in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. That's the reason, why, that, that, question, that's the reason why Paul said, let me finish this one real quick. That's the reason why Paul said that if you want to leave your husband, sure, go ahead, but don't remarry. You cannot remarry. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 and 11. As long as your husband is alive, you cannot remarry because the man that took your virginity, the man that took your virginity is your husband. And that's the point. My point all, that, all night long is that if you are living with a woman, but she lost her virginity to someone else and she had sex with other men, 
According to the Bible, she's defiled. She's not your wife. She's not all of a sudden going to become your wife because you repented. No, she's never been your wife. You know, so you have to repent by stopping having sex with her. Thank you so much for your interest in my videos. If you have any biblical question, if you have any question regarding any of my videos that you have watched, you're welcome to call me. You can call me anytime, 24 hours a day. You can call me, you can email me, you can contact me through WhatsApp and I would love to talk to you and discuss any question that you may have regarding any of my video or any biblical question that you may have. Feel free to contact me. Also, if you want to learn more about the commandments of our Heavenly Father, if you would like to learn more on the laws and the commandment of our Heavenly Father, then this book is for you. I have something for you. This is an amazing book. It is called The Commandment Book. The name of this book is The Commandment Book. And this book is designed for any man or woman that wants to obey our Creator. If you want to learn more about the laws and the commandment that our Heavenly Father gave us, then this book is for you. This book is packed with so much information. It's an amazing book designed for those that wants to learn our Heavenly Father father's commandment so it's free this book is free it's actually free it took me a while to put this book together it took me a while to arrange and put this book together and if you read this book you will be able to learn different types of laws and commandment and get a full understanding of those commandments it is for free you can download this book from my website go to www.commandmentschool.com go to my website and you can download it for free or you can contact me and I will send it to you. This book is an amazing book designed for people that want to learn more and keep the commandment of our Heavenly Father. Also, we have an online congregation. I would love to invite you to join our online congregation. We gather together on Sabbath days, New Moon days, feast days. We come together to worship our Heavenly Father and we do it online. We do it online because we have people in the Caribbean, in America, in Africa, Europe. We have people in different parts of the world and we all come together using our phone or computer to, to go to worship to our Heavenly Father. So it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are black or you're white, it doesn't matter who you are. What matters is that you want to worship our Heavenly Father. As long as you want to worship the Most High and keep His commandment, you're welcome to join us. Feel free to contact me and I will add you, I will add you into our online congregation. Also, I will really, really appreciate your financial support. I will appreciate your, I will be grateful and thankful if you can support my work financially right now i am serving our heavenly father full time i serve the most high full time and i really really do need your financial support if you would like to support my ministry with your tithe or your offering uh, i will i will be very grateful if you can do so and you can support my ministry using your uh, using cash app or PayPal. You can support me through Cash App or PayPal. Feel free to contact me. The Most High is the one that have that have opened my eyes. The Most High is the one that strengthened me and support me. The Most High is the one that have enabled me to serve Him. And it would be very nice if you can also help me financially to be able to do even, even more work of the Most High that I'm currently doing right now. Thank you so much again for your interest in my videos. Like as I said, if you do have any biblical question, you're welcome to contact me. Feel free to call me anytime, 24 hours a day. You are welcome to call me anytime and I would love to hear from you and discuss and answer any question that you may have. All praises to our Heavenly Father.